There is a challenge that I've wanted to do in the Long Dark before, and we're going to do it today. That challenge is As the Dead Sleep. I'm very often asked if I want to do a No Goa run. No Goa, that's the letters N O G O A, standing for No One Gets Out Alive. The main thing about No Goa is that it's very hard difficulty and healing is disabled. Now, I'm not interested in that because healing is disabled means that your run is really limited on exploration and it's really tedious to constantly stop and warm up. I like it on regular Interloper where, although the damage is fierce, you can at least do some exploring and use your health as a resource. But that won't be possible here because As the Dead Sleep is on no go rules. Because you are forbidden from healing, the only things that can possibly heal you are stims. Although thinking about it, since the cooking was added, you can also heal with cooking if things were truly desperate. But my god, that would take some grinding up. So, what do we have to do? Well, we've got to start it for one. I tend to ebb away from female shepherds, so we'll go for... Go with her for uh, a run here, as the dead sleep. Let's go. No Discord announcement. I completely forgot. Uh, you know what? Whilst the game is loading up, why don't I do that right now? Oh, 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 Marvin already beat me to the punch. Cheers, Marvin. It does happen. I'd say about one in every 20 streams I forget to announce it. So here we are, we're starting in Bleak Inlet. Pretty grim, horrible place to start, but it's where we are. Might as well take some charcoal and get moving. First thing I'm going to do is explore the lighthouse that I'm in, and I'm glad I do, because there's a flare. Uh, we do... oh wow, we start with matches. Okay, well let's turn on the matches on our list of things we get. And let's already turn on sewing kit. Is this even interloper? We got gloves, that's good. We got a Zat energy bar, which is strange. Those don't spawn on Interloper, but it wouldn't surprise me if the difficulty setting for As the Dead Sleep is some bizarre custom uh, challenge level. So, as like any single region survivor run, I will be looking. Wow, another sewing kit. I will be looking for progression items. But it's quite unlikely that I'm going to bother making the bow. I will, however, make the bow if it just so happens to come across the materials for it. But that is unlikely. The thing about this challenge, I suppose I didn't explain what it is, is that we need to visit five different regions. I think it's five. I'm going to check when I get inside and into shelter. Because in these five regions that are very spread apart, there are these grave markers. We need to visit them. I suppose the idea is that we've seen the world for what it's becoming. Although I'm not sure if we can extrapolate the events here on Great Bear to be what's happening on the entire world, but I digress. <clears throat> and we probably just want some personal closure by visiting all of these places. That, that's my best guess. And it is only a guess. So, oh, well, there we go, James. Progression items are flowing in. A pry bar is actually a great find. For the reason that I can now defend myself in a struggle. Now I need to leg it over to here. My cold meter is going to be of uh, great interest to me for this run. Because I cannot heal the cold damage that I take unless I use a stim. Stims are very limited. Very, very limited. So any damage I take is extremely brutal. A stim will heal 15% of my condition, but it'll also make me completely tired once its effects have finished. And then I'll start taking damage from being tired, so there's not a lot of winning involved here. I don't even know why I'm picking up charcoal. Mapping is the last thing I want to do. Okay, finding some salty crackers and cardboard match as well. That tells me that this challenge is definitely not on the interloper loot tables, because cardboard matches. Don't spawn on Interloper. I'll check these uh, boats. I've never found anything in these specific boats before. But since this loot is definitely not Interloper style loot, perhaps I should check a few more places. There are no difficulty settings for the challenges. You just pick the challenge and do them. I'm going to warm up in that house, but I still have a sliver of warmth left in Commander Shepard's body. So I'm going to take this opportunity to grab cattails. They've got the best tinder, 
and the actual cattail food is... And I think it shouldn't be this way, but cattails are actually the best enough. food in the game. They are the most calorifically dense food. Almost. Uh, no, that's, that's not fair. They're not... I'm overselling them here. But they are amazing. I mean, uh, salty crackers are more calorifically dense, and I think some energy bars are as well. But um, cattails never make you sick, and they never expire. Okay, I'm just about cold enough to take cold damage, so let's get ourselves in. We'll almost certainly be warm inside here. We are warm in here, so I can take a moment to talk about the challenge and how we're going to be tackling this it. This stuff will come in handy. You know what? I will take those oats. The, there's going to be plenty of cases of me just leaving stuff behind for what seems like no good reason. But that's because I really got to triage what I what I find because we're going to be moving constantly. Mm, the day is wearing on, although that means that we're going to be at the warmest time of day real soon. This stuff will come in handy. Yes, yes, yes. It's all going to come in handy, Shepard. I could do some repair work while I'm here. But it's quite likely I'm just going to find better stuff as I move, so... The windbreaker definitely goes on the outside. My inner layer stuff is in good condition. Both of my hats are in terrible condition. Since warmth is of vital importance, I'm going to make myself two custom head wraps. go. Don't worry, I will get to what the challenge is about momentarily. Just the sooner I get my heat going, the sooner I can be at liberty to take that kind of time, so... Mm. The head wrap is as warm as this toque would be if the toque was in its best condition. So rather than spend... well, it depends. How much can I repair on you? 40%? 30 minutes? Not time efficient. I'd rather just make another improvised head wrap. There we go. You can't fail making a head wrap, you could certainly fail trying to fix something. What's your plan for the run? And my plan is to do the run. If you're asking for any more than that, then you're just asking for trouble. Let's just drop the other things, we certainly don't need them, we will not be coming back. So, press J and it teaches us this. The mission. Visit all the grave sites marked on your map. There is no time limit as your life ebbs. Death is the only barrier. That means, if you're so inclined, you could play this mode as a regular survival mode. So, I mean, why, why do that when you have custom mode? But maybe you do want to do it this way. Um, there's no... You could do these 100 days spaced apart. You could get them all done in 5 days. Depends on what you want to do here. So, Broken Railroad, HRV, Timberwolf Mountain, Ravine, and Desolation Point. If we look at that on the world map... That is here, 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 and here. So very spread out. Kind of like the Dark Walker challenge. You've got to go to pretty much everywhere. And we're starting down here in Bleak Inlet. And it's not a clean run to the ravine. We can't get up over to the ravine unless we use that uh, wee trick I did on my single region survivor run of Bleak Inlet. We will not do that. Didn't go that well then. It wouldn't go well this time. I will make my way up. I will do Broken Railroad, then Hushed River then the Ravine, then either Desolation Point or Timberwolf Mountain, and then the other one. Probably Desolation, then Timberwolf. Yeah, Timberwolf feels like the right place to end it. It's a bit more of a, a bit more of a slog to get over there. So, as I said, healing is disabled, so... it's not. I'm never going to be stinking over there. Sleep for 10 hours. I need 10 hours of rest. No, that won't heal me. I can just sleep periodically, which is kind of good for being flexible, so i got no problem there. I will break down this curtain for a bit more cloth. I will nap in the bed to warm up. I've got a Brazilian matches, so I should never hesitate to just start a fire. The only limiting thing is going to be my burnables, of which I don't have that many right now. I've got barely anything, actually. Um, but I want to warm up first, so I'm just going to... You know what, since, since I don't really have to care about... Sleeping for health regen. I'm just going to sleep. <clears throat> yes, Taciturn, we could certainly say we're ending on a high note. Right, let's get moving. The less time I spend in Bleak Inlet, the happier I'm going to be as a person. 
Oh, cripes. Right, hold on, hold on, hold on, before I start standing out in the cold. Thanks to doing single region survivor, I actually know a thing or two about the region, don't I? For example, you might think... Oh, oh right, well, the map doesn't show me any points of interest. But I am about here in the fishing hut thing. You'd expect the taff you have to take is along here, past the cannery, up and around here, and then out by the caves here, because I cannot scale this area to get out via the ravine. But now that I know this map fairly well, I actually know that there's a shortcut I can take. I can head up, I'm going to grab some coal here, I'm going to grab some cattails here, and I can sneak through a hidden passageway up along here and then pop out over to here and then I can sneak my way out of the region and hopefully I can get there before the day is done but mm, on the other hand it's gonna be night time isn't it well that's my problem point is there are loads of timber wolves here and there's a moose here as well as more timber wolves there I might be able to avoid all of those threats but let's get moving I don't want to be moving at night time we love the wolves of the cannery you know I'm actually surprised that you don't play this game alpha Surely with the baking heat of Japan, you would long for the experience of Canadian cold. That said, I've, I've been thoroughly enjoying the oppressive heat here in Hungary. The fact that you can just jump into Balaton to cool off is rather nice. And in fact, my home is so well insulated, it's not so very nice. Right, there should be coal here. I'm not seeing coal here. This is concerning. Nope, there is no coal here. Okay, that is very concerning. I was planning on using that coal to heat up. So I am going to have to move and move fast. It's the warmest time of day, but it is bleak inlet, so that seldom says much. Hungary, yes. Delvidec. Oh, it's Delvideki. I live in Hungary. I moved here from Sweden, and that is a decision that I regret not in the slightest bit, because I absolutely love living here. Hello, hello. I've never seen this before. A snow shelter. Kind of tempting to break down, but no thank you. i got to keep moving. Ah, hey there, Scipio. Take your badge. I need to collect those points. Throw away later. Well, I don't think I have any point redemptions for... Uh, Dominions, but Dominions is back tomorrow with uh, Lemuria and uh, 30 randomized nations and randomized blesses. I have made one set of randomized blesses because yeah, I think you have to recompile the game each time. Well, no, not recompile, but you have to remod the game each time that you want to edit the blesses. But I think I might roll with this bless list for a wee while and then uh, make it again after a few games. The trouble with random blesses is the same problem that exists with vanilla blesses. Uh, some are amazing and some are just useless and you think, when would I ever take this? But hey, Dominions is tomorrow. Today is long dark. Oh yeah, yeah, I love the nation generator. I've been playing with it for ages. I actually made my 30 nations and uh, just decided to stick with them. Oh... Okay, there we go. Whew. I was worried that on this challenge you can't actually get through that. What is that sticky noise? Sounds like I'm walking on a Berlin dance floor. You hear that? Sticky floors. Oh, nice. Right, should be a path along here. I could just jump down pretty quickly, but I will follow the path up because there should be a wee secluded spot up here that I want to check out. What, what a weird noise! This game and its bugs, I'm telling you. Yeah, we got shoes made out of duct tape here. Is there anything duct tape can't do? Uh, or our, our cold is uh, building up, or our heat is diminishing very rapidly, so I'm going to get a move on. I'm already glad I took that nap, by the way, because look at my health, uh, look at my fatigue deteriorating. It is doing so pretty quickly. Ah, 
Uh, also, it's getting foggy, so that's going to be a shame. Being able to see is pretty good when there are wolves abound. So this is what I mean by being pretty happy with uh, doing single region survivor. Now I know all of the areas a lot better than I did before. I don't know them inside out. You'd have to invest a lot of time to really know areas inside out. But I know them well enough. For example, I know there's a cave nearby here. It might be a good idea to get in and warm up before I get out of here for good. We have a storm lantern. Now that is excellent because I'm going to be going into a cave soon. Energy bar is really good for... Uh, you know what, I'm actually going to take these feathers in case I do end up getting a bow. Energy bar is really good dense food. And a book is great for starting a fire with the better fire starting odds. Now, I really can't afford to take any damage because, as I said, I can't heal it naturally. So even when goating down places like this, I'm going to take it real easy. Normally, I would have been a bit more gung-ho and just thrown Commander Shepard off the edge. Not this time. Right, I'm hoping there's a cave around here. I do not want to stop and start a fire just yet. The cave might have been behind me. It might be in front of me. I'm not 100% sure. I am not running with maps here. I can't feel my hands. I should know. I should know the game well enough not to need paper maps anymore. When I was in Japan, uh, I was delighted by the konbini. The konbini is actually my favorite thing in all of Japan. But uh, the con I think the cave was back there. Now I think about it. The uh, konbinis have these. Well, they've got a lot of cool tech in them. The idea that you can just go down to the Combini for all of your tax-paying purposes. Mm -mm. But they also have really nice big printers. So I was able to stick in a, a USB drive and print out A3 maps of all of the Long Dark region maps. That was pretty awesome. And they just, they just look nice. Very professionally made. Shepherd's about to get a bit chilly here, so I want to nestle up against... Oh, oh, hang on, is that the cave? That's the cave, actually. We made it out of here. Um, okay. I would love to stop and grab more things. Oh, I'm certainly going to stop, stop and grab this tea. But look at, my, look at my cold. When that cold hits zero, I start taking tons of damage, so let's, let's try not to allow that to happen, but at the same time be really greedy for all these cattails. I want that, but I'm not, I don't want it enough to take damage. Let's go. And we're barely warm. And we're here. We made it. Zero damage. And we can tell because we can look here. Uh, huh. They removed your status thing. Did they? You used to be able to see your health on the days that have passed. Is that just gone? Oh well, that's neither here nor there. The point is, I made it out with no damage, which is great. I'm going to get through here, and then... Ooh. Is there a bed in here? I hope so. I, I took it for granted that I'd have a bedroll, but I don't. I might have found one if I'd gone via the cannery, but... Shortcuts can oft make long delays, as I say. That's okay. If I'm desperate for sleep, I can stagger my way over to Spencer's and sleep there. The forge warms up the bed. There's a distinct lack of coal, which is troublesome because uh, I was really looking forward to grabbing coal. If you do find a gun, not the flare gun, are you going to use it? This is meant to be interloper loot, but at this point it clearly isn't. Clearly isn't. Um, I don't know, we've never seen me use a gun on, on this. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. It's like, what would you do in an armed burglary? Well, you can say you do this and that, but you don't know until the situation arises. For what it's worth, I've never been involved in an armed burglary. Well, not to my knowledge. I'm pretty oblivious. I wouldn't put it past me to just go up and ring up my items whilst the cashier is actively being uh, robbed at gunpoint. Okay, well, two tiny slivers of coal does not a productive 
a bit of spelunking make. Ah, but here we go. This is coal central. I would drink almost anything about now. Anything, Shepard. I think I'm doubling back on myself, but I am very keen on grabbing every bit of coal I can. When I get to the likes of Cinder Hill, I'm going to have all the coal I could possibly need, but Cinder Hill is a long way away. Cinder Hill is the cave that connects Coastal Highway to Pleasant Valley, and I will be going through there later on. Yep, yeah, okay, we've doubled around. We did not find that much coal, but we found enough to warm us up in a pinch. I really wonder how you manage the Hungarian language. I don't. Hungarian language is extremely complicated, and on top of that, I'm a filthy Anglo, so my language skills are down the toilet. Ah, good, there is a bed here, and I am going to sleep the night away in here, but I will first investigate everything I can. What water do I have? Enough to sleep for, uh, enough to sleep through the night, but I'll probably start a fire anyway. I don't need to start a fire for temperature in here, just duration, so I can use my crummy uh, reclaimed wood. I'm not going to be particularly stingy with my lighter here, or my uh, my storm lantern, because I'm constantly moving, I'm constantly going to be finding more resources, so it stands to reason I'll probably even find a second storm lantern, I'll just chuck this one and uh, take the new one. I'm going to double back to the bed, I'm just grabbing everything I can right now. That gives me a good opportunity to sort out my inventory at the time. Picks are good. Even that branch is tempting, but I'll pass for now. So yeah, in my experience, about 1 in 10 Hungarians knows a lick of English. So if there's anything complicated I need, there'll be somebody. Uh, on top of that, I live in a resort, so there are places that speak uh, very good English, Hungarian, and German. So if I really need information, I can go there. For example, I've, I've yet to figure out the health system here. Uh, I've been here for like three months, and the thought occurred last week that, hmm, maybe I should, you know, find a GP, a general practitioner, so that if I run into some problems, I can swiftly get the help I need. And I thought, well, that's not, that's not difficult. I live right next to a... Uh, oh, maybe I shouldn't dox myself too far. I live in the general vicinity of uh, the main hospital in the region. So I find the hospital, there are like three clinics next to it, and uh, they all tell me to go to each other. <laughs> uh, I didn't really understand that. I'm sure I'll figure it out in due time though. Right, back to the bed, we're gonna sleep, and then we're going through Forlorn Muskeg. I, what I couldn't understand was the big main hospital didn't even have a reception. I mean, what are you meant to do if you're just stumbling in really sick? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, first things first, I'm going to drink a little bit. Wait, I said I wanted to make a fire here, didn't I? Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about my lack of water. Unfortunately, I don't have a guaranteed chance of this starting. But, let's take the 80%. I didn't have any ingredients to make a torch out of. It's good to start a fire with a torch, because then if you fail, you still have the torch to try again. Just don't get sick. Problem solved. I'm pretty good at that, but it's more for ease of mind. Right, I'm just going to shove on the reclaimed wood, because it burns quite a while, but it doesn't burn particularly hot. And I... Ooh, I only have one recycled can. Well, I need that water, and I want the tea. So, let us make some tea. Stumbled into a pharmacy here yesterday. The stuff they give me for a cold is crazy. It's a mixture of every imaginable drug and caffeine. Ugh. Right, I'm just going to drink the Summit Soda straight away. I might as well go for well-fed from the get-go, and I need the hydration anyway. That thing's going to be boiled in a quarter of an hour. It gives me time to prepare these rose hips. Early game water here is uh, the early game water situation is amazing. Uh, um, fur is heavy, so I'm going to shove on some fur, make as much water as I can, and then sleep. If I can sleep through the early morning of Forlorn Muskeg, then that is great. 
But yes, more water, more better. My clothes are all in amazing condition. I don't need to repair anything, which is very nice. But it also means I don't have a lot to make here. I'm going to make some bandages, though. Should I make four bandages? No, I'll make two. Seldom do you need more than two bandages at once. Otherwise, I, I think I have absolutely nothing to make here. I don't need tinder plugs. The snow's busy melting. Cat Shepherd is just chilling out here. There's actually nothing for me to do. This is one of the rare occasions where if I had a book, I'd be reading my book. Anyway, let's get you boiled. Should I make one more bit of water? I shall. I'm always loath to just pass time like this. I always feel like I'm wasting my time. Oh. Let's also prepare the teas. And you know what? I'm going to make one more bit of water. And I'm going to put on some sticks. So there's 40 minutes. That's enough to boil that. And it'll be ready when I wake up. And as I said, we're going for well fed, so let's just eat everything we can. Hope I don't get sick from this energy bar. It was below 50% condition, which is always a bit yeah. Oh, an excellent point, E Greed. Thank you kindly. I will grab myself some torches. Let's also eat a couple of cattails. Bring ourselves right up to full on food. Right, yes, yes, good point. Um gonna shove on some sticks. And I'm gonna pull torches. Maybe I'll be greedy for torches already. As in, if they're terrible, I'll just chuck them. Well, they're great, but I wouldn't say it's terrible. 26 minutes, 6 minutes, 19, 20, that's fine. Okay, so I drink, drink, drink. And then I sleep for 10 hours. I'm going to sleep for 9 hours, actually, because I don't need to sleep for a specific amount of time for healing purposes. And if I sleep for 10, I'm immediately going to take hydration damage. So 9 hours for this run, I believe. Uh, I can sleep for longer, and I shall. So I drink more. And I'm going to sleep until fully rested. Hopefully it says you wake up fully rested here. Good, good. It treats health as a resource. Now let's make our way out. What determines the quality of a torch when you pull it out of a campfire? It is random between 20 and 50% condition. For reference, a 100% condition torch will burn for 7.5 real-time minutes. It will provide you two additional degrees of warmth. It will scare off wolves and it can be used to start another fire. So having a torch is just really good. I tend to carry more torches than is sensible because I love to chain my fire as I move along and it's a really good way to save your matches. You light one torch and if you're still carrying that same fire several hours later and you need to start a campfire, hey, you've already got your, your, tor your torch. That's less of an issue once you have the magnifying lens, of course. But I don't have a mag lens yet. It sounds like it's windy as sin out there. Well, let's go for it. Paraloopable says, Good morning, Jake, and chat has a challenge going. We just started. Uh, we've just been faced with a blizzard, so I don't think we're going to be heading out in this anytime soon. Really wish I had a... Uh, I don't know, um, what am I trying to say? I wish I had a bedroll so I could just sleep at the entrance point here. Even so, I'm just going to step out and grab some more tea ingredients. That way I'll have something to make when I stagger back in. And uh, let's make no bones about it, I will be staggering back in. There are quite a lot of tea ingredients just at the entrance to this cave, so... Waste not, want not, and I do want... I might just stay to hell with it and uh, go through the blizzard anyway. I do have the coal. And I have the tea. But my god, that is cold. Minus 40. Do we have a plan? Yep, the plan is do the challenge. 
I, uh, I don't think this challenge is so difficult that I need some kind of elaborate plan for it. I suppose do not get hurt is a pretty big part of the plan. I also don't know where all of the, uh, all the grave markers are. I know the regions that they are, but I don't know their exact locations within the regions. I'm grabbing the old man lichen that I neglected back in Bleak Inlet. Taking that shortcut in Bleak Inlet makes me feel like, uh, sure like a real pro. <laughs> but I'm very glad that I found that during my single region survivoring. Right, so uh, I'm warming up in here. Not much, but a little bit. That's good. I shall... Yeah, I, got, I got a million uh, matches. Let's not be stingy. Well, I, I'm going to be stingy enough to light my torch first. When you're in the radial, you can actually use the scroll wheel to choose your torch, so I can specifically choose good or bad torch, but... By default, it takes the crappiest one. I'm going to use my crappy matches to light it as well. Cardboard matches are... You get larger amounts of them, but they have a lower chance of starting a fire. 5% less than a wooden match. I don't think I've ever used a cardboard match in my life. How would I... It doesn't feel like they'd be... Str if it was made of cardboard, it feels like it Come would on, be not on. very strong to strike. I got, I got wooden matches. I've actually got a box of wooden matches oh, next yeah. to me right now. I don't know where they came from. Uh, they moved with me when I moved here, but I, I, don't, I don't know their origin story. Right. really wish I had found something better to cook with, but that will do. Hopefully the bug with clothes not drying isn't going to affect me here. But whilst that is going, I shall make myself my tea ingredients. And I'll probably make myself some tea too. Make myself some Terminator too. You can see the graves on the maps too, yeah. Well, we'll see We'll see that when we come to the region. Let's not spoil ourselves. You get boiled, get in here. I'm, I'm keeping my ears open so that I can tell when the fire, uh, when the wind stops. But in the meantime, if I have loads of tea prepared, that means I don't have to worry so much about, well, having to find them on the go. Could be that this tea stuff that I found already will do me good, but I like to be prepared. Just wish I had another thing to cook with. Another uh, another crappy can, for example. I can find a tin opener in Forlorn, but it's not worth going out of my way for. Does it sound windy out there? I don't hear anything. I'm gonna check, though. Take this crummy torch as well, see if it blows out. Oh, sweet! It's a good day, and we warmed up thanks to our fire. In that case... Oh, oh, here's a little trick. Uh, it's not going to work, I think. It'll work! Yes! You can crawl your way in here and grab some of the transition area coal. Except I missed the coal. Oh well. I might try for it again. Right, we're going travelling with that, so you please boil, and let's have ourselves a lovely hot load of racial tea. And rosehip tea. Yes. Take the torch. Oh, wow, that is one crappy torch. Give me the racial tea. Give me that. Give me that. And let's go. Do I really want that coal? Oh, come on, I mentioned it. I want to show it. Wait, whoa. Windier than I thought. Okay, well, never mind. It's okay, though. I can just start a fire. It's no big deal. There we go. You can grab coal like that. Sometimes it's closer to the exit of the cave, but this time it was not. Right, let's get moving. The wind just turns south pretty quickly there, and I need to make my way over to Broken Railroad. Ooh, but I'm greedy. I've seen tea ingredients. I grab tea ingredients, especially racial mushrooms. They're so good. You get a double warming up boost out of them if you... Uh, if you save the nice chunky slurpy bottom bits for last, like uh, like actual mushroom soup. Does he know I'm here? I don't stink, but I am upwind from him.
poor lonely wolf. You, you kind of want to feed him just to... Oh, hey, the wind gave out. Okay, that's that's handy. And it's barely cold at all. In that case, I'm going to drink my really hot rose hip tea. I'm going to bother with double slurping it. And since the, the wind is still, I'm going to light my torch using the crappy cardboard matches. I wonder if you can interrupt lighting by picking something up. You can spare an arm for the poor dog. Uh, I could spare someone else's arm. I would be hopeless in a situation like this because I'd see those wolves and I'd want to pet them. And then when it becomes clear that uh, they're not interested in petting, they're interested in biting my gonards off, I'd, uh, I'd start feeding them. I know that every single piece of wildlife uh, advice says do not feed wild animals, but I'm, I'm convinced that's some kind of uh, misinformation operation. Big wildlife wants all the dog petting for themselves. I would feed wild animals. I, I get it, I get it. The idea is to not teach them to to be confident around humans. We want them to be scared, keep them away from civilization. But I, I, I don't have the heart for that. I like animals. I like animals a hell of a lot more than I like people. So if I saw if I saw dogs out like this, I'd uh, I'd be sharing the meat with them. Harkens back to seeing plenty of uh, Bear Isle and possibly wild cats back in Scotland. You see them, and I mean they're so skittish. But with you, with the appropriate applications of cold meat, you can get them within petting range, and then you touch them once, and they bolt. But then you do it again and again and again, and over the days and weeks, they will eventually tolerate your presence. They never like the presents and uh, never try picking them up because they will they will scratch you to hell and back. I have no idea how I'm not clartered in horrible disease from all the animal scratchings I've had. Maybe I am. Huh. Should get myself checked someday. But you know what? I got those pets. As in the petting, I did not make pets out of these animals. We've got massive wildcats here, like the size of greater cat. Oh, that sounds great. Okay, wow, what a lovely day in Forlorn Muskeg. Ambient temperature is only minus 11. We don't have good clothes, but at least we have clothes. There's stones. I wonder if there's Vista stuff around here. Is there the briefcase with the Polaroid? Wouldn't surprise me if they did not add that into this setting. It's kind of weird how in the long dark development they've done so much uh, branching of the code. Why in the world would you want to maintain different code bases? They they completely divided Winter Mute, the story-based narrative experience, away from the survivor experience, but that, in my eyes, that just means double the work. And on top of that, they're clearly doing something weird with these challenge things. I, I, don't, I don't see the logic. But I, I have clearly not been seeing the logic of... Um, who are the developers here again? Hinterland. I've clearly not seen Hinterland game development logic. God gave us dominion over the animals, not petting them as satanic. I like that. It's a great way of putting it. Okay, I'm not going to bother harvesting wild animals until I have a hacksaw. And there's a chance of a hacksaw here. Much as I would like those big slabs of meat. This is Forlorn Muskeg, home of the cattails. You could probably do a cattail only run of As the Dead Sleep and it would not even be a challenge. You'd probably find it easier. Right, is the hacksaw here? The hacksaw is not here. That's a shame. Sometimes it spawns on that tree stump. But uh, evidently I'm playing with some weird loot, so... Okay, the fuse is here. The heavy hammer is here. Well, now, you don't often see that on my check-off list. Will I keep the heavy hammer? That's the question. Because, as the name implies, I think it's heavy. I'll take it that. This will come in handy. Well, I have never seen this before. What's your story? 
Old fashioned parka, a little bit wet, very warm. Very, very warm. Oh well, take you. No questions asked. Hello, Hacksaw. Jinx, everything's getting enabled today. That's definitely not interloper looped. A bit more firewood, there should be some dog food behind. Holy crap, look at all that dog food. This is madness. If I had some more scrap metal, I could forge a knife. I would quite like to forge a knife, and there should be scrap metal around here. If nothing else, I could turn this uh, metal shelf into enough scrap metal. Tell you what, we're going to do it. Let's get forging. I haven't been able to do it in any of my single region survivor runs, so let's do it now. This is a gold mine. Are you sure this is on the right settings? There are no settings for the challenge modes. The challenges are all preset. But yeah, this is definitely on, an easier loot table than Interloper. I imagine so the team making challenges and core gameplay can focus just on that rather than also having to worry about the integrative story mode. That sounds too logical for my liking. Let's let's not listen to any of that. Right, shove on the cedar. And shove on one, two, three, four, five. Mm, six, seven, eight. There we go, that's plenty of coal. No man will need that much coal. Right, do we search this? Alright, oh, left my spray paint in there. If this isn't interloper, then locked lockers might actually have something in them. I'll take it. Oh, my What is this? Another book for starting fires with better chances. I'm not taking that book, that's a waste of time. A note that I'm not going to bother reading. Whilst I have this fire going, I would be amiss not to make some water. And I'm going to check nearby areas for scrap metal, see if I can save myself the the length of time it takes to saw apart that metal frame. It's a good hacksaw. Hacksaw made for carving apart metal. How in the world do you make a hacksaw made for carving apart metal? Do you have to do like diamond tipped uh, ridges and that thing? If I'm not used to finding this much loot, it's going to be difficult to triage my belongings, Alan. But I will probably leave the heavy hammer behind. Because it's very heavy, it's seldom worth taking with you. Hello? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't take the birch bark. It might seem sacrilege, but you cannot heal with birch bark on this setting. It is strictly disabled. Next, you find a magnifying glass and a trunk. Scary thought. Right, often there is scrap metal over here. That's why I'm over here. That forge is going to burn forever and take a while to burn up the temperature. So I'm not really worried about wasting time grabbing these things. More coal is good coal. So much coal. Often they're... Hello. Resting in the hollow of a tree planted in my grandfather's best work. Huh. I was not aware of a memento cache over there. But now I am. But we're probably not going to head over that way because it's not en route to anything. Is this a Polaroid? It's nothing. Even better. Uh, I'm going to be sleeping here tonight, so I don't mind running a bit. Tungsten tipped or similar harder metals and steel or iron. What about uranium? Rimworld has taught me that that is the hardest. Grab a flare. Grab more everything, really. I am going to have to disassemble that metal locker for scrap metal, though. I thought there was a bit more scrap metal here, but evidently I'm dead wrong. Oh, let's not say no to all these cattails as well. I'm looking forward to getting a well-fed bonus, because I'm already approaching the 30 kilogram weight limit. Uh, I won't be going to Trash Canyon for the backpack. And I'm certainly not hunting a moose for a moose hide. So, the best I'm going to do is 35 kilo carry capacity with the well-fed bonus, which I will get on the third day. Or rather, the fourth day after three days have passed. Funny, I thought there was more scrap metal. The game tends to baby you with scrap metal and coal around every forge in the same way it babies you with a car battery, wires and fuses around every place that needs their things fixed for signal void. Goodbye, crappy torch. 
but it's, it's definitely not the condition where I need you right now. Hey, is the bunker up there? Bunker might be cool. Yeah, I see the birch bark. Yeah, I can't really take the birch bark. I know I was in here, but maybe I missed some scrap metal. Yeah, okay. Game just doesn't want to give me loads of scrap metal, it seems. That's fine. Yeah, I know the prepper cache is up there, and I might go and check it out. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. There's some more scrap metal. More coal. First aid kit. With an energy bar. That actually makes a lot of sense, though, doesn't it? Oh, oh, everyone loves doing the safes. Not me, I hate the safe, but... Alright, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, it's about 32. Thirty-two seven-ish. I hate these saves. Why were they added in the game? This is not interloper loop, so maybe there'll be really good stuff in the safe, like a set of mullocks. This is just busy work. <laughs> Oh, holy crap, a stim. Now that is amazing, especially on this difficulty setting, because that's my only way to heal. Give me that. The forge is up to temperature, and I can make myself nothing, honestly. Oh, no, I could make the knife. Ooh, I don't have cloth. I want the knife, and I want a hatchet. But I'm going to need five more scrap metal, and this metal shelf only gives me four. Hmm, he says. Hmm. And a bit more hmm. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I am actually going to do it. I'm going to tear apart my uh, pry bar for some scrap metal. I don't want to I don't, wanna, I don't wanna bother with doing more than I have to in this in this situation. I want to stay well hydrated and well fed for doing all this though. How heavy are those MREs? I'm not used to having those. Oh, they're pretty light for what they are. I don't know if you can get sick from uh, from foosty MREs, but let's just eat these anyway. Oh boy, they take a while to eat. And I didn't even finish them off. Are there acorns in this game? Yeah, there will be acorns. Right, so you're going to use our bare hands to pull apart a crowbar into scrap metal. Unthinkable, I know, I know. And then there goes scrap metal, it's getting removed from our list of items. And now... I'm going to need you to burn for a long, long time, by the way, so take this cedar and take this reclaimed wood. And I am going to tear apart this metal shelf. And that's not all. I actually need some additional cloth. So I am going to tear apart... What do I not care about? This t-shirt's kind of crappy. Let's just tear you apart. It's okay. There'll be plenty of cloth later on. Mm, that sweatshirt's kind of nice. These socks are rubbish, so let's harvest the socks. There we go. Now, and by now I mean once this water is ready, yoink, let's get to work. I am going to make, not the arrowheads, it's very unlikely that I'm going to get a bow, so why bother preparing with arrowheads? No, what I want is improvised knife. Three hours, we've got plenty of time, I've got plenty of water in my belly. Yeah, it takes more time to tear apart a cardboard box than a crowbar. You heard it here first. Right, give me that knife. I need to find a place to rest. It's dusk, so I can't be far behind. It's good. For the first time in all of these runs, I actually have a knife. And I also wish to make a hatchet. I'm going to take fatigue damage making it, but that's okay. Oh, I didn't need to, Claw. I didn't have to tear apart my shirt or my socks, one or t'other. I think I will make a 
couple of arrowheads just in case, maybe. Anyway, four hours. I will get tired doing this, but that's okay. A little bit of damage. A little bit is okay. Although I'm, I, need, uh, I need more time on this thing. It's fine. I can shovel the coal for duration. Actually, I could go up to the prepper cache and sleep there. That works even better, in a sense. Right, I do really want the hatchet, though, so give me that. Oh, I'm gonna get thirsty. I should have drank, I should have drank, I should have drank. There we go, I brought that down again myself. Well, I might as well eat first, and now I can... Eat the energy bar first. I should have eaten the dog food, whatever. Um... Right, now, the fun thing is that I can actually open these with my knife. I shouldn't... No, actually, let's not eat the dodgy stuff. If it's tin, do it 25 or more. With the knife, you can open up your cans without... Um, without breaking it. I'm not really sure I want this. I don't want food that can make me sick. There's just no point in taking that risk. Let's just eat. At least until we're full. What does the hatchet give you compared to the hacksaw? That's right, we should check it off. The hatchet is the best weapon for self-defense. There are also some things that can only be broken apart with a hatchet, and the hatchet can be used to open um, tinned things. Okay, there we go. Hmm, we've got plenty of time in this furnace. I think I will sleep here until this has gone out. Well, you know what, I'll sleep for seven hours and then we'll see what happens. That's just going to boil dry, I don't, I don't particularly care, I've got decent amounts of water. Right, seven hours, and we'll see where we are. A gun is better for self-defense. Uh, in a struggle? I don't actually know what you do with a gun. I think you can fire it, but who plays with guns? That would kind of steal me away from the situation. Right, well, look at that. This is rather nice. I will go and check out the prepper's place. I have water, I have food, including this mostly opened and eaten tinny of dog food. And you know what? I don't need your crummy recycled can. You stay there. Give me a torch, and let's go. So that damage that I took in the bottom left, that is permanent. The only way to heal that is with stims, and those are limited. A stim will recharge 15% of your health. Or rather, 15% points. So if you end up with 105 max health, it's still only going to give you 15 points. Gotta hand it to Commander Shepard. She's been holding on to her gender pretty well. If you play as Fem Shep, she can turn into Male Shep, and then turn back into Fem Shep, and then you, you never know who you're playing as. In the, in the game, the characters are Astrid and Will, but I don't call them that. I see them as Commander Shepard and Commander Shepard, and there's really no need for me to get that carcass. Didn't I say I was going to make some arrowheads? Well, I guess I lied. Pretty chilly out here. I should, should make myself a cup of tea. It is here. Sweet. Okay, so the prepper caches are added to the challenge modes. Is it full or not? It is absolutely not full. Good source of getting some more scrap iron. But there's a book here and nothing else. But it means I can rest here without needing to feed a fire. Never seen anything inside uh, an abandoned cache great like that. Maybe on easier settings. Cute looking book, but no thanks. Right, in that case, I can't start fire because I'm indoors. Yeah. To hell with that torch. And we're just going to eat and sleep. Mm, I guess I'll finish off my MRE. Old Canadian MREs. I feel like Canada would make particularly nice MREs. 
Talking of Commander Shepard, reminded me that there's Mass Effect 4 coming. I can't wait for it so I can see Heldon die inside when Garrus died in the marathon. It inevitably sucks. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to sound too much like a psychopath, but Heldon's suffering just fuels my life. I was lying about the psychopath part, I have no mind. But it's all banter. Right, Heldon gives as good as he gets. Well, I assume. Right, let's move. I've got to make my way over to Broken Railroad. We're a stone's throw away from it. In that direction. So that's where we're going. And I don't mind running a fair bit for this. Ooh, one thing I will do, however, is I'm going to take this wee shortcut down. Jumpy, 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 but let's try not to hurt ourselves going down here. I'm going to leave the heavy hammer over at the... Uh, over at Spencer's here. Oh, also, greed. Greed is good. Greed is great. Leave the hammer behind. Make myself some tea. That happens more often than you might think. Shout out to Von Dougals and his quality of life mod, which is amazing. He even put in uh, a setting for separate interact, so you don't need to use your fire and throw button to interact with things. But that was uh, that was getting in the way of my old man muscle memory, so I, I turned it off. Like all good mods, the modifications are optional. Right, let's light her up. So you can't interrupt that by trying to pick something up. Uh, let's go. Not found any accelerants so far. And the wind is picking up. That's grim, but we'll be fine. I can always just stop and make a fire. Come on, little fire. Especially when you're not playing for 500 plus days. You can just use your matches willy-nilly. In fact, I encourage people to use matches willy-nilly. Far too many Perfect. people I play playing this game. They, they hold on to their matches like using them as sacrilege. It is not. Using the matches to survive is not... A problem. Right. Gonna cook with you. What did I say I wanted to do here? That's right, the hammer. The... Wait, wait a second. Oh, right, I need temperature on the forge. I'll never mind that. This hammer is two kilos. Given that I have over two... I've got two and a half kilos worth of knife and hatchet, I do not additionally need this hammer. So we're gonna keep it here. Clunk. I'm gonna take it off of my list of items that I own. And, 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 it couldn't hurt to prepare another couple bits of tea. Boarding doesn't usually make sense, but it feels so good, you know? Get my racial teas warmed up. Grab my water, grab you. You'll be good in a moment. And then out we go, go. I wouldn't mind taking a wee nap, but... Yeah. I hesitate to say it, but it is the warmest time of day. It's okay, I quite like traveling during blizzards, so this will be fine. I shouldn't even take a torch. The torch is going to immediately die, but I'm a little low on torches, so... Especially if they're good, I want to take them. That one is not good. Uh, the furnace still has a minute of embers in it, so... These racial teas are still good. I'm going to mostly drink one. Then I get the warming up bonus. And we're going to move. We're going to regret moving. <laughs> That's okay. I mind this. The biggest threat of the blizzards is not the ball of King Cold. It's the getting lost. It's so easy to get lost in a blizzard. Especially in Forlorn Muskeg. Because you can get you can get lost on the ice. There's no shelter, and if you take a wrong turn, you fall through the ice. Actually, thinking back on it, this is a terrible, terrible idea. Oh, what the hell? We're moving anyway. If I have to stop and make shelter, then so be it. There is a path to go along there, but I'm not confident enough uh, to do it in a blizzard. So I'm going to take this somewhat longer path here.
I'd be excited for Mass Effect 4 if Bioware had made a good game in the past 10 years. I don't have a dog in that fight. I don't think I've played any Bioware game. Why would I? I don't think they bring anything to the table that I'm after. Alright. What, what a grim, bloody day. At least it's only minus 11 when I'm in here, but blizzards also dramatically lower the ambient temperature. There's some Mars here. It'd be real funny if I just get lost here. And by, uh, by funny, I mean I will take permanent damage and deeply regret it. Okay, part of the fun of being cocky is eating your comeuppance. This isn't going to be a short stream, so I'm going to want something to eat during it. Ah, Ian. Thank you, Ian, for backing this game. I believe it was a Kickstarter before it was an Early Access. And this game's had quite the long development. Right, I'm going to drink the last of my racial tea to get another warming up boost and to recharge my warming up bonus. I would already likely be freezing cold and taking hypothermic damage if I didn't have some lovely hot tea in my belly. Playing a cold video game is so cozy, yeah. I don't get the same kick out of playing an extremely hot game. Or a game that depicts extreme heat. Right, this is the problem I'm talking about. Can't see more than a dozen feet. Where exactly do we go from here? If I just head out on the ice, it's going to crack beneath me. I think it was Baron who was playing and he was just wandering around and going, ah, I'm falling through the ice, how do I know? What's the indication? You hear the cracking and you see this indication for it, and you know, people people lay into me being blind. Really shouldn't be this greedy for cattails in the middle of a blizzard, but old habits, they die hard. If I were truly, truly desperate, I could actually just crouch behind here and then make myself a little fire. And you know what? I'm going to do it because it's going to feel cozy. This uh, fire could easily change direction, but that's not my problem. Matches are in abundance, even in regular interloper. There are something like 300 matches in the world. If you're in a dire strait, or even if you're in a moderate strait, just light a fire. Those matches aren't worth your life. And on top of that, matches are now infinite, thanks to beachcombing. And on top of that, fire is always infinite because of the maglens. The magnifying lens will always get you a fire. As long as it's uh, bright out. On top of that, I have previously said that the mag lenses can be destroyed in a struggle. That is now something I have maybe not proven, but empirically tested and can say is false. I'm sorry for spreading wrong information there. Do not trust wikis 100%. I loaded up a game as Commander Shepard. I gave myself only one item, the mag lens. I had no clothes, I had no nothing. And I charged into a bear ten times. And then I charged into a wolf about ten times. Every single time the mag lens took zero damage. Those mag lenses are indestructible. Even so, you could lose them. If you deposit them in a locker on a beachcombing area, <laughs> the sea can reclaim your mag lens, so do not put the mag lens inside a locker. Put it down somewhere. The game also sometimes has bugs where uh, containers eat your items, so don't do that either. But jeez, my stuff got pretty soaked in the blizzard. Probably going to be a recurring problem for them. It's fine though, I, I can take them off to dry, that's no big deal. Unless they are drying, and whilst you are attempting to burn, A little bit more. Ooh, ah, just a little bit. Why those tests are not on the channel? I just did them in my spare time. I was watching a, another streamer. Blake's CJ, is that his name? I'm terrible with names, so I'm sorry for constantly forgetting. Uh, but we were talking about the mag lens, and he was like, yeah, I'm not so sure if that's true or not. 
and whilst he was streaming I just loaded up my game to test and sure enough the mag lens is indestructible. God, it feels so cozy being here. Oh, it doesn't feel so cozy anymore. The wind has changed. My water is almost boiled. Can we just barely maintain this fire? We cannot. It is too windy. All right, well, let's get our cleaves on. I miss my socks. I must be really, really uncomfortable wandering around like this. Come on, you can, you can do it, my water. Just boil. Embers still cook food, you know. Chug some hearty dog food whilst we're here. Dog's best friend, tinners. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, I don't stream everything I do. I don't stream my real life. Right, there we go. I'm almost certain this torch will not hold. Yeah. Oh well, thank you. You you did wonders for me. So, with that, we were just able to take some respite, warm up, cook some teas. Oh, I forgot to warm my teas, didn't I? Uh, not necessarily. I'm just going to drink this right now for the warming up bonus. There we go. Love that warming up bonus. It's so powerful for doing journeys in the cold. And just like Jurassic Park, follow the power lines. That's going to get us out of Forlorn Muskeg. The blizzard ended, so the wildlife has respawned. There's a wolf right over there. Right where the tip of my flare is. He is heading in this direction. There's a reasonable chance he's going to spot me and tail me, but that's okay. Generally, you're safe if you just walk away from them. I do see Lord Barrington as well. I want to do a test of something that I have talked about before and not actually done. If I can grab the wolf's attention. Hey, Wolfie! I know, I know. We really shouldn't be testing fate on a run with no healing. Come on, Wolfie. I'm right here. I know, you, I know you're hungry. How can he not see me? Wolves are meant to have good vision. I'm right here, Fido. Don't make me walk onto the ice. There we go. Jesus. Right, so... I've always pondered this. Wolves are scared of bears, and I've wanted to, in a controlled environment, certainly a more controlled environment than this, I've wanted to test using a bear to spook a wolf. Also, is my tea still warm? It is not. Okay, well, I'm definitely playing this a little fast and loose. Where is Barrington? He's right there. Well, this is a problem. And I can't start a fire because it's too windy. Well, that was a very, very bad decision. <laughs> Don't on. look up. Come on. Okay, okay. Right, well... That was weird, because the bear didn't charge me. A lot of weird things going on right there. So, I wanted to test and see if the wolf would be spooked by the bear. Instead, the bear just started charging me. But the, what's, what I find strange is that the bear stopped. If the bear goes on his hind legs, the bear will charge you. Hmm. Well, maybe this is not the right time to be furthering that investigation. Let's get out of here. There's a high blind over there. Usually has good stuff. But... Perhaps now is just the right time to leave. <laughs> so always have a backup plan. The backup plan for if a bear charges you is start a fire. Bears are not scared of flares or torches, but if you start a campfire, that will make them hesitate until they just run away. Although I have once seen a bear 
charge directly through a campfire to hurt me, so uh, I don't know what to make of that. So that was my backup plan, but it was windy, so I couldn't just start a fire, it says it's too windy. So what I did was I went down to somewhere guarded by a snowbank, and that way I could start a fire. The fire failed, but that's not the point. As long as you're in the process of starting fire, you still cow wildlife. Better than getting mauled by a bear, because I have very low protection. How much protection do I have? 10%, so he probably would have done something like... 60% health damage, which is not really feasible on a no healing run. Could just drop the trousers to the bear. And he has a... I'm never going to escape that uh, bear stealing my trousers. That happened in my Dark Walker run. I don't think I've ever been mauled by a bear on stream since then, because they're very easy to avoid. They're really big, and they're paw prints are really easy to see. They're, well, they're like Will Smith. Really easy to see in the snow. Mm, all that running around has made us a little bit tired. It's going... well, not a little bit, a lot tired. It's going to feel like quite the trek to get to the maintenance yard here. Oh, right, yes, the... The As the Dead Sleep thing is... looks to be around the back of the maintenance yard. I'm, that's surprising to me, because I would have thought that it would be at the hunting lodge. Because that's deeper into the region. It's more work to get there. I will go to the hunting lodge regardless, though, because it has a stim. You know what? I have never harvested burdock in this game. Let's change that. Never tried cooking it or preparing it. I want to see what kind of stats it gives. Looks like a mandrake. Burnables, burnables. Ah, proper hatchet. I could use this. I think it's lighter than my improvised hatchet, and better. Well, bye bye improvised hatchet. I got the real thing now. Mm. Let's uh, let's take a moment. Cool, an actual hatchet. Could you not tear apart the improvised one? Come on, Let's check that. I've never tried. Come on, Shepard, you're better than this. 60% chance of success. Come on, little fire. Speaking of Jurassic Park, a game like this could actually be somewhat fun. Evading clever girls instead of Barringtons. Now, you see, Jurassic Park oh, is a movie, yeah. so. Uh, by the laws of video games, all books based on it must be terrible. Alright, can we tear apart this hatchet then? I can! Two scrap metal. Not at all worth the hour of commitment. But let's just leave this behind so if anybody comes back for their campfire, they'll go, What happened to my hatchet? And I will be amused. Right, I do not really have the time. So I'm just going to warm up my teas and then we're going to get moving. I myself am warming up here at a fair rate, but the tea will the tea will do more for me. So yeah, I'll do this, grab a torch, and then off I trot. Yeah, eat these sardines. Ooh, I shouldn't do that. Okay. Uh, I thought the sardines were better better condition than they were, but at uh, at less than seventy five percent condition, sardines can give you food poisoning, and food poisoning is horrible in a run like this because you need to race to a bed. Uh, otherwise, you're going to constantly lose condition. Also, what? I have Rose Hip and Reishi, so between those, they can generally heal anything. Right, is that the small one? That is the small one. I'm just going to drink this one straight. Warms me up, gives me the warming up bonus. I grab you, I grab you. Ooh, that's a good torch. Give me another torch. That's a crap torch, let's go. You can see in the bottom right, my maximum weight is going down, because I'm getting more tired the more I move. I will probably not run, because I'm not, I'm not very cold, but I'm very tired. Man, that tiredness is going down, down, down. It feels like tiredness goes down more than normal on this setting. I wonder if that's true or not. 
because there is a setting for changing how quickly you get tired. And funnily enough, on Interloper, it's not on maximum. You can set both your thirst and your tiredness to degrade faster than regular Interloper. Your hunger and your temperature, I believe, are set to maximum degradation on Interloper, though. Now, this is no single region survivor run. I'm not looking to scout out every single area. I will save that for my Ultra Loper run, which will be done once this expansion is finished. This expansion that I'm constantly laying into because I don't like its development. But I still love the game, so once the DLC is done, I will sink my teeth into that. Yeah, between this and Biotech, it's, it's a bad time for games I love getting expansions. I just hope that uh, Frostpunk 2 and the expansion for Factory are good. Because that's good, I'm going to lose all faith in DLC. Yeah, we should have lost faith in DLC long ago. We let too many things slide. Look at this industry now. Did your heat go down slower on this mode? Am I you just man I'm managing it really well. I'm drinking lots of hot teas and I'm carrying a fire with me when possible. And almost all my traveling has been done during the warmest time of day, which is dusk. Coldest time of day is dawn, the warmest time is dusk. It's actually generally warmer at midnight than it is at, say, 6 in the morning. Although there is no time of day, there's just that little thing that's obfuscated by chat. Oh, but you can read it between Dark Young's message and Jan Deli's uh, yeah. subscription there. Oops, a daisy. You can see the. Okay, that wolf is no problem. But the wind might be picking up a bit, so I'm going to tell this wolf to snag off. There we go. And he's running the direction I'm going. Well, take a right, take a right, take a... Oh, he went into that little hutch. That was an amazing decision by me, because look at that, the wind just immediately picked up. I'm going to follow along this rock for its windproofness for a wee bit. I'm also going to gulp down another mouthful of racial tea. There we go, and that boosts up my warming up bonus, and my temperature in the bottom left, you might notice, has gone up as well. This torch is going to blow out any moment, so I'm going to hug walls where I can to try and save it. Commander Shepard does not have the wherewithal to just body block the shield, uh, body block the fire. Coming. In story mode, uh, you, you actually enter a weak caboose here, and then the big unkillable bear starts chasing you. Well, not chasing you, he chucks you off. I actually bl uh, blasted through story mode of this game on my vacation. I played uh, up to halfway through the second of four episodes, and then I just watched the rest on YouTube because I really thought it was terrible. Uh, there's no better way to ruin the serenity of the quiet Canadian wilderness than sharing the experience with someone else. It was grim. Just full of these god-awful trite cliches. The pinnacle of all of them was when there was a uh, plucky young tech hacker girl appears saying, I was watching you because I hacked the cameras. Uh, it really just felt like my eyeballs were rolling out of my skull when I heard that. It's bad enough just hearing that in general, but hearing that in this setting... Uh, pulled me out of the whole moment, and I was already pretty pulled out. Yeah, kind of like pantomiming. It's behind you, dear. I haven't seen a pantomime since I was like six years old. I'm pretty sure I saw the singing kettle. I hated it. Mm, new dog food. Befitting for you, Shepard. I like going in here because there's a guaranteed flare. Yes, a guaranteed flare. Huh, okay, well. I liked coming in here. There was a guaranteed flare. It's gone now. I'll be gone soon if I don't take shelter. I don't want to run, though. So okay, as long as I'm behind some something to block the wind, I'll be okay. 
After watching all this lonely TLD, I feel like an NPC would be very jarring. Yeah, and there's too many of them and they don't stop talking. I'm so tired of games talking at me. More silent protagonists, please. More text that is just text. Do it the Undertale way. Just have characters have different ways, different noises for boop 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 boop, depending on who's talking. I don't see the wolf, but I really don't want to struggle. Should be a replacement pry bar around here. I'm gonna have a quick look for that before I take shelter. Is that it? That is not it. I lost a lot of health here during my outer loper run. Hello. Becca's old stash on the lake. Ah, right next to the bear cave, you say? I guess I could give it the old college try. I'm not going to check all these... Uh... All these trucks. I mean, sure, some of them might have amazing loot, but this isn't a I need amazing loot kind of run. I'll rest soon. I'm gonna Just, I need to kill and keep moving kind of run. Pretty dark here. Tell you what, this is exactly what we have you for. Yeah, I did ditch the heavy hammer. I left it back at Spencer's. At least I hope I did. I fondly remember putting it down. Yeah, there we go. I do not have an icon ready for having a regular hatchet over an improvised hatchet. I never expected to find full-blown hatchets. They're never meant to spawn on regular interloper, so obviously this isn't interloper loot tables. I wish they didn't have loot tables. I wish they just used some kind of... Uh, oh, wow. Old-fashioned park is actually better than the ski jacket. But by a few metrics, the ski jacket is better than the windbreaker. Actually, a difficult choice, but I think I will. Hmm, very difficult choice. Wind is usually what gets you. You know what? I will take the worn ski jacket, and this thing I will tear apart for cloth. I said I'd find loads of cloth, but that's absolutely not what I've been doing. Actually, how long does it take to tear that thing apart? Decent windbreaker, two cloth in twenty minutes. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not warm in here, but I'll be warm when I get inside the yard. Uh, no. Yes! No to the took. Absolutely yes to the other thing. And now I now I kind of regret ditching my pry bar. There's normally a pry bar here, but it's not here right now. It might be inside the maintenance place, though. Let's check it out. Is it worth sleeping in here? It's worth sleeping in here. It's not even a pry bar over here. Start warming up in here. And there's a good chance of there being a stim inside here as well. Sometimes there's a heavy hammer here, there's not today. There's another hacksaw, but I don't need it. Oh, lucky day. 76%, my hacksaw is in 72%, so bye bye old hacksaw. Loved finding a hacksaw on here during my single region survivor run. I don't think I did. Burnables are always welcome. I don't need a book on archery, so I'll leave that there. What's the end point of the run? Uh, there are five graves across the world for me to seek out. I must seek them all out. Newspaper, newsprint rules, those do not spawn on Interloper either, so. I think I think we've already long established that this is not playing by interloper rules. There's usually a jerry can here, or rather, I've never seen there not be a jerry can here. And that this stuff? is pretty good for me right now because this this uh, thingamajigger of mine is running low. This storm lantern. There we go. Even while it's lit, I can just go glug glug glug, and now it's going to stay lit for an eternity. Fine by me. I don't need a rope. Ooh, yeah, 
Yes, I do. I need a rope to go down to the ravine, and I do want to go down to the ravine, so let's have a spin. Now, obviously, with a vast amount of health like I have, I don't need stims, but I want the contingency. <laughs> Flying fuse. I just leave that there. It's not doing any harm to anyone, in fact. I can snap it back to its flying location. Hmm. Normally I'm not crazy about having a crowbar, but now I kind of wish I had one. Ooh, right, since I have a hatchet, I will actually take a whetstone. Yeah, the lantern's a bit heavier fueled up, but I'd rather have it fueled up. Or do you mean heavier than the fuel being inside the jerry can? That I don't know, but I'm going to ditch the jerry can. It's way too heavy to justify carrying around with me. So once I'm done exploring here, I'll refuel this. Uh, and then just drop the jerry can. I love having coal very much. There's so much heat in coal. And yeah, there's a forge. And there's plenty of sources of metal here, so this is a great place to be for, uh, for lots of forging, if you need to do lots of forging. And there's even a toilet for some delicious toilet water. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah, I really do wish I had the pry bar now. All these lockers with potentially really good loot, since I'm not playing on apparently interloper loot. Fuel is the same weight regardless of the source, but containers have their own weight value. Yeah, I was, was going to point that out. If you just have them in loose plastic looking uh, cans for the lantern fuel, it's actually quite heavy. It's more efficient to do it in a jerry can, but I, I don't I don't know what kind of person would carry around a jerry can all the time. It does not seem worth it. What the heck? A flashlight? I've never had the flashlight. Let's grab it. I think it recharges during an aurora. And can only be used during an aurora. But I've actually never used it before, so... It's going to be my emergency uh, item in aurora. The wood matches are not here. That's very strange. Herbal tea, I don't think, heals you. I'm going to drink it before I go to bed anyway, though, because um, I'm curious if it will. That's when I drink it right now. Really old, nasty herbal tea. I've done that before. It's kind of like you have to try to taste anything when you do that. This stuff will come in handy. I will not take the tin opener because I already have a knife and a hatchet. And those can be used to open up things. You'll spare the condition of your knife and hatchet if you use a tin opener instead, but I don't think it's worth the quarter kilo of weight. There's very likely to be a bedroll up in the lodge nearby here, so I'll certainly be checking that out. Okay, that's enough exploration for now, Shepard. Sleep until daytime, and then there's a little bit more searching to be done here. And there's a lot of triaging to be done as well. The wiki page claims this is interloper, but the loot is not. It's, it's definitely not interloper. I'll say that with some confidence. Some things feel off about the difficulty. But hey, that's what custom custom mode was made for. I want to sleep even more, so let's just glug, glug, glug a bit more water. Sleep until we're fully rested. And just wait until you find a gun. Guns have spawned an interloper before, but it's inevitably been a bug. Right. I'll be doubling back here if the need arises, so it's a very logical place to leave some of my stuff. Let's fill our belly first, because there's no point carrying heavy uh, food when I can carry it in my belly for free. Especially tinned goods. And yes, herbal tea did not heal me. Did it even give me the improved rest bonus when I drank it? I didn't pay attention. Yum, yum, yum. I don't think we're going to finish the food. Yeah, we're keeping 84 scraps of calories in there. How heavy is it? Hmm. Very light. Lighter than an empty can, I think, actually. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's going to gain weight when I finish it. Uh, right. Bit of triaging. What am I getting rid of? You. 
I, I don't need charcoal at all. Why am I even carrying this? The flashlight weighs a kilo? Ooh. I'll keep it though, just because I've never had it. And drop one of you. Uh, drop the crampy torch. Still quite heavy, but I am carrying a rope, so some of that stands to reason. You know what? I'm never going to use these oaks. There's so much food that I will certainly not need to do any cooking. Clothes situation's fine. That's all fine. I've got things to burn, but that's okay. Burning is fine. I don't mind having extra weight worth of burning stuff. Okay, right, there's one big thing to do right now. And that's not just drink, but it is drink. I don't know, putting bug reports for this game seems a bit uh, thankless. You get a real uh, boilerplate answer on the Steam forums for one. Right, this crate contains the goodies, but this crate will drop down to take its place. I shall show you. Fortunately, this decent hatchet makes short work of that. The crate is still blocking. Okay, chat. To my knowledge, there can be a stim here. If there's not a stim, I think it's wet stone and sewing kit. What do you think it'll be? You have no time to guess, because I'm breaking this down right now. It was a wet stone and a wool ear wrap. The wool ear wrap is actually a good find. I put that on right now. It gives me a decent amount of extra, uh, extra warmth for practically no weight. What wasn't no weight is all the wood I just picked up from that, so I shall drop most of that. There we go. More flashlight sleeping... Oh, no, definitely not sleeping back. I've never seen nothing there, though. Right, am I going out? Not until I sleep a bit more. I have a lot of climbing to do today. Also, it sounds quite stormy out there. Finding the parts to build the Frostpunk generator. Uh, yeah, my knowledge of mechanics is far too weak to build a generator. Oh dear god, this is grim. Um, yeah, nope. No, 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 no. Yeah, this feels like single region survivor all over again. At least I can pass a decent amount of time, so I've got a lot of mushrooms to yeah, prepare. Oh yeah, the burdock, I never did that. Edible on its own. That's a good start. Wow, what a sound. Very realistic sound. I never made my old man beard like it, so let's make two of those. Still sounds grimmer than Grimsby out there. Oh, look who's well fed. I was wondering why my weight problem went away. Your weight problem goes away when you eat. That's how it works. Alright, hopefully it's at least not blizzarding out there. I don't mind a storm, but a blizzard is just too much to, to go out in. Ugh, grim. Yeah, I guess I could poke around here if nothing else. Ah, that's right. I could make my way over to the grave. Where is the grave? It's just here. It says maintenance shed. I don't think it was inside the maintenance shed. It's very distinct, but at the same time hard to see. Decent enough opportunity to check inside these, which I missed earlier. But I have something resembling an idea for finding the 
location of that grave. I'm gonna go back in here, grab my charcoal, and then at least once the storm subsides, I can map, and that'll give me at least a relative position. Right, kids, grim. Right. Good, I already ditched you. Grab one bit of charcoal. Too tired for that? Well then, just pass. <laughs> Not ten hours. That's an hour in here. Still doesn't sound good out there, does it? There we go. Surely it's calmed down now. Oh, I never checked the freezer. And for good measure. Clearly my gamer senses were kicking in. Now, as long as it's not too grim out there, and it's not too grim, I can do this. Map the area. And... It just says maintenance shed. Is it inside the maintenance shed? Who puts a grave inside? negative sense to me. I don't think I want my grave to be a warm place. There's going to be some nasty spoiling. Played enough Rimworld to know that. Hmm. I'm going to check around outside a bit more. It said press J for info. Just says maintenance shed. I do think it's around here somewhere. But you know what's also around here? Loads and loads of wolves. Nice field for something grave. Oh, I see it! I see it! Like I said, once we do this grave, we're gonna mosey on over to the ravine and to the uh, the lodge. I want to go to both those places. There we go. Found the water like I promised, where the rivers meet sea, a bitter and empty place. You were right. I need to hear that more in my life. You were right, Jake. Better followed up by, and I was wrong. So I want to say it. I think I saw a pry bar inside the shed. Well, that shed is now behind us. Still being stalked by that wolf. We might have had trouble getting through the chain link fence. Dogs might be smart, but they're also dumb as bricks. Yes, yes, rough. I don't want to run because I'm already going to get pretty knackered climbing up and down this thing, especially without any coffee. Although, there's a high chance that there is coffee down there. So that's also fine. Uh, there's a bit of a waste of time. A knife! Ah! Uh, Freaking knife. Well, that is something. This whole region had a knife and a hatchet. It's kind of unthinkable. Right, I'm going to come here and make myself a... Yeah, it's a torch, but I want to make a proper fire so that I don't I don't get cold when deploying this rope. I'm gonna spook this wolf and maybe make a hot tea as well. Break down the knife, make an improvised pry bar. Very 
it's important to make sure that the wolf can. Oh, wait, set off. Uh. Okay. Ooh, that, was, that was scary. He should not have been charging me there, but he wanted to. Ah, I should be using the book. Book's better for starting the fires. Yeah, what would you even improvise a pry bar out of? It'd have to be something that's not going to bend. Come Couldn't on, use fire. like a shoehorn for it. That's Perfect. the stuff. And I'll look great out here, and wow, it's later in the day than I thought. Just slam on a bit of coal. Slam on a couple of teas. Deploy this rope. Takes 15 minutes, I think, to deploy a rope. And it's blocking me from my own teas. Chug, chug, chug. Oh, thirstier than I thought. Thank you as well. Drink up, and we are moving. You can always use a stim to get out of here, although I'd rather not. What I will likely do... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Take a torch with me. Your tiredness doesn't go down too much when climbing down, but climbing up is exhausting. Hang on, my warming up bonus is already gone? Didn't I just take a drink? I, I'm pretty sure I just took a drink. Yeah, well, there we go. I'll take another drink. There we go. So, this ravine is pretty amazing, actually. It's got corpses, cattails, a stim. It even has a wolf corpse. I think a wolf and one or two deer. But it's also... It could have the fire striker, but it could also have a glitched fire striker. Oh, it's getting dark out here. Hmm. If I don't find the fire striker, I'm actually going to uh, do a bit of let's let's call it debugging rather than cheating to see if the the uh, to see if the fire striker had its bug where it spawns in an unreachable place. It's really hard to say no to cattails. I love my cattails. Corpsey, corpsey, stimmy, stimmy. I'll take it. I, do, I will not take it, Shepard. I don't need a shooting guide on a run that has no guns. <laughs> there may well be guns. Heck, we took the knife and we took the uh, took the hatchet. Why would I not take the gun? Wind is picking up. I don't like that. I wanted to preserve this fire. And I like being able to see as well. It's a novelty for me. Yeah, Broken Railroad and me have never seen eye to eye. The weather here is always pretty grim. At least in my experience. Sign of the stem, but the stem is here. I just need to. I'll check back on the other side of the river when I'm on my way back. However, I will probably start a fire before that and cook up the coffee that I'm definitely going to find here. Just want to preserve this smash, even though I don't need to. The torches burn out faster in stronger winds. Strong winds blow out torches just like that. I don't know if my sound suppression killed the clicking on, of my fire. finger, but I clicked my finger to indicate the promptness at which wind will blow out your torch. It's immediate. Uh, I screw that torch, it's not worth anyone's time. I'm not being stingy with my coal, I have plenty of it, so why not use it? Alright, fire striker, coffee, coffee, bandage, in. stump remover, line. I ditched the stump remover and the line, didn't need either of them, but the coffee's good. Coffee's well good, especially in a run like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some good coffee. Make burdock into an antibiotic tea. I won't, though. I will make good coffee and more good coffee. 
keep you warm. Jesus, that's cold. Blowing right at me. I'm gonna drink this for the hell of it. I'm gonna drink my hot coffee as well. I don't really mind about uh, the wastage here. Like I said, there's just so much stuff. Why not take it? Okay, unfortunately, it's hard to see. So I'm going to do the unthinkable. I'm going to use this outside in hopes that I can... Hold on, I think the wind is calming down. It is calming down! The game does love to do that. Okay, in that case, come with me. I find it much easier to see by torchlight than by... A storm lantern like torchlight. That was like a Doctor Who spin off, right? It was pretty grim. Although there was a pretty funny scene where I think a woman gets melted into a pavement slab and it's just her face and the slab that remains. And, uh,. I think she makes a comment about, well, you know, we have to improvise on the love life. I thought, crap, that's a bit risky for a children's show. Funny, though. Torch wood. That makes more sense. Oh, well, well, yeah, that's freaking broken railroad weather. Well, what's that trying to do? Anything? Here's a fresh new load of windy snow in your face. I'm a little perturbed that I have not found the stim, though. A hundred percent there's a stim down here. In my experience, it's usually close to this body, but I don't see a stim, do you? Nooks and crannies. I'm not really at liberty to spend forever searching for these things. It's getting cold. I'm going to be getting more and more tired before I get out of here. I do have another coffee up my sleeve, but... I've got a lot of coffee up my sleeve and I'm bound to find more. Maybe I shouldn't be so grinchy about it all. Is this a storm or a blizzard? Pretty hard to tell when you're in a canyon like this because you're... you don't see very far anyway. Check a bit back and forth here. Where in the world is that stim? Or are we going to find that on these peculiar loot tables there is no stim? Not down here at least. The stem is somewhat important for this kind of run, so I, I, I am going out of my way. I do not have to come here. I'm coming here because I want that stem. And I wish I had Dark Young here. He'd be like a divining rod for finding the drugs. Even the way he says drugs is just right. There's a certain gravity to the uh in his drugs. Where is that stim? That's not a stim. That's not a stim. She actually need the corpse. Maybe I should be checking more around you. Maybe I missed something in plain sight. Okay, here's the corpse. Nothing immediately around him. Hold out on me, are you, chat? Granted, maybe the middle of the night isn't the time to be doing this. I once lost the keys to my motorbike on a dark forest path, and let me tell you, searching for that was grim. I'd use the light of my Nintendo DS, which uh, might date that occurrence a bit, but 
That's how it went down. Even the dark young's drug senses are not tingling. It's like the Witcher sense, but you need to live in Ayrshire to develop it. I'm going to give this one last look around the edges, and if it still don't find it, I'm giving up. And just declaring that there are no drugs here. But I swear, on Interloper, there is a 100% stim spawn chance here. In my experience, it's all... Well, I have always found it along this path here, but I'm certainly not seeing it this time. And I can't really run, because I won't have the energy to get out of here if I do too much running. Maybe you're just overwhelmed by the background noise of your neighbor, but... Well, I'm certainly not. It's quiet as a mouse here. I mean, you don't have to go far to find it being pretty loud, but that's fine. It's neighborhoods away from me. When I first came to Sea of Folk, I visited this place when I visited Hungary last year. I thought, wow, I don't like this place. I don't want to move here. <laughs> and I ended up moving here. That's the way it goes sometimes. On a second time round, I saw it in a much better light. Give it up, Shepherd. There's no stim here. I, I just keep hoping that I'm going to suddenly see it out of the corner of my eye like I saw the grave, but nope. Nope, nope, Shepard gives up. If there is a stim, it has evaded me. Also, I'm getting too tired for this. How's my coffee? Is it still warm? It is stone cold. I'll just drink the cold coffee and get moving. No, 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 I'll heat it up before I get moving. There's no point in just uh, doing myself in like that. We're about to begin the big backtrack after we go up to the lodge. It's not a huge diversion to go up to the lodge, and it's certainly worth it because the lodge is stacked. Can you query if the stim has spawned in the e area with the console? Uh, there is a thing I could use for that, but I don't have it installed right now. Uh, it's Unity that's it, Reader or something like that. It's something I struggle immensely with using. Almost embarrassingly so. But you can use it to check all the items in an area. I suppose it's a handy tool for debugging to find things spawn, but it's also going to take a lot of the magic out of the experience. Because I do, I do quite like the hapless wandering that you do in the game. Kind of reminds me of myself in real life. A lot of hapless wandering. Maybe I'll find something. Maybe I won't. Jesus, it's cold. I know it's cold, Shepherd. Tell you what, why don't we? Why don't we actually spend a bit of time warming up? We'll make ourselves some nice coffee and just generally chill out over here. Because the wind... the wind is really settled down for the night. So I'm gonna shove this down. I'm running out of tinder so I hope I don't fail here. I have not found any accelerant other than the jerry can. And I'm not carrying around a jerry can. It's like three times Come heavier on. for its equivalent weight in just pure accelerant. There we go. Get rid of that subpar torch. Gonna shove on two bits of coal. That'll make me very warm. And I'll just use the help saw to very quickly take this meat off. I'll take all the meat off. Well, I'm in no hurry, right? I am not in a hurry. I'm certainly warming up a storm here. Cook, cook. Yeah, it's going to take a wee while, but we have a wee while. Don't want to make anything. My water situation is okay. There we go, just chomp that right down, Shepard. You're a, you're a hungry commander. How long's that got? Just 12 minutes? In that case, 
put on a cup of coffee. Eat that. Chug your coffee. Oh, the wind is coming. Well, good thing I was planning on leaving anyway. I should have made another cup of coffee. I will make another cup. I will make two more cups of coffee, actually. Just in case things go south, it's always good to have your coffee at the ready. Get a coffee. Get a coffee. Take it, take it, take it, take it. I'm gonna warm up my teas. Good, good. Let's go, Deshro. Oh, I had almost every tool within 30 minutes. The loot tables on this challenge mode are stacked. Also, it's, it's funny to think that coming down into this ravine was a complete waste of time because there was no stim. Or if there was a stim, it managed to evade me. Oh, we are not climbing this thing very quickly because we're quite tired already. But that's okay. If in doubt, I'll just have another cup of coffee and make my way over to the hunting lodge. I could climb this in one go, but I won't risk it, because falling down is death. Make some cedar, and grab a couple sticks. I'm surprisingly low on tinder. Almost unthinkably, I'm going to make a tinder plug, two tinder plugs in fact. That should give me the stamina I need to get out of here. Thank god the stamina bug for climbing ropes is gone. That was a disaster. Oh yeah, I ate some nice steak, but I also burnt a lot of calories getting here, so it's not exactly free. Right, there's some risks of traveling at this time, but we will live with those risks. I'm going to keep my flare at the ready for this. And I'm going to drink another cup of lovely hot coffee. Because I want to warm up and I want to get to my destination without too many issues. An eerie night, but yeah, wandering around in woods. It's very much like this. corners as tightly. There could be a bear here. The bear cave is over there, I believe. I will check it on the way back. I don't want to do it in the dark. So I feel kind of distant from the mic. Didn't want to turn my attention away from the game too much in case I got blindsided, but there we go. We know what roar is so far, which is a bit striking, but it's only, what, night two or three? I'm going to check the Fire Striker at the Hunter Blind and the Cave, and then we're going to go all the way up to the Hunter Lodge, which is up there. There's a rope shortcut, but the rope is not deployed by default, so you have to be the one to deploy it. That's something I do really like in this game, is creating shortcuts. You have to go a long way around, but then you can deploy the shortcut. The downside is that long way arounds are usually better than shortcuts because it's that tiring to climb a rope. But if you're playing with healing on, rope climbing can actually be quite good. It tires you out so much that you can sleep for a long time and then, huzzah, you get your health back from that sleep. I'll check the bear stash on the way back, Sard. I don't want to do it at night time. The bear can blend in with the rocks and then blindside me. And I'm not particularly ready to just start a fire. I can't see a damn thing here. I often talk up about how good hunter blinds are for materials, and there was absolutely nothing there. Shouldn't put that way, because I want it to look inside this cave as well. It's so weird having a torch. The battery powered torch. Fire Striker. Up to 
wood, but certainly not a fire striker. Okay, well, two more places I can think of to find it. Not done until those are exhausted. Really still out again. The wind's just off and on. It's certainly interloper levels of uh, wind fluctuation, which is a setting. Here's some animals out there. First thing I could run into is the moose. Actually, the moose will not be cowed by fire. The moose is cowed by nothing. You can kill it, and that's it. It's not even cowed by you shooting it. Oh, it'll run if you shoot it and it doesn't know you're there, but. If it knows you're there, it's gonna kill you. Gonna stomp your ribs into jelly. I have been there and I have done that. I think a lot of the dangers in this game you don't really perceive until they happen to you. You can read about parasites, you can read about broken ribs, but until you have them happen, it's kind of difficult to really appreciate the damage they do. Coloroni XD is just coming in, declaring their love for Jello. I forget what is Jello. Is that jelly or jam? Money's on jelly. as well, but I think I'm going to need to make a fire before I go for the hunting lodge. It's not very far away, it's like two minutes in that direction, but I don't think I've only got about one minute of warmth left in me. Fortunately, place to escape this cold. dead ahead is exactly a place to escape this cold. There is a cave along here that has a chance of the fire striker. In my hand is not a flare, but an emergency flare. The kind, well, an, a marine flare, I should say. The kind that's good for scaring off timber wolves. I'd rather use those in a pinch rather than the proper flare, because the proper flare burns for a long time. If I just need to scare away a wolf or a few wolves in a short period of time, I'm happier to use one of these very short-lasting emergency flares. Also, 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 I'm going to have to pick up the pace here, because it's getting cold as hell. Shepherd. There we go. It is not warm back here. It's almost warm. It's not. Hey, I have an idea. This is a bit cheeky, but I might be cold, but what if I do this? Now I'm warm, because you actually warm up with torches. They stack in heat. So if for some reason you desperately need to not be freezing, but you can't start a campfire for whatever reason, just do that. cannot imagine a situation in which that is a useful thing to do, but maybe it exists somewhere. I suppose it works in a situation like this. Let's say I'm playing Nogoa, which I kind of am, and you can't heal, and I, I need this I need this heat right now or else I'm going to take unavoidable damage. Then yeah, Come on, throw two or three regular torches on the ground. That'll give you about a four to six degree temperature bonus. And then you have your fire Perfect. going. And I'm a little sick of using all my coal all the time, so let's just burn a bunch of sticks. Eh, you know what, that torch sucks. This torch also yeah. sucks. Bleh, away with you. I'm a little short on water, so let's make some water. There's no hurry for us to leave here. I take the opportunity to warm up. I'm gonna loot this dead man's corpse. And find nothing. Shove on some reclaimed as well. Fur, fur, fur. No fire striker though. Mm, it's getting dicey. I do like the fire striker, even though I have no need for additional sources of ignition. Right, you guys can enjoy the fire. I need to take a water break. I'll just leave it running. There's no way we're in danger here after all.
Oh, right, you don't put me under pressure like that, Neefington. I'm so hyped for Jake Final Clean Dom 5 tomorrow, I've changed my entire schedule for it. Oh god. <laughs> Scary that. I gotta play Lemuria. I'm very not experienced with free spawn nations, so that's, that's gonna be something. Uh, right, we're still not warmed up, and we could still do with more water. We're not that overweight, so I will do exactly that. I'll make a touch more water. And then hopefully it's not windy out there when I leave, because I want to carry a fire with me. A quick check to see if I can make anything whilst we wait. Nothing of value. So, we do this. Warms us up nicely. All boiled. All boiled. Take. Take. We've got three torches, and they're all pretty good, so... I guess I will take two additional torches. And yeah, maybe three. And then let's go. I shouldn't need the warming up bonus for this journey. Although, I will drink up a bit just to lower my weight a touch. Weight doesn't count if it's in your belly, as we all know. We're a bit slow. That's just because we're tired and a bit overweight, though. I'm trying to hug this wall to prevent the wind from blowing out my fire. It will, though. It 100% will. Terrain is often just a suggestion in this game. Sometimes you can be inside a cave, but it's not one of those... It's not a cave-like place you're in. It's, it's more of a natural formation. And just the, the walls will not work for you. That happened to me in a cave in Forlorn Muskeg up near the moose spawning point in the birch forest. Yeah. Wind did not care about those obvious rock walls. It just blew right through and away went my fire. Yeah, we're really tired, but our health is amazing. Look at that. We're at something like 97, 95% health. Plenty of corpses. Don't even click on them, though. If you're not prepared to hack apart a corpse, don't even click on it. An animal corpse, I mean. Click on the human corpses all you want. The moment you click on an animal corpse, it starts to degrade. And it will degrade away to nothing, and then you will not get those free resources. So... Take its meat if you're desperate for the meat, otherwise wait until you're in a good position to completely disassemble the corpse. Oh, this is one. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> that caught me unawares. The moose is loose. I actually thought he was going to go for me there because he did his aggressive stamping. Okay, well that's very scary. And I was so tired I almost couldn't run away. Well that would have been <laughs> that would have been goodbye my ribs. And would have put a very strange spin on this run. But, as ever, I was ready. You only die in this game to being unprepared. I'm almost unprepared for this cold. Come on, Shepard, leg it to the lodge. Oh, I could hear it going for me. It was right behind me. Okay, we're in, we're warm. We're still very tired, but that is our problem. I should just sleep until it's morning, and I'll have uh, plenty of light to look around this place rather than agonizingly slowly dragging myself around here. Yeah, crikey. I thought I'd ditched the moose, but no, it was still going for me. Right, we're plenty warm. I'm just going to chew down on my... Yeah, let's eat our raw bardock. Uh, eat the last of our already opened dog food. I always try to leave the salty crackers for last. They don't degrade and they are massive amounts of calories for only 100 grams each. I would sooner eat cattail stalks, which I will. Yum, 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 yum. Full belly. Fully slaked. 
Are you ever prepared for two meter tall murder cow that can outpace you? I, I guess I could get I could have a spear on me. Surely that would help. So nine hours of sleep. Normally I do ten, but on this run there's no benefit to sleeping for longer periods of time. There's no healing anyway. Right. I will do the exploration now, because I might even want to sleep a bit more before I leave. I want to take advantage of this light. Doesn't seem so crazy right now. Coming up here was completely optional. I came here for the stim, and I'm going to be kicking myself if the stim is not here again. Oh god, who would sleep in this crappy bed when there was that other comfortable one to enjoy? Eyes peeled for a stim. Yeah, hey, you're right. It is a little hard to see here. Uh, I could always stop by the maintenance yard on the way out of here and refill this with a jerry can. The jerry can is 100% not coming with me, but refilling on the way out is reasonable. Oh my days, I am really not seeing this stim. I'm going to deploy the mountain rope. Actually, there's absolutely no reason for me to do that. I'm just going to go down and I'm never coming back, so... Bonk. I do not see the stim in any of the places that I normally see the stim in here. It's often in here, sometimes in the other rooms, sometimes in one of these shelving places, but it's just the age of the no stim. This is definitely not the loot table I'm used to. Right. Cargo pants are really good. What did I find here? Oh yeah, I was meant to tear about that windbreaker. This urban park is not really any good. I'll tear those apart downstairs. I want the cloth. Plenty of sources of cloth here. <laughs> Dark Young, the defining rod of drugs, senses no drugs. Probably useful. Probably. Maple syrup is definitely useful. Hello! Magnifying lens. Now that's infinite fire, as if I didn't already have infinite matches. Cooking oil, unnecessary and heavy. Flare shell! Well, maybe I'll find the flare gun somewhere. Cooking skillet is way too heavy to justify carrying around, so I never bother with that. Loads of cooking ingredients here. When I do my ultra loper run, this is going to be a very, uh, very much a point of interest for grabbing all these cooking ingredients. Canned corn is hard as hell to find, though. you got to go to the... Uh, the signal void locations for where the hell's the stim? Oh my days. It is not my day for stims. I got I've got one. I should have three or four by now. You know, if this was on the interloper loot table. Tinder blog I don't really need. I also don't really need a potato. I guess I can just eat these carrots raw. I could do a bit of cooking before I finish up here. Loads of potatoes. You know what? I'm just going to get the cooking going right now. I want to see the animation, so I'm going to do this. Slick and start fire, use the match, and we just lob it in. That amuses me greatly. Well, that was a waste. Come on, little bear. Come on. You know, I can't even be bothered to light the torch before I do this, but I am out of tinder. I need to grab some cattails and their heads on the way out. But yeah, I think Come I will. On, I won't sleep here. I will sleep in the maintenance yard tonight. Okay, Holy that didn't work. cribbins, right? Maybe I shouldn't be so blasé then. Commander Shepard is having some severe difficulties starting a fire with an existing fire. You used quite a few. What are you talking about, Alpha? Last time I changed schedule, it was I never play EU4 ever again stream. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, man. The U4 was great, but it's run its course. Oh, I forgot to use my book again. How does that keep happening? Right, dump a load of this. Sod the skillet. I don't like the skillet. Way too heavy for what it's worth. Uh, I also don't like this interface. In fact, could I not just... Drop, drop, drop. Drop. Tate. 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 And I'm not speaking Japanese here. Can't cook a carrot, though. Can't think of anything else I really have to cook up here. Yeah, I really can't. Make some water, then. Otherwise, we go. Still a bit to check out in here. At least EU4 was more than two runs. I'm not mad about CK3's death DLCs. I'm just disappointed. Yeah, disappointment is it. I really thought there'd be a lot of fun to be had with CK3. It was such an amazing base game, but it's been squandered in my eyes. Probably not in Paradox's eyes, though. I'm sure it's selling amazingly, and their reception seems to be pretty good, but it no longer feels like the kind of games that I want to play are coming out of Paradox. So maybe it was a good thing that I left. Between that and the company getting more and more corporate, anything right now. it's uh, probably a great life choice. Even aside from just really enjoying streaming full time rather than working there. And don't get me wrong, I loved my time at Paradox. It was a great company to work for. But working for yourself is better. <laughs> okay, a few things to do. I do want some cloth and I want some repair jobs. So, curtains. Just use your bare hands. Don't bother using a knife for curtains. It's not even worth the it's not even worth the time to move the selection over for it. Right. I don't need my windbreaker. That's too cold right there. And this old parka. And where you go as well. Oh, my water probably boiled over. Oh, not quite. We just rescued it. Tate, Tate. How heavy are these? They're probably they're relatively light, actually. Give me all of that. Give me even more cloth. We're going to do some repair jobs, and then we're heading down to the maintenance yard. Hmm. This ski jacket, for example, is very good. And now it's even better. This old-fashioned park is very good. An hour to fix, though. Well, then. Let's make sure we have plenty on the fire. Well, i got to hand it to Shepard. You're not failing on these, which is nice. Normally you do. Normally you let me down immensely. So we're wearing some very... Good clothes in decent enough condition. On those cargo trousers repaired up as well. You know, we suffer some good release symptoms. It was a good release, now they don't know what to do. I think I do know what to do, it's just not stuff I want to see. Right, I do actually want a touch more water, so water, 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 water. And there is a bit more repair work to be done here. Okay, so fail, you fail anything so far. And that's no exception. Look at that, four degrees on you. Two from wind. Holy crap, actually the old-fashioned one is better. Looks snazzy as well. Water, water, water. Can and can and not the skillet. There we go, that's more water than you can shake a stick at. And time to eat some tatties. Well, they can re you get a hot potato, but you can't re-warm it up. It just remains cold. Well, after this journey, I bet Commander Shepard is gagging for some potatoes. So here, just chew them all down. Yum, 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 yum. How hungry do you have to be to eat five baked potatoes? Hold on, does it still say I have five of them? I think when you eat with the multi-eating, it, it mixes these things up. Alright. Too dangerous. I'll just drop them like that. 
Grab my torch and let's go back to the maintenance yard. And then we're going to sleep the night away. Get out of here, we've got places to go. I spent much longer in this region than I should have. I also want to check the last possible place for the fire striker. If it's not here, we're going to check and see if it's in the bugged location. And it is not here, so either it doesn't spawn on this loot table or it's in the bugged location. And I will check the bugged location. It will involve using console command, but it won't actually do anything. As in, I'm not gonna... I won't affect myself in any way. All I'll be doing is observing a place. I don't need to justify my actions to you. I'm gonna do it because I want to do it. I do have to justify my actions to me, though. I'm a tough master to please. So here we go. I could have loaded up a... I could have set up a rope there so I could climb down. But instead I just go down. Does mean I have to take a long way back up instead of this, in quotations, short, exhausting cut. But since I'm never coming back, there was no real point to it. Let's give this a wide berth, because the bear could be on the prowl. The thing I miss is Republics. So I don't know why they hold it back, but other than that, I have no clue what I want myself. But Paradox knows what you want. You want more immersive activities that really have no strategic depth to them. And these big, unskippable... I don't even know what they're going for with those. Uh, how would you even describe them? Big spectacles. Taking up the whole screen. Don't even know why. Right, what's in the box? I do not know. This is a mystery for all. That's good. What, that's it? Okay. It might be good, but it's not better than what I have. Or is it? It might actually be better than a ski jacket if I fix it up. It's going to be more than two degrees. Yeah, I actually think you will be better. I'll carry you around and maybe fix you up. Mackinac is a strange thing to find in a, a, uh, a Mento box, though, because a Mackinac is a pretty... I wouldn't say regular find, but it's a normal, rare find. As in, you might open a locker and go, oh my god, a Mackinac, look at me. But there's also lots of lockers, lots of opportunities for that. Uh, I'll run, I don't mind getting tuckered out of it, because we are going to be sleeping this evening, and then we are leaving Broken Railroad for good, and we are not going to the airfield. There's one thing I really like about this challenge, you don't have to go to the bloody forsaken airfield, my least favourite region in the game. Unless you can't... Oh, hello, Barrington. I see... I see I will not be taking that route. Barrington is not afraid of torches, but he is afraid of campfires. Hey, I've got another chance to try leading a wolf over to a bear. Maybe I should not be risking that, but I do want these cattails. Not just for the food, but for the cattail heads, which are great tinder. The biggest thing I've had with Paradox DLC hasn't been the price, but they will advertise a bunch of uh, bunch of nonce for the region, and then has some extremely valuable feature that it adds. Uh, at least when I was there, that was kind of the mantra for DLCs, though. We did want to add stuff for the region, but we also wanted a reason for people that do not care about the region to also get the game. Uh, get the DLC, rather. So that's why, say, Great Britain had the... Well, now the mission trees weren't paid, were they? Uh, another thing was that most people don't even perceive the difference between free and paid features. The kind of people we have in this chat I wouldn't really term as most people. But a lot of times reviews would cite, oh I love this DLC, it added X feature, and then you read it and you think, but, but the feature was part of the free patch. Did I will just give up? I didn't really wander far away, maybe there were invisible line devs that you can't cross. I know the mission trees were contentious, but I really like them. Come on then, all the wolves are on the prowl, so let's get back without getting mauled. And again, running is fine, because I want to tire myself out for a good sleep. You know what, I'm going to take a chance. I'm just going to lob the torch at your face. 
get out of here. That doesn't always work, and it's very amusing when it doesn't work. By the way, somebody said they thought they saw the um, the crowbar in here, or the pry bar. Where did you where did you perceive it? If you want to share that information, maybe you don't. Wait, Jake liked mission trees. Yeah, better like it. I uh, I designed them. God, that feels like years ago. It was years ago. A lot of years ago. Maybe five? Scary. Right, Shepard, it's time for sleepy bye-byes. Let's grab the jerry can. Let's find that bed. Say goodbye to the crappy torch. Decant the jerry can into you. You go and yeah, we're we're over thirty kilos here. But thanks to well fed, that doesn't matter very much. I still need to pass a bit of time. Oh god, why do I still have my improvised knife? Because I wanted to harvest it, surely. No, no, I don't. Just drop that thing. The knife is lighter and better, but I do want to use my whetstone and sharpen these tools. I'm gonna do this for a wee while, and then I'm gonna sleep. To be fair, mission trees are why Arbanar is so great. Does that mean Jake is the spiritual father of Anbanar? Uh, at this stage in life, I'm happy not being any shade of father to anything, so let's let's not use that kind of language. Before you know it, I'm going to have to pay, uh, pay alimony for Arbanar. Is that even improving its condition? I wasn't paying attention to the numbers there. It didn't feel like it was going up, though. 80-something. 90-something. <sighs> okay, it is It is getting there. I'll be carrying these knives all the way to the end game, so let's just spend a lot of time sharpening them, and then we're heading out after we sleep and it's light. Yeah, one thing I kept hearing about regarding missions is like, oh man, the old way of having missions was so much better. And, you know, different people have different points of view, especially on anything creative, but really the old mission the old mission system, in my view, were terrible. I would know I exploited them a lot. I would not have been able to do the original three mountains if it weren't for the old mission system. So random, so open to abuse, and so frustrating. Here's a mission that you have no intention of doing this run. I don't want to do that. Okay, you have to sit for five years and uh, eat crap until I decide to give you another mission. Okay, what's my next mission? Oh, it's that same mission, by the way. <laughs> Here you go. Betray your ally or expand in this region you don't want to go into. You don't want to do that? Well, lucky dip on the next mission. Yeah, I, I did not like that. Mission trees certainly have their own problem, but attack that instead of saying that the old ones... Well, nah, that's not fair. Again, some people might legitimately have preferred the old ones. And good on them for enjoying something. Okay, okay, I'm still going to sleep a bit more, and then we're getting out of here. Oh yeah, yeah, burning down... Ma was that for missions, though? I thought that was to get gold on the cave. Because back then there wasn't even the uh, development system. There was base tax, and base tax decided all. I think uh, I might be making stuff up. Too too much uh, knowledge of EU4 has just evaporated from my head. Right. Uh, look away if this bothers you, but I'm going to cheat. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to enable fly. I am not going to move with this. I am only observing. We're going to go over to the. We're going to go back to the ravine, and we're going to check and see if the Fire Striker spawned out of bounds. So what you can do is just clip in here, and it didn't. Oh, okay. Sometimes the Fire Striker spawns right here inside the supply bin, meaning you can't pick it up. But the Fire Striker isn't there. There we go. And it wasn't in the cave. It wasn't in the wheelbarrow next to the Hunter's Hut. It wasn't anywhere. 
Oh, okay, well I absolutely do not know the loot positions on this challenge. And that is fine. Let's get moving. The best change in EU4 is still the change away from tech groups to institutions, in my opinion. Okay, I, I can't take any credit for that one. When was that done, anyway? Institutions. When were they brought in? Was that where we brought in errors? Uh, I can't remember. The errors artwork is the best artwork in EU4. A lot of time was spent making those. Perhaps misdirected time, but I still think they look good. God, temperature's just flooding away here, but that's okay. We're making progress getting out of here. Our next destination is Hush River Valley. Meaning when we enter Forlorn Muska, we're taking an immediate left. Good thing I have all this coal. I'm going to need to stop and make a fire pretty soon. I might go around the cave up the hill in Forlorn Muskeg just to grab lots of coal. Even if I don't take all the coal with me, because I know there's more coal in the ice caves, I might just plop it down to grab on the way back. Fox tattoo is in, just to say hello, Jake. Oh, well. Things. I got such fond memories of coming down here, double frostbite stimming my way to life. On reflection, there were many better ways I could have handled that. I should have known that the fire loves to change direction. Not fire, the wind. So, floaty stick. Looks like good luck. I'll take it. I can't, I can't even put it down. Oh, there we go. I'll take the floaty stick. Looks like good luck. Uh, I'm going to warm up already. i got a million matches, so there's no good reason not to. Come on, little okay, fire. Okay, I don't like that at all. I think... Come on, little fire. That's the stuff. Uh, do I want to waste my coal here? Yeah, I'm bound to find a lot of coal where I'm going, so let's just put that on. One thing I'm really missing is a sleeping bag. I really thought I would have found a sleeping bag in the Hunter's Lodge. I normally find one there, but... This run is not about norms, it seems. Let's pick ourselves up some more tea ingredients. Number one run. And more tea ingredients. Hell, I might get some cooking level at this rate. And I'm going to drink most of this racial tea, and then carry that as my good tea going forward. Yoink, yoink, yoink. Give me a torch. Oh, that's a good torch. Give me more torch then. Yeah. Sounds like what Remy is describing there is... Or is it Remy? King Skink? I don't know. There's some argument about mission trees. Shouldn't have brought them up, I guess. Um, sounds like that fear of missing out that I was very recently had to explain to me. These are some really good torches. I don't want to waste them. There we go. Here's a crap torch. Let's go. And I guess there's no real problem with running. Actually, there is. I don't have an opportunity to sleep where I'm going. Hmm. No, I think there's a sleeping spot in the little valley place in Mountain Town where I have to do the double climb. And even if there's not, I can always stim to do that climb. Although I found one out of four stims. God knows where they're all hiding. So I don't like to argue subjective points. I like thing. I don't like thing. Let's argue about it. Why? What is there to gain? 
Me arguing something won't make me like it more, them like it less. You know, maybe all the nice stuff is down in the places that I've avoided here, but... Like I said, you, if you want to make good time here, just beeline for the objectives. There's loads of stuff to find along the way. Even on Interloper, loot is pretty stacked. The caveat there is as long as you keep moving. Big trap to fall into in playing this game is thinking, Oh, well, I've got, an, I've got a nice amount of stuff here. I'm just going to hunker down here for a few days. I'll repair my clothes and I'll read these books and I'll make plenty of water. But then you've been there for three days and what looked like loads of food is now not a lot of food. And you've already looted all the nearby place. So it's a long and perilous journey that you have to make to go to the next place with loot. And oh, well, now you don't have the calories to do it. Now keep moving. Leaving stuff behind is no big deal. You don't need to grab everything out. If you've already got a box of tools, you don't need to get a second one. There's nothing forcing you to take all those heavy tins of pinnacle peaches with you. If you're in there for the long haul, you will be back. Alright, wow, we, we got to the end of there and we barely took any warmth loss. Warming up bonus is going away though, so I'm going to chug the other part of my racial tea. Hey Jake, can you explore around? Oh yeah, yeah, you can explore all you want. You have got this entire world to explore and there is nothing stopping you going anywhere and spending any amount of time wherever you want. The objective that you have to do here is go to these five graves and you can do that in your own time. But I do plan on getting this challenge done today in one shot. We're not going to die. We are not going to have to restart. We're just going to win. Although it's going to be easier if I don't get mauled by bears, wolves, and trampled by a moose. A railroading to me just means going in something that you cannot diverge from. If you can diverge, even if even if you're punished for it, I don't see it as railroading. I take it from the same way I would use, say, Rail Shooter. Right, House of the Dead is not the same as playing... I don't, I don't play enough, enough first-person shooters to take another uh, example, do I? Um, maybe that first-person Resident Evil game, then. Which one is that? Is it Dead Aim? I really wanted that game as a kid, and then when I played it as an adult, it was terrible. Ah. Not not uh, House of the Dead, though. I love House of the Dead. When I was in Japan, I found a lineup of all the House of the Dead games, and oh, it was amazing. I just went. I went one to the other, to the other, to the other, and I dual wielded on House of the Dead 1 and 2. Because that's what a pro gamer like me is going to do. Why give me two guns if you don't expect me to use both guns? Yeah, I guess the better thing is railroading is driving a uh, is driving a train down a railway track. Not railroading would be being in a car or a boat or a bus or a hand glider. Is it hand glider or hang glider? People think I mix up my words for comedic effect, but I often just don't know. Or I just prefer one way of saying it or the other, but that's one I just don't know, despite all the times of being me playing pilot wings. Hang, I think. Ah, you see, you say I think, that means you don't know. I don't know. God, I got such fond memories of coming up here. Ah, there we go. And he's found his confidence, he knows. Damn it, Pandy sounds so much like Randy. Makes me want to play Rimworld. But there's no Rimworld until Saturday. 
Uh, I hope it doesn't consume DDR again. I do want to play DDR. Seldom is DDR ever removed because I don't want to play it that day. Sometimes, though. Sometimes you wake up and you just think, the last thing I want to do is play this game. And I do not feel beholden to my schedule. If it's if it said long dark today and I just woke up going, you know what, I am sick of the long dark. The last thing I want to do is listen to one more bloody Canadian ankle fracture. And I would have put it down and just played more room world today. But no, I did want to play the long dark. Although this, as I said earlier, will likely be my last session of Long Dark for quite some time. Probably until the DLC finishes and has its bug fixes, because I don't want to keep laying into the development of Long Dark, but my god, the handling of this DLC has been terrible. So many bugs, so many missed releases. The features are, I largely think, quite useless. I do not feel beholden to my schedule. Truer words have not been spoken here in a long time. You shouldn't, right? I stream because I love streaming. The fact that I'm able to do it as my full-time job is a wonderful privilege and stroke of luck. But one way to ruin it is just to take my love out of it. And a big way to take my love out of it would start... Uh, would be to stream things even if I didn't want to stream them. Did I come too far up? I've been up here often enough to remember the way. But I think it's up and around here. It's kind of like the long dark. Nothing ruins the serenity quite like sharing it with other people. So that's why I don't play story mode. Ah, this is a passageway. For example, I could look back on my releases. Wow, I've never seen cattails out like that for tea as well. Yeah, I could look back at the things I've put out and go, on, okay, these things get the most views and therefore make the most money. I'm going to do nothing but that till I squeeze it dry. Yeah, I, I would squeeze my own soul dry faster than anything else. What that be again? It would probably be Hearts of Iron 4, Frostpunk, and I swear there was something else that did... Oh yes, yeah, of course, State of Decay 2. Yep, the channel would be nothing but those three games on rotation forever. Mmm. You know, Dark Side for State of Decay 2 is being redeveloped. I will not be able to resist that when it comes out, so we're going to be having another run whether you want it or not. Uh, wait, I don't want to go in this cave. I keep thinking this cave is a cave to Milton. It is not. Again, I am not using any maps for this. I am just using my experience. And sometimes my experience takes me in the wrong direction. Before I head up there, I'm going to head down here. That doesn't sound horrible, yeah. Just wait until it's been nothing but that for months. I don't think I've ever had any game that has just completely taken over the schedule. There's always been a bit of wiggle room for it. Hello, bedroll! Nobody needs this anymore. Good condition bedroll as well. That's good. That's a nice enabler. It enables me to sleep anywhere. I already have antibiotics, so I won't take them. It's very rare that you need antibiotics to begin with. Wool gloves are very rare. Definitely take that, definitely toss these. Such good loot on this. I believe this is considered a maximum difficulty challenge run. A snare? Are you kidding me? Just snares lying around? What is this, story mode? Yeah, I can't think of anything that has purely dominant. Even if I've been so deep in a game, and I've been deep in games. I've been deep in Dominions, been deep in EU. Been deep in State of Decay. There's always wiggle room. There's always a bit of Caesar 3 nudging in there. Weekly one shot to the two hours of hell. I love variety streaming. And despite what you might think, this has always been a variety channel. <sighs> The first game I ever streamed was... Well, some people in chat know the answer to that. But it certainly wasn't a strategy game. No, it was not Minesweeper Marvin. It was a game for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, a ga the game, actually, was on... 
the European speedrun marathon that's running right now, ESA Marathon. I would host it, but hosting has been killed by Twitch. Thank you, Twitch. It was that hostage rescue game, says Pandy. Yes, it was. Rescue Embassy Mission. I believe it was called Hostages in the US. I could be dead wrong on that, but I might not be. Okay, so this is the Milton Basin. I have to climb that mountain that you see over there to get up to the mountain town. And that's a lot of rope climbing, so we definitely need to sleep before that. We're going to pluck a few things from the basin first. There are a couple of points of interest to check out. I'm not going to check out all of them. There's like the climbing on top of that tooth of rock is good. There's plenty of cattails and there's even stuff to hunt down here. I think you could live in Milton Basin forever if you wanted to, but you'd almost certainly need to bring some supplies with you. Unless you just love eating raw meat. No, I don't actually think you'd survive off the raw meat. Hmm... Well, food for thought. I don't mind the wolf seeing me, it's no big threat. Not when I have a fire, and not when the weather is this good. It's also worth remembering I have the mag lens. I can start a fire whenever I want, provided the conditions are clear. Get out of here, Fido. Nyeh. Never in my life have I thrown a stone at an animal. Hopefully I never have to. I used to throw stones at my granny's little display duck thing, but that's because it made a really nice tonk noise when you hit it. She didn't seem to like it much, but I mean, pfft. that is not my problem. I'm a pretty late arrival, all things considered. Real veterans watch the Aztec hype sweeper. No, there, there's a quote from you, TBW, that I actually keep in my Meaningful Screenshots folder. Let's see if I can dig it out. Oh, the folder's getting kind of big. Where is it, though? Ah, here we go. It's called Powerful.png. Here we go. This was during Railway Empire. Sucks to be them. I've been here before those scrubs, and I'll be here after they leave. I forget the exact context of that, but it was a very touching thing to read. And amusing, so I keep it around. It's where TBW shrivels up in cringe, I know I would. <laughs> it's true, you know, yeah, they're probably all gone. And that's fine, people come and go in streams. Sometimes I get messages saying, like, I don't like your stream, and I'm leaving, and other people are gonna leave, and... You know, stuff, stuff just made to hurt you, but you know, I really don't care. People come and people go. It's the nature of doing a stream. That's the nature of on-demand service. But I think people do it because it's, I don't know, going to make me feel threatened in a way. I don't feel threatened. I love what I do. The only reasonable bit of threat I could get is if Twitch turned around and said, yeah, we're deplatforming you now because, I don't know, you hold views that are not in line with our views, which wouldn't be out of play. There's a lot of things I say about erotic games that are definitely contrary to Twitch's views. But I hold my views. We've streamed a fair number of erotic games on this channel, which may be definitely skirting the rules a bit. I believe we did our full run of Sengoku Rats on Twitch. Yeah, that, was, that was maybe a little too dicey, but we did it anyway. Why do we have a plus five kilograms? You mean, oh right, that plus five kilograms that you see in the bottom right there is because we are well fed. We've staved off starvation for three consecutive days. We are going for well fed. There is no point in this run where it's justified to go for starvation in my view. There is salvageable food everywhere and even if not there are corpses everywhere and it was easy to get blades to cut off their meat. Even if there wasn't and you were dead hungry you could just rip it off with your bare hand but even if all of that wasn't the case there's a million cattails. We went through Forlorn Muskeg, which is the home of the cattail. We're here in Milton Basin, cattails. We're over in Broken Railroad, tons of cattails around the lake there. Milton, cattails, down in the basin and up in the, uh, up in the town. There's a river with cattails. Cattails are in almost every freshwater place. In fact, every single region in the map has cattails, even the sub-regions. Cattails are everywhere, and they're so good. Loads of food. Never was a fan of this kind of game, and never will be, but I have a secret ancient Shaolin technique called Don't Watch Streams You Don't Like. 
That's a difficult technique, TDW. A lot of people don't have that. I, I think there's just an inherent human desire to want to complain about something and feel ill done to. I would know I'm British. We we live to complain. Why why do you think we live in Britain? We love the misery. We love to feel it, we love to inflict it on others. It's just part of being British. I'm sure that's not unique to being British, but it's certainly a very pronounced trait. I will probably climb up to Milton at night time. I don't like travelling at night because it tends to be cold, but I don't want to waste I don't want to waste any longer in the basin than I have to. <laughs> Watching Jake butcher games that I like, like strategy games is torture. Generally if I choose to play a strategy game, it's because I know and like that strategy game. And when I get into a game, I tend to get pretty good at it. Don't want to toot my own horn, but I am pretty good at games. But sometimes people force me to play a game that I don't know or like, and especially if it's a strategy game, that gets painful. Okay, I thought there was a sleeping thing here. There isn't. So thank God we found this bedroll, otherwise I would have to turn back. This would be a very dangerous place to be otherwise. Uh, a blizzard could hit and cause this to be a very unpleasant place to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up my fire towards the front of the cave where it's colder. That might sound like madness, but the reason I do that is because the fire will last longer due to the colder ambient temperatures. That is a real mechanic in the game. The ambient temperature around... Not the fire strictly, it's around Shepherd, but... Come on, little fire. For all intents and purposes, it might as well be around the fire when you're sleeping next to it. Uh, up to minus 30 degrees, the fire will burn for, I think, twice as long. Very efficient. Did you play Heroes Come 3? On, Heroes of Might and Magic? Yeah, I did. And it was a really impressive that game. Didn't work. It's a difficult game to like if you didn't play it back then, but I can appreciate its, well, its goodness. But there's a lot of things I don't like. X-based, turn-based. By the way, we're playing Dominions tomorrow and I love Dominions. It's okay, battles not square-based. Anyway, Heroes is an impressive game, but it's not really for me. Oh yeah. I still don't like turn-based nature, and it is old jank. If you try to deny that it's old jank, then you are deluding yourself. Oh, I put way too much uh, fuel on that fire, but oh well. Uh, oh, right, that'll be why the wolf caught me from a distance. I had this steak on me. Finish off my maple syrup. Drink up and sleep up. Funny that you mentioned Twitch kicking you out, Jake. Sitting here, I just registered ninjin.tv. We could extend an offer. Oh my. Oh my, oh my. Ninjin.tv, what a place to stream. Liking Heroes is a bigger Slavic giveaway than Adidas clothing. Well, I am in Hungary now, aren't I? Oh, that might be a dangerous thing to say. The Hungarians seem um, a sensitive lot to being mis-ethnicized, if I can put it that way. Well, maybe if I go and reclaim Transylvania for them, all transgressions will be uh, forgiven. Uh, I'm only taking good torches here. There's no good reason for me to take crummy torches. One more will do. Uh, what I will actually do is warm up my coffee. There will be coffee up in Milton. There's always coffee up in Milton. I get there. There is no coffee up in Milton. I think I'll drink the coffee first and I'll have the herbal tea if... That is insufficient. I won't drink too much water, because this will satiate me in a bit. I like two cattails. Call them Turks. Balkaners always appreciate that. It's always the Turks. No one's business but the Turks. Alright, take my to- Oh, that is a good- too good a torch, frankly. Put that away. Give me a crap torch. There we go. Now I don't feel so bad about wasting it. Let's go! We're going up to Milton. Now, Mountain Town, I think, is a trap for new players. Mountain Town is amazing. There are a million places to take shelter. There is a fat lot of loot. You can survive there for ages, but that's exactly the problem. 
Milton teaches you to hunker down, which is the opposite of a good thing to learn. And the problem with leaving Milton is that the path out of Milton is really fraught with dangers. You've, you've got to do rope climbing, which can really catch you unaware as a new player because it exhausts you more than you expect. Plenty of hostile wildlife. If you take this route, you're going to Forlorn Muskeg, which is such an anti... It's anti-experienced players. It's a horrible place to be. Um, if you take the other route, you go to Hush River Valley, which is a nightmare for new players because there is nowhere to take shelter there. There might be a lot of supplies, but you don't know how to use them when you're fresh to the game. And the other route is a rather lengthy way, admittedly, to Mystery Lake, which is good. But I don't think most players are going to be taking that route out of uh, Milton. I think Milton's a bad place to start. I encourage new players to start in Mystery Lake. You have to move around Mystery Lake to get around to stuff, so it teaches you to survive when you're out there. And it's kind of gentle. The weather is good, the temperature is good. Uh, it's pretty spaced out with loads of natural resources for you to get. Yeah. If you're going to start the game, start in Mystery Lake. And also, if you leave Mystery Lake, you generally go towards nicer places. Although I've got a forlorn, that's a bad idea, but you've got... Uh, you got a route going to Broken Railroad, which is rather nice. And unlike Milton, if you do hunker down in, in Mystery Lake Crawl, you've actually got a, a large, nice area to be looting. Once you've looted uh, Milton. Hey, there's another thing. Looting Milton takes a fair bit of time because you're going inside all these places and grabbing everything that's not nailed down. Which I think makes it even worse when you lose, because you're like, Oh, I had all this stuff! But, you know, a wolf got me and I died. It's like, yeah, well, just sitting around in a town hasn't really taught you to deal with that. So, yeah, I think Milton is a trap. But I'm speaking with a lot of experience here, and that gives me sometimes a bit of cataracts when it comes to seeing the point. So maybe I'm just talking out of my rear end. Oh, I, I will call Hungarians whatever they want to be called if they can explain their uh, their medical system to me. How do I register for GP? <laughs> I just don't understand. Uh, okay, in we go go. There's another rope climb to be done, but thanks to that coffee, we're still pretty alert. And wood, 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 I'm almost heavy. You cannot rope climb when you're heavy, so don't even try. Daisy, I guess. Onwards to Milton. I might check out the farmhouse along the way. I can't think of a good reason not to. Medical system, non... I, I, I think people get the idea that people in Hungary are living in bleeding mud huts over here. Far from it. Oh, wait. Didn't I want to drink my herbal tea? Yeah, let's do it. This time I'll check if it gave me improved rest. It did. You'll recover more condition per hour of rest. That's a blatant lie. Zero is not more than zero. Come on, up we go. Ah, uh, you just need to kick up enough of a fuss about it, Frederick. Me, I don't really care. I try to say racial slurs five times a day just to keep myself well grounded. Right. I didn't do the full thing in one go, so I want to let my stamina recharge when I'm here. I've been in grim situations where you have to put down a bedroll here in a storm and just hope for the best because I need more sleep to climb up. Never making that mistake again. That was during Dark Walker times. Grim times. Hey, the houses they built here in Hungary are a mile ahead of whatever we, whatever trash we're building in, uh, in the UK. I just, I just can't get over how nice it is to live in a house where I don't feel the draft coming in through the walls. Yeah, not the windows, not the holes in the wall, just the walls themselves. Oh, we build such awful buildings in the UK. And we, we delude ourselves into thinking that we live in this great country. We don't. There's nothing great about Great Britain. Maybe once upon a time it was a relatively good place, but the times they are change. I've seen climbers sleeping in tiny tents hanging off the rocks, yeah. 
I think I'd enjoy that because I really like heights. But I also toss and turn in my sleep, so I would probably be... I'd probably have to tie myself up before I go to sleep. And even then, I'm not sure it would do it. As a kid, I used to always uh, like wake up on the floor. Never did sleepwalk, though. I always figured that was pretty cool, but I could never manage to sleepwalk. I can talk in my sleep, though. Oh, that's no big deal. My cousin and I used to play a game where we'd try to talk to each other in our sleep. Right. I'm still on the hunt for another pry bar. I... I guess I do actually regret now turning my pry bar into a hatchet because I ended up ditching that hatchet in favor of a better hatchet. But I could never I could never have seen that coming. Trust me, it's not fun to sleep by it sounds fun. You know, you sleep one place, you wake up in another place, it's like an adventure. It is an adventure. Maybe you don't need the key to get in on this mode, I should check. Despite our many ways of opening this door, we do need to use the key. The key, I think, is sometimes an attractor, though. You ditched that hatchet before you even used it. That I did. Hmm. Where's the key? There's a rope. I can't imagine needing a rope. Not around here, at least. Warming up bonus is keeping us alive, and it's otherwise... Uh, Wow, it's not cold at all. Of course, we're wearing good clothes. That's doing a big part for Pry bar! Reunited at last. It's in grim condition at 62%, but it'll do for now. Frozen corpse. Ah, there's the key. I don't think you ever spawn there in Interloper. I'm pretty sure you spawn there on story mode. But this is definitely not using story mode's loot. Story mode is really condescending with the amount of uh, everything that it gives you. You know what? I, I don't. I don't think I want carrots. Uh, let's try this. I'm gonna eat all the carrots. Then I'm gonna drop all the carrots. There we go. And then I think you end up with yeah zero calorie carrots. I don't actually think that's a base game bug. I think that's um, I think that's a mod conflict. That doesn't really matter. We don't need carrots where we're going. My brother speaks French in his sleep. He hasn't used French since high school. He's a secret French French spy adopted into the family. That uh, reminds me when playing uh, RimWorld earlier. Someone in chat hypothesized that the six-year-old Julio was a spy for the cannibals just trying to find out where the, the good loot and the good meat is. And that ended up being so prophetic. Even more so because the latest batch of, um, of beggars is actually a cannibal group. I missed that when playing, but when I rewatch the VOD, I often rewatch my my VODs just to see that's if I missed so something handy. that's otherwise obvious. Uh, I I did see, indeed, they are cannibals. They're also spawning really frequently. I've never had beggars spawn so often, and getting beggar spawns during existing beggar spawns. Uh, maybe I need to look into the files and see if there's something that's stopping that. There should be some kind of cooldown on those, at least. Man, this pack is getting kind of heavy. Especially since I'm supposedly charitable, so now uh, taking a penalty every time I turn down charity is hurting. Anyway, I'm not here for RimWorld. I'm here for Long Dark. Focus, Jake. It, it's difficult to be invested in survival when the run is uh, delivering this many goods to me. Whoa, spoilers! Some of us hadn't caught up. What do you mean you didn't spend 10 hours through the night catching up on the VOD? Unthinkable. I was AFK, but earlier we were talking about buggy food. I found a bug that involves cooking meat. Uh, upgraded to attack. That, uh, that bug has been fixed in the current version of the game, or rather they claim it has been fixed. I like the ingredients, but I still think cooking as a mechanic is misguided for this game. Hello, peanut butter. This has been here a while. 
pretty calorific, but not calorifically dense. I'll actually take that so I can refuel a bit. Summit soda, maple syrup. I mean, just look at how much stuff this is. Uh, I'm not. I'm not taking a moldy small fish. That's a recipe for disaster. I'm not going to sleep here, I don't think. Uh, maybe I will. It'll take me to daytime. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to sleep here, actually. I'm going to feel... Ooh, cooking pot. Normally, I'd consider taking you, but I'm just going to take my two cans. The cans are lighter for traveling, even though that's a lot more useful. It's also a lot more heavy. A can is 150 grams. A cooking pot is one kilogram. A skillet is also one kilogram, but much less useful than a cooking pot. Okay, out goes the fire, chug goes the water, and Shepherd is sleeping. Not for ten hours though, you don't even need ten hours, but that's fine. Can't use moldy fish as a weapon, zero out of ten game. Aha! In Dominions, you can use a moldy fish as a weapon, ten out of ten game. It's pretty difficult to make work in any reasonable way, because I think I think the only people who can wield fish also have insanity, and insanity cannot be cured, so that's pretty bad, but it's there. If you really wanted to thug someone to attack with moldy fish, the option is there in Dominions. This weather is awful, isn't it? Let's go anyway. Oh, uh, as the dead sleep is a specific challenge, Mr. Gorgon. Gong Gong. Gon. Mr. Gong Gong. Where's he gone? Uh, yeah, it's a specific challenge that we're doing. Well, it was a mistake to even come out this far. Uh, oh well. I'm already getting cold as sin. Another silent storm, though. <laughs> silent storm. Uh, well, you know what? I found this lamp oil. Let's put it to use. Warmth. Let's put on one bit of coal and a few sticks for warmth. Decant the rest of that fuel into you. Oh, you're already full. Well, never mind then. And since we're going a ways, let's make sure that we have some delicious tea for us. I'm warming up here ever so slightly, but I'll warm up a bit more in this bedroll, actually, if I just pass a bit of time in it. There we go. I'm gonna drink a bunch of that tea. I'm gonna take this other tea with me. I'm gonna take a torch. And the torch it blows out before I even leave the place. Traveling in blizzards is not recommended. You need to be pretty confident in where you're going. Because otherwise getting lost and and just dying to being lost is... It's it's really easily done. I have done it. I've not died from it, but I've certainly been in a bad position from it. But there's a fence that you can follow to find your way out of here. I've got it right here, so I know vaguely where I'm going. One of those lesser known silent blizzards. I wish they'd fix that bug. In fact, I wish they'd just take some time and fix all the bleeding bugs in the game. There are plenty of annoying, very reported bugs, but I think they feel a bit too beholden to their DLC. Gotta hate early access. <laughs> yeah, they're too busy introducing new bugs to fix the old ones. I think they claimed that the gender voice thing had been fixed, but I also saw it again, I think on Baron's stream. So it can't be that fixed. Where am I going again? I think I'm going to Hushed River Valley. There are some really good loot points here in Milton, but there's not really any loot that I need now, except maybe the Flare Gun. The Flare Gun would be great, that's a nice get out of jail free card. But if there's places where I'm pretty confident there's amazing loot, I will stop and grab it. This Credit Union being one of them. Now, tempting as it may be to just rob the bank, we will not do that. We will instead take their coffee. This. I think uh, in some offices they would rather the office was robbed than just losing their coffee. Another knife, but I already have a very well-conditioned knife. Honestly, what am I even searching for? There's, there's nothing that could conceivably be useful to me here. Except for that coffee. 
I have plenty of water, so I don't need to take more delicious toilet water. It's a very unsatisfying way to go. Mainly because I 100% in control of not losing the way. I find it's a very satisfying way to go. It's very humbling. So, oh, I thought I could handle the storm. I can't. Now I'm just watching myself die, thinking about the mistakes that I've made. Hope nobody needs this anymore. Ooh, work boots. Better than trail boots. Bye bye, trail boots. <laughs> Commander Shepard has been without socks for quite a while. Salty crackers are always worth it because they're really good. Calorifically dense food. Kind of makes me reflect on whenever I eat a box of crackers. There's no way I'm doing safes again. I ate safes. Oh, but what if they have mollocks? We could go looting for cash if we want. Oh, you know what? Let's do that. Next fire we start, let's burn some Canadian dollars. I don't think I've ever handed, uh, handled a Canadian dollar in my life. But I do someday actually want to go to Canada. It's a big place, but maybe I can just take a month and travel around Canada and just see what it's like. Uh, I'm going to go over to Greymother's house as well, which is just opposite the credit union. The idea of a town this small having its own wheat bank like that is unthinkable to me. Then again, where I grew up, it was about a five mile journey to the nearest other house, so... Okay, that's not fair. There was a farm down the road, but the nearest village was five miles away. So, uh... I had to get pretty comfortable with cycling in all kinds of inclement weather. And uh, no hyperbole, it was uphill both ways. I just eat that carrot. Now you see it, now you don't. Did that stay in my inventory, though? No, it did leave. Okay, good. Pork and beans is pretty good on the calories. This will come in handy. Flour is pretty good as well, but you can't eat it raw. Just looting poor Grey Mother's house. This is one of the first main points you come across in the story mode. And there's a very unreliable narrator by way of the uh, titular old mother, Grey Mother. I don't like her, which is fair because she didn't seem to like me either. Plenty of places to search inside, but I'm not really interested in doing that. I am interested in so many cooking pots here cooking pots and skillets. If you want to do what I do, which is bringing all the cooking pots over to <clears throat> Desolation, uh, not Desolation, but Bleak Inlet's destroyed lighthouse, then this is a definite place you want to stop at. I'm really just grabbing loose items unless I'm fairly confident that there's good stuff to be had. Ooh, ooh, but I do want socks. Maybe I can grab the old woman's socks. Also, a little trick that I learned from watching Blade's CJ's stream. It's pretty much the only other uh, only other long dark player that I watch, but you can get up here and see what's behind. This stuff will come in handy. Now that's interesting, isn't it? I can make a bow out of this. But I would also need some cured guts. I'm gonna take this in case I do find some cured guts. I will not cure guts, but if I find I think Two, I could make a bow. Where's bow? I think it's improvised bow, right? Where's the bow? Survival bow, that's it. Yeah, two cured guts. You can find cured guts inside um, toolboxes, so I will actually check for them. If I find them, I swear I'll make the bow. Uh, and then I'll realize that I have arrowheads, but it's my problem. What's the premise of this game as far as the story goes? Why are there dead people in banks? Uh, the world's getting colder and we're in a really remote location that suffered greatly from a series of bad things. Economic downturn, earthquakes, there's this whole mainland versus islander mentality where the mainland is exploiting the natural resources here whilst keeping the people living here at the mercy of their bailouts. So there's isolationism, and basically just the big storm hits, the people largely die. And we are here because we flew our plane here to help out our friend. Our friend wanted to fly over here to... Our friend's a doctor, wanted to give some medical help to people. But there's a, a strange phenomenon where the sky lights up with an aurora borealis, uh, which nuked all of the electrical equipment, that's why our plane crashed. 
and has aided the downfall of this whole place. The story is uh, kind of convoluted and not very good, but your mileage is certainly going to vary. Right, have we warmed up enough in here, or should I take a nap? I'm going to take a nap. Can't be bothered to go upstairs, so... Donk and donk. Friend and ex-wife. Well, we're still wearing the rings, aren't we? So... Are we, is it really ex-wife? Can you ever really detach from someone you marry? You take that vow, you say until, until death do us part. So unless one of you has died, no, you are still man and wife. <laughs> Baron disagrees. What was it you said? Um, oh, what was it? Like eccentric and unpredictable? The words stuck with me, but evidently I don't remember them. Neurotic and unpredictable? They didn't have great things to say about a woman. Chaotic and unpredictable sounds about right. Why am I so heavy? What in the world did I pick up? Oh well, I'll make a, I'll make a stop off over at the upcoming uh, church and divvy out my items there. Never would have thought his Jake is a staunch Calvinist. Oh, come on, I don't have, uh, I don't have principles. I just do whatever I think will rile people up because I get my kicks out of making people upset. Why do you think I stream? All right, I'm not warm in here, but at least I'm not very cold. Now let's check what's weighing me down so much. All these tatties aren't helping. It's peanut butter. Uh, yeah, I got plenty of heavy, um, heavy burnables. Never did find those socks though. Yeah, crikey, I am. I'm way overweight. Right. Well, here you go, glove box. I'm gonna stuff you full of cattails. And 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 take that because that's just too small to even be worth its time, uh, worth its weight. And take that crappy torch as well. And now I'm still overweight. You know what? I don't. I don't need potatoes. I got plenty of food as it is. And then, whilst we wait, I'm going to chew into some of this peanut butter. Not all of it, though. I don't think you can ever get sick from peanut butter. I have never known peanut butter to go bad in my life, though. I've had peanut butter living in my cupboard for years, and sure, it gets really hard. You gotta chisel the stuff out, but then you just heat it up, and it's still good. I do like peanut butter. I wouldn't say I love peanut butter. I haven't had peanut butter for over a year, and I'm not champing at the bit for it. And then we bring it up, I could really go for some. Proper peanut butter, though. The only ingredients should be peanuts and salt. No oils. Certainly no sugar. If you've got that in your peanut butter, you're being drugged. Just make cookies with it. I haven't had peanut butter cookies before. Should give it a go. Peanut butter is kind of like cinnamon, one of those very American things to use in all foods. But if there's one thing Americans know, it's food. Right, oh, there's already a bed here. My bedroll's probably warmer, but it's still an option. There's books, there's a granola bar. In story mode, there's a cache of goodies around the back. I miss my socks so much. Mm, I want to warm up rather swiftly, so we're just going to light her up. Really? Is that my best torch? Well, all of my torches are 49%. I've got only good torches. Yeah, there we go. I agree with Jake. Thank God the sentence for murder is so short Come in on, Sweden. Over. Not just short, but you'd be in a Swedish prison. I'm under the impression that those are luxurious places to live. Perfect. I wouldn't know. I've never been inside a prison in my life. Kind of keen to keep it that way. Although I'm sure it'd be a bit of an adventure. Right, let's have that going. Let's take a one hour nap. The weather just took a turn for the worse, but I'm sure we could survive. Uh, there are more books here. Burn another book. Burn this book and this book and... Is that it? Oh well. Keep one book, which I will keep forgetting to use as my starter. 
Take a bit of reclaimed wood. And what do I want? Do I want the coffee? I'd actually like to prepare some coffee, and I might drink some, because it's a bit of a trek to where I'm going. And even though the weather is fierce, I still want to do it. Cook you. Cook you. And you know what? This might seem weird, but let's cook you as well. You don't have to cook on these slots. You can cook around here if it's a tinned or a thing in a cup. It's just meat. Meat and fish and whatnot. you got to cook on the campfire's cooking slots. Yes, it's very arbitrary, but it's an abstraction. The games are full of abstractions. I don't think it's fair to complain about abstraction as a whole. You can complain about it, uh, certain ones in a game, but it would be more realistic to do this. I always find it's a very poor argument for wanting something in a game. Because there's always going to be abstraction. There's a reason we don't manage Commander Shepard's bladder here. Because it probably wouldn't be a very engaging gameplay mechanic. And until a game comes out with spectacular bladder management mechanics that everybody jumps on to copy, that's probably going to remain the feeling. And one game did come and do it relatively well, and that was Oxygen Not Included. I did not like that game, but I did like its presentation. And that game did have bladder management. Yeah, was it specifically bladder, or was it just doo-doo? I don't know, but you had toilets going. Some people would probably like the black, yeah. Uh, I was in a meeting once with some of the developers, or some, I don't know, post-notch, but... I, I don't actually know who's creatively in control of Minecraft. Anyway, one of those people was in a meeting that I was in, and they were talking about how if we did everything the community wanted, Minecraft would just be toilets and guns. And that stuck with me. And it's good to listen to the community, but I think it's I think it's even more important than that to have a strong vision. Uh, it's not just because I don't like listening to people. Duke and you can forever have that one. I'm talking about mechanics, not set pieces. I got no real time for set pieces. It's still really heavy though. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess it's all the burnables that I've got. And I shouldn't be shouldn't be weighing myself down so in fact I will I will take my own advice here. I'm gonna drop this and I'm gonna drop half my sticks. There we go. Now I'm no longer laden with goods. I'll take it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Pretty sure I could use that hoodie because I tore apart one of my tops. There we go. Way back when. It's a shame Pleasant Valley is going to be the second last place we go to, because Pleasant Valley is really good for getting clothes, thanks to the downed plane. In story mode, you go there and you rescue survivors. If that's what you want to do in this game, then story mode might be for you, but I really don't like it. There's this fat, priestly individual who just sits snug and warm in the Pleasant Valley community house. While sending you out to go and get supplies for people and save their lives and stuff. And the characters are so eager to help people. Oh, yeah, there's this guy I just met. Well, don't worry, I'm going to go risk my life to get these people food and warmth and medicine. And I'm going to pick them up and drag them back here because I'm just such a goddamn nice person. Uh, and that's, uh, that's female Commander Shepard. Male Commander Shepard does pretty much the same thing, but for a group of convicts who lock him up in prison. Yeah, story mode just... I, I bounced off of that so hard. I might not be going the right way here. It's possible. I've been up here a few times, but... Normally I'm either in Hush River Valley or in... I really think I've missed my path. There's a cave, but is it over here or is it over there? Oh well, I'm going to check this out first before I double back. Unless I don't want to double back. I'm going to drop the aggro of the dog by jumping in here. Well, nothing happening. The dog is probably howling as if to say, how could I have let it get away? That was my chance at a meal. Yeah, ignoring the sticks does feel wrong, Marvin, but there, there are so many resources, I truly, truly do not need those. Actually, 
Yeah, I always forget if it's over here or over there. But if it isn't here, I just need to turn around. But if I turn around and it's not there, I feel like an even bigger fool. This feels promising. This looks right. Now it doesn't look right. Now I'm definitely in the wrong place. Okay, I went too far. The bear is over there. Alright, well, egg on my face, but then I can just turn on auto walk and grab a drink. Oh my god. I already drank loads of water before, but living in a hot country, it's just a non stop flow. There are no bunnies in this challenge, and also no deer. Yeah, you know what? I actually didn't notice. I was thinking, crikey, I haven't seen a lot of deers or bunnies, but you're right, they're not there. It's just wolves, moose, and bear. Which really isn't much of a handicap when there's good clothes to be found. You know what, Wolfie, could you just sod off a bit? I don't want to throw my last stone, I won't be able to chase him. He's probably gonna, he's probably gonna notice me. Well, it's not really too much of a problem. Ooh, nice, I sneaked past him. I really thought he would have charged me there. There's the cave over in that direction. How did I not... How did I not see that? Can I come around this way? We're doing really good on the health. Most of that health loss was from tiredness and dehydration when we were foraging tools that we didn't need. You start with that, Dark Young. Trapping those pigskin bastards in the traps felt really good in Rimworld. No, no, mind off of Rimworld. We're not playing Rimworld. Not today. Rimworld will be back on Saturday. Okay, don't need to waste one of my not very precious matches. We've got Lantern. And we're heading towards Hushed River Valley, which we can see somewhere. There's Hush River Valley. We're going to be entering from... Uh, I forget. I think down here. So where's that? The Many Falls Vista. I'm sure we can figure that. Also, I'm lacking the stones, so let's grab that. If there's coal in here, all the better. Other than the sh uh, the uh, prepper's cabin, there are no man-made structures in Hushed River Valley. But it does have plenty of natural places to take shelter, so make good use of those if you end up here. It's an amazing place, though. Absolutely rich with resources, including man-made tools, which makes your... I'm not sure I can carry much more. It makes Hushed River Valley, in my opinion, the best place for an experienced survivor to spawn. Even if you're playing No Goa, even if you're playing um, Midnight Spawn in a Blizzard, it's amazing. There are guaranteed matches inside a cave, so you can go there, grab the matches, instantly warm up, and then, you know, wait out the initial blizzard and start your run properly from there. There are teas nearby, there's wood nearby, there's everything you can need in Hushed River Valley. And then when you leave, you end up in Milton with even more natural resources to get. I'd say the worst place to spawn would be freaking Forsaken Airfield. What a horrible spawn that is. Uh, speaking of horrible, the weather ain't great. I'm going to take a wee nap before I before I start this proper. Down we go, go. Just sleep on these rocks. I'll give it one hour. I can always have a coffee if I need to keep going a bit longer. Surely Dominions has gotten used to waiting at this point. Wouldn't mind waiting some more. <laughs> Not when Neefington's already altered his schedule for it. I couldn't do that for a chap. After he did so much for me in the Rimworld run all those years ago now. Neefington and his peg leg. These days I'm not sure I would tolerate a survivor that's that uh, enfeebled. Okay, the weather got worse when I was waiting that out. That's unfortunate for me.
You can't cut off a story like that. Please resume. I uh, don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes I say stuff, I get cut off, and I forget what I was even talking about. But I'm not renowned for my amazing memory. Mm. Hush River Valley is one of the few places I have not yet done a single region survivor, so... You'll have to forgive me if I seem like I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going. Rimworld pigs. Uh, so our first big invasion, really our first proper raid of the game, when we still only had three members of our colony, was a raid of, I think, 25 enemies. Six of them were pod dropped directly on top of the base. The rest were around the uh, the colony. So we couldn't exactly stand behind our defenses. And we weren't really in a position to fight them there inside, but uh, we made it work. The ones that pod dropped uh, when they saw me running away, they decided to steal my stuff. So I thought, okay, they're going to steal my expensive medicines, which they did. Maybe my gold or silver. That's they picked up my entire drug lab and walked away with it. The whole thing. Beakers, bench and all. And they set fire to the base. Uh, it was grim. Very, very grim. I... Yeah, speaking of Grim, this is bleeding Grim. Uh, oh well, down we go. They did not get away with any of those items. We didn't kill everybody, but we certainly killed everybody that was trying to steal any of our stuff. How exactly we managed that? You're going to have to see the VOD. It was a good fight. Then again, it's a 10-hour VOD. I don't think anyone wants to sit through all of that. So I think when I put it to YouTube, I'm going to add timestamps. Because I was recently watching something on YouTube and I was like, man, this is long. I just want to get to the points where I'm interested in. But the person who'd uploaded it had very thankfully put in such information. They, they put in the points where you can go for X, Y, and Z happening. And I thought, that's pretty good. Next time I upload something that's way too long, I'm going to do that myself. So I will. I actually think I want to climb up there. Uh, I don't actually know where Many Falls Vista is, but I'm guessing it's not down here. It's probably up there. I need some first aid soon. You don't need first aid, you fine shepherd. What I need is to get up this. Well, on the other hand, there's not much point in having stims if we don't use them. You know what? We never see enough use out of these stims, do we? Let's change that. Now I can look like I've got full health as well. <sighs> Ah, crap. I'm too heavy. Uh, goodbye water, and uh, uh, goodbye other water. Oh, that's still too heavy? Goodbye maple syrup. Oh my god, I'm still too heavy. I need to drop something fast. There we go. Nah, no chatters. The, the pool of characters is really diluted, so it probably takes a while for them to appear. on before the stim wears out. Really should have ditched my stuff before I started climbing. This is getting dangerous. There we go. I sure hope Many Falls Vista is near here. It's going to be tragic for me if it is not. I have a feeling I didn't even need to do this. There's probably a path up here from where I entered the area, but eh, my problem. Oh, I had a foot sprain and I still climbed that. It's impressive, Shepard. Right, I don't want to take that damage, so I'm going to drink my coffee. I'm fatigued because I took the stim, but if I drink a bit of coffee, I get a little bit of fatigue back. Uh, hang on, isn't the cave over there? I think it is. I should just go and sleep in the cave for now. Yep, there it is. See it just kind of load into uh, vision.
But that's the situation I wanted. I might have sounded like I was uh, begrudging the situation, because there had also been two uh, mech clusters dropped nearby. But that's what I want. I wanted oppressiveness from 500% difficulty. I wanted to even be in situations where the best move is to just pick up and leave. But we fought it out. We were okay. That smarts a bit. Yeah, I'm trying not to think about RimWorld, but all I can think about. How can this be? Ten hours yesterday did not feel like ten hours. Felt like maybe four or so. Right, the ice cave is rich with resources, but this is not where I need to be right now. Aside from sleeping, I definitely need to be here to sleep. It's pretty warm for a place called the Ice Cave. We've got a lot of sleeping to do here. Let's do our first batch. Eight hours will do. I actually thought that we did get attacked by a chatter yesterday. I thought somebody put in Grace Nakamura because we were attacked by a Grace, but I rechecked the VOD and no. Uh, Grace Nakamura actually had not been added. Holy so I don't know about you, but I would not be able to drink. Surrounded by snow. Nothing to drink. I would not be able to eat a uh, bottle of or a jar of peanut butter without a drink. But that didn't cost Commander Shepard much at all. Probably the middle of the night, right? Oh heavens, yes. Don't know how it's bright in here, but it is. Look at that. Maximum health. 100 and 105 health. Good times. Am I going to head out? Depends on the weather. Out of water. I will need to make more of it. That's because I ditched it at the bottom of the rope. Ooh, it's nice. It's really nice, in fact. Let's light a torch. won't be long before I think I want to nestle down and make some coffee, but I'll at least get to the edge of this. Really foggy though, I'll have to know where I am. Maybe I should have brought some spray paint, it would be easier to figure out where I am in relation to everything else if I have some spray paint. I think Many Falls Vista is kind of directly below where I am, but if I entered here, I think I can take the path along to here and then drop down and get that. That's what I'm hoping. Even if I have to fling Commander Shepard off of the uh, off of the mountain to do that. Ah, this is really nice. Takes me back to my childhood. This for sure. So it's pretty much the only thing. I, oh, okay. Maybe there's two things I miss about Scotland. Okay, maybe three. One, I suppose, is uh, our god awful food, which I love. Some haggis, some cheesy oat cakes, some shortbread, mm-mm. Maybe some cars, cheesy melts as well. And they now do herbal melts. I would know because I got in a care package this week. That box disappeared pretty fast. Uh, I suppose the other is the familiarity. You always know where you stand with a fellow Scot. But the other thing's the nature. Really quite miss the nature. Right, this isn't a one-way trip. You can... Well, actually, I think it is a one-way trip. I have tried many times to climb over that, and I'm not sure I ever succeeded. Like, hugging against the walls and trying to get across this. It's no big deal, though. I have a hatchet. I can clear this. I just don't want to. So in this challenge, there's nothing you can do to heal. Uh, you can use stims to heal. They will give you 15 health back, but they are limited and very hard to find. Sprains... We're not talking about uh, things like sprains and broken ribs. Those will heal. We're talking about condition. The bar here in the bottom left, that's your condition. That will never naturally heal. You can't heal it by drinking birch bark tea. You can't heal it by uh, sleeping or just generally having all of your meters fulfilled. No siree. Anything good in here? Not really. Let's chance it with this. Can I use the book, please? Yes. 80% chance. Can't fail. Yeah, I like shortbread too, Marvin. Fortunately, that too was in the care package. Come on, little fire. A pack of Asda's shortbread fingers, but also a proper box of Dean's shortbread. <sighs> Occasionally, I get care packages from home. If I ask nicely, and I'm a good boy.
as does still decent. Oh yeah, there, there's that uh, loyalty to Asda's kicking in. <laughs> yeah, Asda's treated me fine. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Again, let's not dox ourselves like that. A yet unnamed British supermarket chain. That'll do. Got some replacement coal in here. Any other secret sighting in here? I'm very bad for not checking the very backs of the cave, but you just move so slowly inside the backs of caves. But I don't want to. Alright, so the three things were the nature, the food, and the familiarity. Anything to make? More racial tea to prepare? <laughs> Docs and me is fine, eh? Come on. Ayrshire's a big place. You could be living on any of those numerous drug-filled alleyways. With its two towns. <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever been to Ayrshire. I've been up and down Scotland. I've been up and down Britain, in fact. But I don't think I've been to Ayrshire. Been down to Land's End. I've been to many major British towns. Manchester, Birmingham, London. Been in Wales, been in Cardiff, been in Ireland. Been the Western Isles, been the Northern Isles. So when I, when I talk about how awful Britain is, I'm not talking about one tiny piece of Britain where I've been and I've been up and down the place. Oh. Uh, eight torches, that's plenty. Yeah, but not Ayrshire, so maybe you could say, you say Britain's bad, well, you haven't seen Ayrshire, so you're not allowed your opinion. Fair enough. Where's the worst of it, though? Ooh, Jing's the worst of it? Well, despite its nickname, I wouldn't put Scum D as the worst of it. Eh... Eh... Jinx, that's hard. I suppose it depends on what kind of worst there is. There's a lot to be said for the, the really derelict and forgotten Highland towns. And that, that is grim. Multi-generational unemployment. Any kind of immunity up and left. Your only job is to be a, a farmhand or work in a distillery. Heck, the uh, the village, my home village, uh, its only bus route it's had in the past ten years was a bus that went twice a day to Tesco's. And that was subsidized by Tesco's and is now gone, so uh, you're not going to get that scrolled message. Went in, never came out, five days, no more, okay, but... Where is the Vista? Where's the Many Falls Vista? Is it down here? In my heart of hearts, I think that I don't know. But maybe. Feels like it would be, right? I mean, I came across here. I'm right here. Should we throw Commander Shepard down here to find out? It looks like a very, very dangerous goat journey to make. Can we mitigate the danger? This looks like it mitigates, let's go. Again, if we take any damage from this, it is permanent. Mm. Oh wow, I got a zero condition torch, I'm definitely putting that away. Just jump down, it's fine. That jump would kill me, 100%. Fall damage very quickly grows if you go down and down and down, but... Commander Shepard can handle that. Okay, we're fine. That didn't look as sheer as it was. Right, bandage up here, and... Oh god, the wind picked up as if to laugh at my fall. I don't have painkillers, wow. How can this be? Oh well, I guess you're just in pain for a while, Shepard. Is this the Many Falls Vista, though? 
Doesn't look like a Vista location. There's a mysterious signal fire over there, by the way. Very mysterious. I, I do think this is Many Falls Vista, though, but maybe I shouldn't have come out to, to night time. Or rather, barely dawn time. Let's explore around here a bit more. I think we'll find the grave. I will need to stop and warm up soon because this is already getting very cold for poor commander ship. This is Many Falls Vista. I almost guarantee it. Is that cold? No, but it's burnable. Here you are. Excellent. We were all so cold. More than we could take. No escape. Please forgive me. Yeah, forgiveness has to be earned. Right, like I said, I don't wanna I don't wanna take freeze damage here, so let's use our many, many matches. Yeah, 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 we're making your bleeding fire, Shepard. Calm down. Maybe if you actually managed to level up in Firestar, I think we wouldn't have to wait so long on it. Why didn't that work? Let's go. How rich are the people up there? Um, there's a bit of wealth disparity because the landowners, well, they don't live there. Come they live in New Zealand, lease out their land and live the high life. But hey, good on them. I'm nothing against some good entrepreneurial activity. I have a lot of coal, so I have no problem just chucking on two bits of coal and calling it a day. I'm going to warm up my rose hip tea and use that to heal up. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to sleep for an hour. Now, it's possible that the wind changes course and blows up a fire and I start taking hypothermic damage, but I was willing to take my chances there for one hour. And I was fine. Not only that, look at the day. I could have used my mag lens for this now that I think about it, but... Well, shame on me for not thinking about it. The pain is still there. I will offset the pain with the rosehip tea. And I will keep a racial tea at the ready as well. How would you rate the difficulty of this chat? It's really easy. <laughs> I expected it to be much harder. The problem is the loot. There's far too much loot, and the game doesn't give you enough tools to modify the game loot. I wish it did, though. Right, uh, that was easy. We don't even need to hang around here. We can just leave, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We go back through Milton, down through Forlorn Muskeg, and then we take a turn to the east. We're going to go through Mystery Lake, through the ravine, down the ravine, and there is another grave marker there, and after that there's only two left. Desolation Point and... Timberwolf Mountain. We'll do it in that order. Where's the Timberwolf Mountain one, though? I bet it's on the summit. Anything done on Timberwolf is on the summit. Oh, so it wow. <laughs> doesn't even want me to climb the summit to get that one. It's a crystal lake. I suppose if they put it on the summit, then it would be a no-brainer to leave that one till last. I still think it's a no-brainer, but even more of a no-brainer. But yeah, not a difficult run, Prickney. And again, just because of the loot, this loot feels more like maybe Voyager loot. Well, we went up here before, we're going up it again. In fact, there's the thing, I came down, I went up here, if I just carried along there, I wouldn't have had to go up here and waste my time, but I didn't know, and that's fine. It's okay to not know. It's going to be a bit of a trek, though, so I hope you're ready, Shepard. Drink some of your water, as much as you can, actually, to make as much space. I've got a little bit of space left, I can take the maple syrup. And I can just drink that maple syrup. I'm gonna need the calories for a for a journey like this. Mm, you know what? I can take the cedar. Take a fresh torch, ish. Don't want a coffee as well. Drink the coffee. There we go. 
I don't know how we're holding a torch. Guess we're holding it in our teeth. I would have expected Iceland at best or Lidl at worst. Oh, there's no Iceland up there. I think if you go to Elgin, there'll be an Iceland. If you go to Keith, there's a Tesco. If you go to Huntley, there's a Tesco and an Asda. There was a Summerfield or a Sainsbury's, but a Summerfield sounds better. Or sounds more right to me. But that might have gone the way of the dodo, like so many things do there. Actually did uh, commute to Huntley for a while, and let me tell you, that was miserable. I remember my motorbike breaking down at one point along the way on this horrible stormy day. Oh man, I had to call the AA, I was standing out in the uh, bleeding water all the while thinking, ah Christ, like work starts soon. What a miserable day that is, but yeah, that's fine. Because after a miserable day, you can usually look back and laugh. Well, someone will be laughing, might as well be me. Right, I could go back inside that ice cave to sleep, but conditions are fine enough, I'm going to go all the way to the end of the cave towards Milton. Then I'll sleep, then it'll be a warm end of the day, and we go all the way down to Milton Town. If the going is good, maybe even to Milton Basin. I find it interesting how British class society also reflected in which stores you buy your groceries. Yeah, the, the really rich people, they'll go to Waitrose. But I'll tell you, Waitrose has the, uh, the, best, the best cookie and just generally pastries and stuff counter. Mm -mm. There was a Prestos nearby back in the day. I always thought Prestos was the bee's knees. I could get a uh, two liter bottle of their own brand cola for about 18 pence. And that's pretty good when you're scrounging around for 20 peas with which to buy things. Could not afford Waitrose or Marks and Sparkies. I was stuck with Tesco. Yeah, Ninja likes to LARP like a poor person. A pauper. But then when he's in charge of dinner, where are we going out to eat? In fact, I feel the need to name and shame. Can you, uh... Can you remember the name of the place, Ninja? I want to see if I can bring it up on stream. Ninja in charge of corrupting Alpha Gamma with dinner. Come on, I brought up some uh, something out of TBW. I can bring you up as well. Of course, I have the receipt as well. <laughs> it's highly amusing. Keeping it as a trophy. It is the uh, the greatest ATM trick he's ever done. Right, this will take a bit of a moment, so I'm actually going to start a week. Actually, do I care enough about firing up this? I don't know how long this takes. 18 minutes, you'll be fine, Shepard. Oof, I got a lot less fine. Let's leg it. I don't want to take hypothermic damage, but the cave is right there. Yeah, and there's the wind. There we go. Took maybe 2 or 3%. Maybe not even that. Maybe just 2% damage. But we made it. Oh, so cold. You're fine, Shepard. Let's go. There you go. He even has the wonderful beef cuts on the landing page. Does it now? I was hoping it would have the price list. It's slow times in the game, no problem bringing this up. Let's grab browser source here, please. Let's cut off my incredibly incriminating bookmarks. And do we get that? I think we get that. Does it really only have 3.81 on the ratings? That seems off. Man, oh man. I'm not going to say that meat wasn't good. That meat was great, but holy moly did it come at a cost. 
Dinner price range was from Japanese yen 10,000 to 15,000. Well, we sure showed them. What was the total bill again? 60,000? 60, 60,000 seems about right. It was the first time I've ever eaten meat like that, though. Like, this meat really melts in your mouth. Kind of like quavers. Which is a very, very strange experience for eating meat. But my god, it was good. Mm -mm. Don't think we had this, though. I had this elsewhere. Isn't that um, Oyakodon? Looks like Oyakodon. Alright, I really shouldn't be doing this to myself. I'm going to get hungry, and this isn't going to be a short run. Right, go on, back to it. 60,000 yen, Bill. Kind of like Quavers. Hey, now. A bag of Quavers won't cost you 20 pence anymore. Eh, maybe it would. But you can get a six multi-pack for uh, a quid. In my care package, I got some multi-packs of Cadbury's chocolates, because... There, there is a source of Cadbury's chocolate nearby, the nearby... What was that? That was spooky. Uh, the nearby Spar actually sells Cadbury's chocolate, but at a hefty price. Anyway, I got some multi-packs there, and they're tiny. It's multi-packs of like 20 gram bars of chocolate. They're smaller than my finger. If you can't inflate, shrinkflate. Two quid for a six pack of quavers, my god. All of Britain's going down the tubes, young. <laughs> okay, trust me, I'm, I'm here to do more than just complain. But it feels good to complain. It's a life need. Right. It's plenty warm inside this cave, and we're just outside Milton. I'm going to sleep for probably six hours. Uh, always good to say schlaked. About the ratings, nearly nothing has above four on Tabe Log. Japanese people have standards when it comes to not ruining ratings. Anything above 3.5 is usually amazing. Oh, that's nice. It's very disingenuous to see... You know, things that are okay get eight star ratings. But aren't Michelin stars usually quite respectable? I've eaten at a Michelin star rest. I ate at a Michelin star restaurant in Poland, actually, and probably, yeah, I would even say definitely the best food I had on my journey through Poland. The journey through all the places, actually. That food was amazing. What was the place called again? I think it was called the Goose Egg. And they actually had their titular dish, a, uh, a goose egg, which I think was a white chocolate egg with some kind of fondant yolk inside it. And it was in a uh, in a bird's nest of kind of really nice candy floss with shavings shaped like feathers of chocolate. And that was just the, the dinner. It was a multi-course uh, meal of chef's choice. Oh my god. I intend to never set foot in Krakow for the rest of my life, but if I were forced to do so, I'd make a beeline for that restaurant as well, because the thing was, it wasn't expensive at all. Nothing in Krakow was expensive. Some drinks cost three Polish dollars. What are those again? Schlotty. Mmm, oh my days. So yeah, if I go back to Poland, it won't be to Krakow. Maybe I'll go to Warsaw. Maybe I'll get a plot. Exactly. Nothing in Krakow is expensive. And if we have a BR saying that, well, we've got a rich BR saying that. Black Winds owns the largest tip top in his village. He's got the most pocket lint and the most little buttons in his uh, rattling wee tinny. Back to Milton, no problem. And we are two out of th uh, two out of five. Wait, two out of five? Why does that not feel right? Oh, thank God, I haven't done the, uh, the ravine. <laughs> this had this moment of shock that maybe I hadn't actually clicked on the grave marker over in HRV, and then I'd have to go back to Ash River Valley. I have controversial views on the Michelin stars. I don't dispute two out of threes, but I've eaten in many restaurants better than ones. I mean, 
If you if you have eaten enough to dispute two out of threes, then I'm going to assume you've eaten in better restaurants than ones. The thing is, it's meant to be a mark of quality. Maybe you'll find better, but you are going to get good food here. You're not going to get stuff that you come away with and go, Oh, that was naff. Because if you did, that would ruin the whole Michelin star rating. They can't afford to be IGN with their rating policy. Get out of here. Oh, Christ, he... He wounded on me in no time. All right. I was thinking about just going straight to the basin, and honestly, I'm still thinking of going straight to the basin. Yeah, the weather is good. It's incredibly warm. I'm going to keep moving. Got food poisoning. 8 out of 10. IGN. That sounds about right. Maybe they'd also add too much water. When I go out and eat out, it's usually home-cooked meals. I do almost all of my uh, food as home cooking. I almost never eat out. I only do that when I'm traveling. But if I'm doing that, then I actually want to eat some good food. Top pick in Budapest. Top picks, rather. Okay, no, I actually can't pronounce the, the name of the uh, the good place for... Well, the second good place, but there's the uh, Café Gerbeau. And it's so good. It's not cheap. But at the same time, it's not that expensive. Yeah, I'd say it's more like regular price rather than nice and cheap, as haha, I'm in Hungary. Anyway, amazing place, just so good. Their soups, their salads, their scones, their cake selection. I'll even cook some of the cakes into some dishes. <laughs> um, when I was there with a couple of friends a few months ago... Or was it longer? I don't know. I've lost track of time. Point is, I was there with some friends. There were three or four of us, and we ordered one of their fancy uh, chocolate tart-like cakes. And they, they brought it out with some big display, but then they, they, they proceeded to cut it in front of us, which already felt weird, like, we have the ability to cut this, but then they failed to cut it really badly and just ended up mangling the cake. The waitress giving that half laugh, half apology of, I'm sorry. Uh, now, I was laughing the whole time because I, I, I laugh a lot in situations like this. I get told that it's very inappropriate. I don't care. It was funny. But yeah, it just seemed weird to have this fancy cake and just mangle it in front of us. How hungry are we? Are we hungry enough to justify butchering this creature? We're also really overweight, so maybe not. And we, we, we really shouldn't stop, actually. The weather is so good that we're warming up, so yeah, I'm going to keep moving. Jake doing it to make sure the experience is as traumatic as possible for the poor sod who mangled it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, those kind of memories are great to look back on, because you think, wow... Today's rough, but at least it wasn't as bad as that day that I mangled a cake in front of this Scottish bastard who kept laughing at me. What an asshole! What was his problem? I bet they'd, bet they'd say stuff like that. Fine by me. Yeah, it's not Maglen's weather. Not that I should be worrying about Maglen's weather. Yeah, just drink up, eat up, ditch any excess weight, and then we're making our way down. Oh, wow, I think it's actually at the point where I... I've eaten through all of my uh, my nice manufactured food, but that's fine. We've got cattails aplenty. Mm, a little overweight. What are we going to drop? i got so much cedar fire, we'll just drop most of that. Oh, and that's, that's enough. Okay, great. Down we go, go. I don't know why I ever started saying go, go instead of just go. I don't even think I've picked it up from anyone, because I, I don't think of anywhere that I've seen or keep hearing it say go-go. I just started doing it and can't stop. But I was watching someone else stream, someone from around here. It might have been Baron, and he also said go-go, and I just creased up inside. Painful. 
Uh, multi multiple stocks is part of this quality of life mod for the Long Dark from Von Dougals. It's incredibly good. It has a lot of there's a lot of moments in this game where you're like, ah, I wish it did this. For example, I wish it would stop using my birch bark as my tinder, because I like birch bark for teas. Or I wish it would take the lowest quality torch when I'm doing this. Well, it doesn't just do that. It lets you scroll through the items. And it stacks similar items. Look, two racial teas on one slot instead of filling us up with duplicate kinds of teas. Oh, it's so good. Anyway, I am still in a similar problem here. I think I'll just drink this coffee. That might give me the kick up the backside I need to finish this climbing. Almost. Yeah, come on. I bet I can just drop a stick and I'll be okay. Well, I've got a lot of sticks. There we go. Mmm, raw eggs on rice, yeah. I've been meaning to do that here, actually. There are some really cute setups in the nearby market where it's like old ladies selling obviously their own not there. They, they obviously raise something that lays these eggs. And they're just selling it there for a handful of Hungarian dollars. And you just buy as many as you need. You don't need to go and buy a box of a dozen eggs. Don't know about you, but I struggled to get a dozen eggs before they go off. Because I hanker for some eggs. Buy eggs. I eat like three or four eggs, and then I say, okay, I don't, I don't need to eat eggs for a while. I'm satiated on that. Then the eggs just go off. What a rough time. Anyway, I can go out and get as many eggs as I want, so I've been meaning to just have uh... Well, I'd actually rather crack the eggs into a thing and mix it with some soy sauce and then pour it over some rice. But I don't have soy sauce here, I need to find some. Hungarians are pretty uh, terrible for seasoning, actually. If you want paprika, oh, they've got every kind of paprika, but... I don't want paprika, I want some rosemary. Oh, I don't know about that. Okay, I want some Worcestershire sauce. Some what sauce? How about some soy sauce? It's even hard to get some sweet and sour sauce. Is, is paprika or bust? Paprika is all you need, really. Uh, I'm not saying it's not good. Paprika is good. But you know what's better than good? Variety. Love me some soggy bread. I go through eggs far too much. Ah, God, I haven't had any eggy bread in ages. It's against the law to call it French toast, so we just call it eggy bread. Mmm, one of the few things my dad taught me how to cook. Oh boy, my dad is a miserable cook, but... There's one day he says, Jake, we're making, we're making eggy bread today. Uh, that was some good stuff. Variety is what led to the fall of Rome, Jake. Nah, it's not strictly true, but the message is good. You can have any type of seasoning you want as long as it's for free. Yeah. No kidding, right? So nearby there's a market here, and I love that. It's um, it's an indoor farmer's market. It's huge. Like a dozen different people work in there, maybe maybe about 20 or so. Manning different stalls, selling different things, and some things is just like old old lady curled up on her bench selling whatever figs or eggs or jams or oh yeah the jams are good. The honey as well, I'm still nursing a jar of honey I bought the day I moved here. Um where am I going with this story? Oh yeah, paprika. Um there's huge amounts of fresh fruit and vegetables on the stalls, but there's uh, just an enormous stacked wall-to-wall -wall loads of tables full of nothing but paprika. It's kind of awe-inspiring. Who needs that much variety in their paprika? How much paprika do these people get through? Also, what is this? What the heck is this? Ah, it's where I dug out the, the burdock. Yes, yes, okay, that was... I'd never seen that before. Burdick is one of the newest things added to the game. Unless we're counting bugs. <laughs> no, it's not our, not our wee poopy holes, Ev. Like I say, some things are better abstracted away from the game. Could you imagine? It would certainly put a different take on the food poisoning malice if we had to care about Shepard's bowel movements. But I'd just 
personally rather not. You might think it's a little dangerous to make this kind of an uh, excursion with my fatigue as bad as it is. But once we do the transition over to Forlorn Muskeg, we can enter a cave and sleep the night away there quite easily. That's why I'm not even worried about getting sprains when walking around this dodgy land. I still haven't found a flare gun. There's almost certainly been flare guns, especially over there, but I wasn't going out of my way to get one. It's the only tool on my to-get list which I actually kind of care about getting. I did, however, forget to check a toolbox which might have had a cured gut in it, but uh, too bad for me. I don't want to take the fatigue damage from going too far on that, but that's okay. I'm still over 100% health, so I can still claim that I'm undamaged. That fall that I took could have done a lot more to me, though. Right, we're at the wrong edge. In fact, we're kind of diagonally opposite from the right place to be here in Forlorn Muskeg. I need to go in that direction. But we're taking a wee kit first. This challenge is quite nice because you go everywhere, or at least almost everywhere. There's no reason to go to Black Rock or Ash Canyon. Maybe this challenge was invented before those regions. I don't know. I, I do not. I did not follow the timeline of this game's development. Uh, but other than that, you really go to everywhere. So a good bit of not map knowledge helps. It does give you an already made map, but it doesn't have any of the markers on it. You don't know that over here is Poacher's Valley or whatever it's called. You don't know that the transition area is here or here. So map knowledge that you have is excellent for this. But I also just like something that you have to keep moving in. As we've seen in Single Region Survivor, you can just eke out an existence in any region. But it's more enjoyable to move around. We we don't we don't talk about eking out an existence here in Forlorn Muskeg. Are you planning on dangling your feet to Xenonauts too? No. Xenonaut Oh my god. Xenonauts is an early access, and you know that. You also know I don't play early access games. For what it's worth, I did play the demo of Xenonauts. I wasn't very impressed with it, but... Uh, I mean, Xenonauts has big... Xenonauts 2 has big shoes to fill. Xenonauts 1 was great. Of course, it's a problem. If it strays away from Xenonauts 1 too much, then it's not Xenonauts anymore. It's just Phoenix Point or New XCOM. And if it stays too close to the original XCOM, uh, the original Xenonauts, then it's just Xenonauts again. Why am I playing another game for it? Which sounds like a very, very difficult role to fill for a sequel. And I'm glad that's not my job. Xenonauts 2 is the same pair of shoes. Well, I will wait until it's out of early access, because if it's in early access, it pretty much doesn't exist to me. I'm a little low on water. That's not really a problem. I can stop and make water whenever I want. But it might be better to combine with warming up somewhere. At least cattails should make you thirsty. They are hard things to eat. Tarkin, do you have your ice cream at the ready today? Or do you save that for the DDR streams? Yeah, EA sharing its abbreviation with Electronics Art is a bit of an unfortunate thing for it. Finally eating our way into the cattail stock, but it's really no big deal. Yum, 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 yum. I think we even over ate those, but you know what? We don't care. Alright, it's the coldest time of day. That doesn't matter for Commander Shepard. We're heading out anyway. We are uh, enjoying our time in this cave anyway. Actually, it's not a terrible idea to make some water while I'm here. I said I'd grab the coal in this cave, and I didn't do it, because I already have loads of coal. The last thing I need is even more coal. I don't want to save that for the DDR, but I do have Belgian chocolate and hazelnut mochi balls for tonight. So I, I saw that in a, in a shop that I was in, they had all these different mochi ball ice cream things. And on a whim, I bought some. They were terrible. I love mochi. I like ice cream. But this didn't even feel like ice cream, it just felt like, 
you know, iced, iced flavor inside mochi ball. And I don't think freezing mochi does it any favors. Alright, uh, this isn't going to be sufficient. Let's throw on a bunch of sticks. I really carry too many sticks. I don't need that many. Mochi ice cream would be terrible. Mochi shouldn't be frozen. Well, that's the thing. It's just this ball of very subpar ice cream wrapped in mochi and frozen. Just, ooh. I mean, sure, that must appeal to somebody, but it certainly didn't appeal to me. But I, I love good mochi. Kind of something I regret in Japan was not having more mochi, but I was in what looked to me to be a very residential area as I was walking through Japan, and I did a lot of just bumbling around. I like to do that in my travels. I don't tend to have destinations that I plan to go to and spend all my time and, you know, I'm going to go to this castle and then go to this cafe I've heard about and I'm going to go to this viewpoint. I just like to spend a lot of time bumbling around. And where was I bumbling around here? I don't know. It wasn't Omihachi Man. I, I, I don't know. It might have been somewhere near Lake Biwa. But Bumble I did. And I thought I was just wandering around a residential area. And that's also fine. I might have looked a bit like a pervert, but... I did want to look around because I was considering moving there. To be honest, I still am. Uh, but even amongst this place where definitely people were living, there was still a place that's... Oh, dear God, in we go. There was still a place that was just set up selling largely mochi. <laughs> it was the best taste in mochi. So good. And it was... Um, I got some mochi, but I also got their strawberry mochi things which was just uh, strawberries wrapped in mochi, and my god, they were good. The Canadians have... The, Canadian, the Japanese have this obsession with just shoving stuff in other stuff. They love to fill things up with cream, for example. I mean, good on them. I don't, I don't tend to like that so much. But I gotta say, the strawberries and mochi was just phenomenal. I don't want that. Mm, I might want to preserve this fire. Throw in the cedar and a couple of sticks. Take a one hour nap and then see if I can get moving. Did it have bean paste? It did have bean paste. Had a bunch of things there. What I ended up not liking so much was that um, that weird goopy stuff that you pour sugar or sugary flowery stuff over and then eat with a stick. That, that I never really came to like. I found what looked like the best. Oh dear lord, it's just not it's just not Shepherd's Day here in Muskeg. Muskeg is one of the few places where I really do not want to be travelling in a blizzard, despite earlier travelling in a blizzard. Just because it's so easy to lose your way. Yeah, that was the joke I was skirting around Leafington. Glad to see that you had the audacity just to tackle it with your bare hands. Right, is it no longer horrible blizzardy weather? Jesus. It's not our day here. That was an Ichigo Daifuku with good strawberries and bean paste. They are divine. I would, I would have some real difficulties with uh, savory stuff in Japan. Well, bread in particular. The hankering for bread when you're there is unreal, because even if you have bread, they just don't know what bread is. They think if they mix flour with obscene amounts of sugar, they have bread. And then they can't just leave it at that. They're, they're always trying to be quirky with their bread. It's like, no, just, just bread. Rye? You know rye? Give me rye? Rye pan on your guy! And then they give you some cat-shaped piece of bread. Anyway, that, that seems like a very minor issue to have. Otherwise, life in Japan looks very appealing. But my life in Hungary is very appealing. I wish I could just split myself in two, enjoy these experiences, and then meld myself back into one later on. How's the bread in Hungary? Bread here is good. 
Despite my ranting about bread, I haven't actually eaten bread in quite a while. I'm on a pretty committed diet at the moment, and bread seldom does favours when it comes to that. And I gotta say, the care package from Scotland's probably doing no good, but that's okay. I've got a lot of, um, what's the word, discipline. I find losing weight quite easy. And I gotta, I gotta work on my summer body, you know. Well, summer's coming to an end, but uh, in this biome, to me, it feels like summer year-round. This will come in handy. I declined the can opener earlier. I will decline it again. Holy moly! Yeah, the the Japanese idea of yeah, it's, it's kind of like cooking as a way to show off your perfectionism in Japan. And that does lead to some truly spectacular eating experiences. But I, I would, I would feel, I would feel too awkward to cook for someone in Japan. I'd feel like there's no way I could match up to their expectations. Because when I cook for myself, I, I'm, I'm pretty easy to please, especially with my own cooking. Occasionally, I'll, I'll go the extra mile and make myself something really fancy, but. Done is better than great. Ah, uh, that's okay. We actually don't need our wrists, so we can handle that. The unfortunate thing is now we have to handle Commander Shepard's complaining. Is the signal flare the BFG, the 9000 of the Long Dark, the signal flare? You're gonna need to. You're gonna need to narrow that down for me. I don't know what you mean by the signal flare. There's the Mysterious Signal Fire over at Ashtaru Valley, and that's pretty good. It's got uh, got great stuff around it. Even on Interloper, it can have a Mac and all. Oh, the Flare... The Flare Gun. The Distress Pistol, a.k.a. Flare Gun. Mm. Yeah, that's difficult. It's a, it's a very loaded question comparing it to the BFG 9000. The flare gun is a great emergency weapon. It'll scare off anything other than a moose. It can also kill. I would never use it to kill, though. Um, I don't think it's a very reliable weapon for a kill. I'd rather use a... Okay, the weather is still foul. Let's just take a nap over here. It's warm. Plenty warm. Ooh, what if the bear comes back? That could maul me to bits. That'd be very funny, actually. I've never been mauled in my sleep before, but it can happen in the game. It's actually a setting. You can turn it off if you do not want to be mauled in your sleep. I'll use the mag lens, what a shame. The flare pistol I to carry around with maybe one or two flares, and it's just pure emergency. Like, I'm low on health, I'm in a wolf area, I'll just have the gun at the ready so I can immediately pull the trigger. With the bow, it's easy to miss. And if you miss, the wolf is getting a free shot at you. Or even if you hit, you might not kill the wolf, and then the wolf gets a free shot at you. But with the flare gun, as long as you fire in the general vicinity of whatever is attacking you, they will be spooked. And actually, although I say that um, only artificial light scares off Aurora wolves, an Aurora Wolf being shot in the face by a flare will scare it off, or kill it. And it's good for that as well. I tried to... I think I tried to prove that point when I was playing in Black Rock. I don't know if it's a flare gun or a flare, but the Timberwolf just bugged out and stood there and took it. And I think I had another similar attempt at making friendly with the Aurora Wolf. If I said Timberwolf, I meant Aurora Wolf. Over in... Broken Railroad, and in fact I had a third encounter with the Aurora Wolves in Forsaken Airfield, where I was trying to show off how they are scared of artificial light. At which point the Aurora Wolf charged me, the Aurora immediately ended, the light went off, and he became a regular wolf. And then I got mauled. That was really weird. I even re-watched it trying to understand what was going on and I couldn't piece it together. Got to be careful, there's sometimes moose around here, although I don't see moose markings. Are those moose markings, actually? 
Oh, those markings are usually dark like that. Oh well, if I see the moose and I end up with uh, rib jelly, then so I do. I'd need to find a stim in order to climb the rope up to Timberwolf if that happened. It was entertaining though, perfect timing. And that's the nice thing about streaming. If you just do enough streams, eventually you'll get those perfect timing moments. Maybe I should make some kind of uh, collection of good times like that, but it would end up being a pretty big collection by now. I had fun making the collection of uh, sieges and fights in State of Decay 2. Very rare case of me actually hacking together and putting together a video rather than just posting the raw footage. Which is pretty low effort on my part, but I, I like streaming and I don't like video making, so of course I'm going to spend the bulk of my time doing the streaming. And 99 Mediocre, at least to some degree, agrees. They say, hey, love your YouTube. Thank you, so do I. Occasionally I just load up my YouTube page, I look at my well-organized load of playlists, and I think, yep, that has been time well spent. Because it sucks to work a job for years, look back, and then not really see anything you've made. I mean, I worked private security for a while, I can't look back at anything and say, yep, that's an accomplishment that I can feel proud of. No, it's just the buildings I guarded are still standing. Go me. I worked home delivery as well. I mean, all I can remember, oh man, there was there was this this uh, individual, the biggest, fattest individual I've I've seen in Scotland. And trust me, we've got our fair share of tubzos over there. You'd think the juggernaut was modelled after someone in Scotland. In fact, it was, if you ask certain people. Uh, point is, this lady lived around the corner from the place I was doing delivery for. Him. Why? Why did she get delivery? She didn't seem. Uh, she didn't seem too ill-abled. She was able to get up and answer the door, at least. Mrs. Duffy. Right, it is so unbelievably warm. And the weather is serene for us, so this is a nice, easy journey for Shepard to make. I don't even need to warm up with anything. Although I'm a touch thirsty. Do I have my... Yeah, I've got Rosehip. I'm going to get rid of the pain so that Shepard doesn't complain about the pain. I'm not going to fix the uh, sprained wrist, because the sprained wrist only affects your ability to use the rifle and the bow. If you're not using the rifle or the bow, a sprained wrist is meaningless. Don't even bother fixing it. You can still throw a rock with sprained wrist. Now, if you have two sprained wrists, definitely fix one of them. Because then you wouldn't even be able to aim a rock to scare off a wolf. So one to one recreation of him, I swear. Uh, some discounts makes delivering food cheaper than going. No, I assure you, we were charging for delivery. No free delivery through us. And I'm pretty sure you wouldn't get cheaper prices for the goods online. Then I wasn't that invested in it. It was just a job. Job I had during my university times helped pay the bills. Well, then just help did pay the bills. And also, thank you, England, for the Scottish bursary. Really love it. And the uh, free education, and the free glasses, and free healthcare in general. I, I, don't, I don't know how... I don't know how English people even tolerate the existence of Scotland. We're just... We're welfare queens. <laughs> we're absolute welfare queens. Sucking our poor southern neighbour dry, we're like a big northern parasite. Don't tell my mum I said that, she'd, uh, she'd have my guts for garters. Right, here we go. This is a diversion, but it's not a big one, and this place is usually stacked with loot, like the Storm Lantern. I'm not going to take it though, my existing Storm Lantern is more full than that. This is what I really want. Coffee! Skillet's not worth anyone's time. I'm not raking around in drawers. I'm I'm not an animal anymore. I am going to take spray paint. Hope nobody needs this anymore. Am I? Am I really? Uh, I guess so. It's half a kilo of wasted space, but I do want to put it to some use. There's some tatties. I'm not going to bother with tatties. Plenty of food as it is. A tatty is a potato. I don't know if anyone outside of Scotland calls them tatties, but we do. 
In fact, it's more common to hear tatties than potatoes in Scotland. Neeps and tatties. Haggis, neeps and tatties. And it better have some scurly, otherwise it's not a dish worth having. Mm. Right, this is a bit dry. Normally I come in here hoping for the mag lens. That's meaningless because I already have one. I think I can use this. Hmm. You know what? I'm just going to chug that broth. Just drink it all, Shepherd. Drinking four jars of straight broth. And let's just drop the jars. Plunk. They're probably empty now. Yeah, nothing left inside. Nothing worth noting there. I'll take a quick peek in here, though. And I'm glad I did. No mag lens under the pillow. Definitely worth checking. It can spawn there. I swear I saw something in the corner of my eye, but my eyes are playing tricks on me. They do that sometimes. I still don't have any socks, though. I tore up my socks to make an improvised hatchet that I still haven't used, and I didn't need to tear it up either. Ooh, bedroll. This stuff will come in handy. In better condition than my bedroll. Bye bye, bedroll. Hello, bedroll. I don't need a whetstone. In fact, I can save a tiny amount of space by ditching my bedroll. Uh, not my bedroll, my whetstone. Anything else worth ditching? No, 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 no. But one thing I should check, though, is I still lack painkillers. I'll take it. Antibiotics are not painkillers. Antibiotics are almost useless. Antibiotics are only useful if you put yourself in a really bad situation. Infection, for example. When I was playing on my own uh, earlier this week, or was it last week? Anyways, playing some story mode in Long Dark, I did accidentally got, get an infection. Uh, I got mauled, and it gave me infection risk. But the, the, the game was so easy that I forgot I even had it, because I wasn't taking any real damage. So I went to sleep. And I woke up and I was like, why, why am I suddenly at half health? And I realized I'd actually developed infection. And you know what? You just treat that by taking some antibiotics and going to sleep. It's really quite trivial to deal with. And even then, you only let infection happen, because it's easier to deal with by just applying some natural old man lichen on it. Very easy to fix. Antiseptic works as well. Uh, antiseptic and old man lichen you can run out of in the world, but uh, old man beard lichen will spawn through beach combing, so you're never truly limited on that. You've got low tier coffee to tide you over. One of the things I love to do with my friends is give ourselves wee pointless challenges just for the sake of suffering together, Baron. So uh, needless to say, I'm very disappointed that you're not taking my two months of no coffee challenge. What, what was it we did? I think um, one of my friends, he wasn't allowed to play video games for a week. We, we did this one week rotation. So uh, my friend had gotten this new game that he really liked. It was probably a Total War game or some other strategy game. And it's like, yeah, no, no games for you for a week. It's like, ah, so he does that. I wasn't allowed ice cream for a week, which really sucked because we found this amazing ice cream parlor that we would convene at. Oh, it was great. We'd, we'd sit there playing... Uh, Playing games together, chatting, having their ice cream, and uh, often more. Uh, sadly, that ice cream place is now gone. Like so many places in Aberdeen, completely run out of business. Its name was Casa di Gelato, actually. The guy who ran it looked like he was a million years old, so if the off in the off chance that he is still alive... Wow, well, two players. Uh, I loved your place, and I'm sorry to see you're gone, man. Uh, another one of my friends was a habitual smoker. I wonder if he's actually finally given up. He, he's the annoying vegan friend of mine. That doesn't narrow it down much, though. A lot of them have turned vegan. Um, he didn't last three days. He's like, okay, you're ch we're all going through these horrible challenges. And his one is, okay, you're not allowed to, uh, you're not allowed to smoke for the week. Oh, it's fine, no problem. Uh, yeah, three days later, I catch him in his bedroom smoking. I actually kick him out of the house for it. Not, not for breaking the challenge, I mean, that the only punishment there is eternal shame, but because he was smoking indoors, I mean, come on, we share that house, get the hell out of here. Yeah, vegan smoker, classic. That man has quit smoking more times than I can count.
I remember, uh, yeah, I, I try to find novel ways to make people suffer, so, uh, I was leaving, let me think, yeah, I, w I was leaving him after meeting him, uh, one time, it was long after we'd lived together, and he'd given me the spiel once again about quitting smoking. So I give it a wee while, and I tell him that I, I, I don't know what I'm telling him, but I'm telling him some inspirational thing that I've done, whether or not I did it, I don't even know. But I told him the inspiration behind what I did was, you know, you you having the strength to quit smoking. That's what really pushed me on, you know, just knowing that you're you're tackling that vice was enough to give me the determination. I'd known full well that he had relapsed and started smoking again. I really hope hearing that broke him up inside. I mean, he's my friend. He, he's a great friend of mine. We've been through uh, good times and bad together. But that's all the more reason that I should just twist that knife that extra bit when I know he's letting... He's letting himself down. But worse than that, he's letting me down. What a bunch of great friends. That's what good friendship is. That's what great friendship is. Quitting is the easy part. Yeah, <laughs> quit several times. It's that easy. If you didn't do it, you'd be a bad friend. Exactly. Got no time for surface level friendships. I, I want something deep and meaningful. And what is more deep and meaningful than really knowing how to hurt someone? Uh, I've got another friend. It's actually the same friend, but let's pretend it's another friend. I don't want to pile too many negative qualities on one of my friends. Uh, who's an arsonist. And uh, we're sitting down having a discussion. I wasn't actually there, so let's just also pretend that I'm there, because it makes it sound better. And um, uh, another friend is involved, and we're talking about old times back when we were living together. And the question comes up, hey, you, you know that you know that um, cupboard that got broken at one of the parties? Did we ever find out who did it? And uh, the question gets turned back at him, and it's like, well, it must have been you. Only you would still be thinking about it today. And it was. It goes beat red. And uh, this friend turns around and goes, Oh my god, I can't believe you did that and you sat it for so long. And the guy turns around and says, Don't judge me, you burnt down a barn. Phenomenal moment. Sticks with me to this day. And that's still a line that gets used against him every now and then. Don't judge me, you burnt down a barn. Which he did. Filthy arsonist. I don't know why that was the first story he would tell everybody he met in university. So hi, yeah, my name is Redacted. Yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, I burnt down a barn when I was younger. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> oh man, I love him to bits. Love all my friends to bits. Yeah, an actual barn burner. Ooh, right, I'm, I walked through this whole area without even thinking about the game once. Um, we'll carry on. I'm gonna go down the ravine, sleep at the bottom of the ravine, and then... Well, maybe I could get out of the room. Depends what we find down there. But the grave is down there. I am not at liberty to say, Dicey. I have an agreement with my friends. I can talk about them on stream, but I'm not naming names. And if I do give them names, I'm giving them fake names. Or maybe just giving them each other's names. Right, so this is a ravine, and as we can tell, there's a path down here to this. Now, the ravine was a very intimidating map to me when I first started playing this game. Uh, just because this idea of this deep path that I was, I was fairly certain was a one-way journey. It wasn't in retrospect, but it feels like it. And I remember being told... Uh, there was something quite insistent at the time, and they were saying, My god, take the rope, you can go down the ravine, there's good stuff down there. And I had just picked up this game. I'm playing Interloper. I have no idea what half of the things do. The idea of having to carry a very heavy item that has no real other uses to a specific place. And I don't even know where in the ravine I'm meant to use it. And I don't know what's at the bottom. It was just... It was too advanced for me. Now it's not so bad. But it's still a bit of a commitment. It's a long way to drag a rope. And it's a dangerous journey down there. So a quick check inside this cave. I'm doing a lot of moving right now because the going is good. Oh, we're getting a bit thirsty. I'm definitely taking that rope. And there's your soda if you're thirsty. Some pe peaches for you are good as well if you're thirsty. Am I going to start a fire here? Depends if it's 
Old mag maglens weather? It's certainly not. I'm not mm. sure I can carry much more. You know what? We're going to move anyway. However, since we are thirsty, let's chug down this. Birch bark tea is disabled on this shifty theory. And don't take my word for it. I will grab some birch bark and show you. Just need two bits of birch bark, and I will start a fire when I'm at the bottom of the ravine, so don't worry about it. Okay, glad that didn't make me sick. I'm pretty sure that uh, pinnacle peaches cannot make you sit at 25 or above condition. But again, why take my word on anything? Yeah, birch bark on this mode, its only use is as tinder, same as um, no go up. But let's prove that, right? I'm just going by what the wiki tells me. It's often not a good idea. Better to have first-hand experience. That's why I like to travel so much. I can pick up all these experiences so that the next time I'm racist, I do it with the confidence of a man who's well-traveled. So, can we prepare birch bark? We cannot. It is nowhere here, so no way to use it other than this tinder. How much does it weigh? It's really light, so it's actually a good thing to use for tinder. No bunnies, no birch bark, what a horror thought. Yeah, it means you're almost unable to make uh, rabbit goods. However, there are some rabbit corpses, and rabbit corpses as well as their pelts can wash up ashore, and you can get guts out of wolves, so it's no big deal. Right, we've got to go down, then up, and then through this place. But it's, it's large. Once we do this, there's no more backtracking. Everywhere is going to be a straight shot from here. Uh, that's that's a lie, actually. We'll be double backing through Crumbling Highway and Desolation Point. That's a long way, but I'm talking nonsense as usual. Uh, with the rope, you can tie a wolf to a turtle style. I don't know what you mean by that, Konak. Closest thing I can even say relating to that is that I am very, very bad with knots. I do not know how to tie a knot. Well, I mean, I can tie my shoelaces, no problem, but any kind of fancy knots are beyond me. But tying tie is different. Anyone can tie a tie, that's easy, but... Yeah, just tying ropes is somehow completely beyond me. This actually became a bit of a problem when I worked in the water industry. We had to tie a fair few ropes for things, but I always just... We always went in groups of uh, two or more, so I just leave it to the old fart that I was with to do it. Oh, crikey, I hear I was saying you never need to bother with your sprained wrist, but... Of course, you can't climb with a spray mist. Well, down we go. Remember, we got to go back up this thing. The airfield is a dead end. At least for now it is. It'll probably connect to places down the line as they continue to expand. But for now, it only connects to the connector region that goes to it, which is the transfer pass. The transfer pass itself connects to Broken Railroad, which prior to this expansion was a dead end. Can I load up my map from here? No, can't check. Can't check maps whilst I'm on the rope. Would be a pretty big balls move for Commander Shepard to do. Uh, here's the map. Here's the world. We are here in the ravine. We just we were up in Hushler Valley. We went down through the mountain town, through the basin, through Forlorn Muskeg, through Mystery Lake, following train tracks, and here we are, like through the ravine and down down the ravine here, which is where we now are. Oh yeah, the whole Broken Railroad thing. Uh, the Broken Railroad leads to um, Lower Great Bear, I think it's called. Or maybe it's called Far Territory, maybe this is Lower Great Bear. Don't care, anyway. The uh, Transfer Pass and the Forsaken Airfield are over there. Now, there's usually... There's always a stim in here, but watch me not find the stim. Huh. Where the hell are all the stims? They're even giving me Stacy Soda. And go energy drink, that's pretty hardcore. This is one of those guaranteed stim spots, and there's no stim. Maybe this is based on some old, old load of loot. I'm gonna light up just in case I'm somehow not seeing it. Yeah, I wonder if I've ever seen an aurora in this area. It doesn't feel like an aurora-y place. Yeah, that knife's amazing, but uh, we don't need a knife. Well, interesting. It means I'm going to have to rest up to climb out of here. There's no way I can safely climb when I'm this tired.
that message that pops up, it's popping up because I'm pressing tab and I'm tapping just to check the time of day. It's an eerie sky, isn't it? If it did go Aurora, maybe this thing would light up. So the fun part here is that this connects to Bleak Inlet. There's no way I'm going back there. That's where we spawned. It'd be a silly place to go back to. It'd add a lot of time to my journey. But I suppose if we were desperate to go to the cannery... Hang on, where's the thing I'm meant to see here? Grave. The grave. The grave. Looks like it's here. There it is. I should grab cattails on here as well. I've been chewing my way through those. I left you behind. My guts freezing and my feet on fire. Sounds like a you problem. What's a me problem though is that... Oh, it's eating time for me. Let's just hack it all off. It's cold and getting colder. But that's okay. I'm going to take this meat. This pack is getting kind of heavy. And I am going to go in and enjoy a lovely evening. Glad I've almost burnt through all these crummy cardboard matches. The stim isn't hiding in here, is it? Ah, the survival's going really easily. It's it's kind of a chill run, much easier than I'd expected. You know what? I could even hack apart this giant fur limb for a huge amount of fur wood. And because this isn't an improvised hatchet, it's much better than my uh, other crummy one. And here we go, the one use for birch bark is to start this, but we haven't used cash. Let's make a fire that is so cash. Take the guts for the future bow. No, there's no conceivable way that I'll have them dried in time. I should have this challenge done in five days. Come on, little fire. Come on. <sighs> and we will find a gun yet. Perfect. There we go. Couple bits of coal, cedar, and you know what? Because it's here, I'm actually going to hack this. Uh, I'm going to hack this fur limb to pieces. It's only going to take an hour. Uh, even so, let's drink a little bit. Chop, chop, chop. Something that big. I don't think you could use a hacksaw on, but there we go. Dump, 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 dump. And there we go. We we have uh, a fire for days here. Isn't it? Shall we take? Shall we play food poisoning roulette? No, let's not. Let's not uh, tempt fate. Seems like a daft thing to do for absolutely no payoff. Mm, just scarf it down. Shepherd is hungry. Shepherd will be hungry in the morning as well. Plenty of water, but I don't necessarily have plenty of teas. Or coffees. Baron would be very disappointed in my lack of coffee achievement. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't drink the coffee before bed. Oh, what a I'd disaster. Eat snow if the hypothermia wouldn't kill me. Or racial tea, can't go wrong. Rabbit, go rabbit, or tea, or coffee. I've burnt through quite a bit of my water for that, so maybe a bit of water too. Oh, easy now. Let's not dehydrate too much. Yoink. Yoink, grab, grab. Let's make sure this campfire keeps burning through the night. I have loads of coal, but... Uh, no buts. I said I'd grab those cattails as well, so let's do that. And we're sleeping until sunrise, climbing our way out of here, despite that being a very exhausting thing to have to do. And then we're making our way... Through to Coastal Highway, through to Crumbling Highway, 
go to Desolation Point, and that'll be the fourth of five of these graves to visit. Food roll eight will make the chill run not very chill very fast. Food roll eight. It's probably a weird mistyping of food poisoning. But yeah, what a grim place to have food poisoning. Where are you gonna do what needs to be done? Probably doesn't. Probably not worth thinking about. Right, chug your water shepherd, and it's time for a good long night of sleep. Eight hours. Looking good. Still three hours in that, which is great, because I still want to sleep for a few hours. In fact, just sleep until you're no longer tired, Shepard. That's good. That is very good. Chow down your venison. Look at that. See, there's so much food. Uh, on single region survivor, sure, starvation is great. But when you're moving around like this, there's plenty of food to be had. And by the time you actually get rid of all the loads of food that there is... I like you. You should have the tools with which to get all the food you could possibly need. You should be able to hunt for deer. You'll be well beyond using rabbits for food. Even wolves. There's nothing wrong with eating one wolf steak or one bear steak each day. You only take a 1% chance of parasites. And even if it does froth, it's not the end of the world. Surely you're going to have plenty of mushrooms to, uh, to deal with. I forgot to take a nice warm drink. But it's surprisingly warm, so I'm not going to bother. Yeah, right before bedtime with food poisoning wouldn't be an issue because as long as you, uh, as long as you take some medicine and go to sleep, food poisoning doesn't hurt you. But if you don't do that, food poisoning hurts you a lot. It brings your condition down to uh, a maximum of 15, and that's really bad. Really, really bad. Okay, I'm relatively light as well at only 31 kilos. I like to think I'm pretty strong, but I would probably struggle with this much moving around with 30 kilos on my back. I'm going to go part way up, take a break, and then continue on. Although I should have drank a coffee before this. Tell you what, I'll actually make a little fire over on this perch because that's going to feel really cozy and I'll make myself a cup of coffee there. And this cup of coffee will be dedicated to Baron. He misses his espresso. I don't know how good this uh, big kicks coffee we're using is, but probably not as good as whatever he makes in his espresso machine. Ugh, drinking coffee. The very thought gives me the bad shivers up the back. Right now, if the game modeled biological needs, then food poisoning right before bed would be an experience. <laughs> yeah, you'd end up with a ruined bed roll pretty fast. Hey, fire starting level two. Again, I don't know if I can check my skills anywhere. Ah, here it is. It's the time passage that I can't check. Rubbish at carcass harvesting. But fire starting and cooking were at least a novice at. Right, warm up my coffee, and yeah, Let's bring up some of that while we're at it. It's a plenty nice day. A bit foggy, but it's not windy. It's not snowing. Right, just drink that coffee down, chef. I don't know how coffee. Coffee to me is such a bitter thing. I I I have a hard time imagining it satiating one's need for drink. It feels like one of those things that if you drink it, you'd come away feeling more thirsty for having drank it. There we go. I really think that reduces the amount of stamina you lose from climbing a rope. There's the energy drink. I could have drank that as well to make my way up. Maybe I'll try that when I do the next rope climb over to Timberwolf, but that's one of the last things we're ever going to do. Oh, that's right. I need to cross here. James, what am I thinking? 
Haven't been through the ravine in ages. Now don't look down, because if you look down and you get disoriented and fall off here, it is death. No questions asked, you just die. There are even some invisible walls to stop you from goating your way down. I did some experimentation with uh, turning on god mode and just jumping off the edge there. There are invisible walls that will just stop your momentum dead to prevent you from running over and uh, just making the jump without any kind of rope. What I'm curious about is if there's a way to go to your way up here. Now that would be interesting. Well, I'd find it interesting. How many graves? We've done three out of five. We're on our way to Desolation Point to visit the fourth, and then the final one will be done in Timberwolf. The thing about coffee is it tastes bad, and after you have too much, your tummy hurts, and then once you have one, you have to have it every day or else you die. See, that's the fun part about challenging people to not do things that they feel they rely on. That ice cream was so good, I was visiting that ice cream parlor perhaps more often than a healthy person should. But what can I say, you know? Yeah, for like seven quid or so, you can get yourself a, uh, a really nice toasted wrap, a hot chocolate, and a very nice sundae that has like a brownie broken up and mixed in with it. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, my days. The things that old man at Casa di Gelato could do for me. And to think I never learned his name. Actually, I think it was Stephen. Feels like his name was Stephen. He ex... Okay, now let's... <laughs> now that I've named the place and the person, let's not start digging up dirt. Yeah, I'm sure he was a lovely man. We are Shepherd Walk This Way, is it drunk? Why does Shepard walk this way? He's not drunk. I don't think there's anything drunk about him. And it's a her, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that sounds like a womanly exertion. Gotten that wrong before, though. I wasn't paying attention to a uh, waiter once, and I said, all right, thanks, mate. And uh, my friends gave me such a look. Like, He's saying, thanks, mate. I was a waitress, and I was like, ah, oh, I didn't care. The left side swing. Well, I'm the one swinging around like this. Otherwise, I think Shepard's just walking like a normal person. You know what, we're fine. We can we can leg it a bit. It's not cold. In fact, yeah, it only feels like minus two. Now that is tops off weather. I find it hard to imagine a train following this track, and I find it even harder to imagine a train going over this. Now this absolutely do not look down. Or up for that matter. It's a very scary place to be, especially because it's broken. You just hear it ricketing below you. Oh boy, now going down there, that is death wall down there. And then, no stops, we just keep moving. Da -da 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 -da. If you stop, don't hesitate. There we go. Sacrifice our fire to the ravine. Up is way worse for me, so right. See, I love heights. Doing that for me is just, mmm, love it. Always love climbing tall trees or looking out at tall buildings or like, climbing around ropes that are high suspended. I love that stuff. Fear of falling doesn't even exist. When I was really young, I was up a really tall uh, half pipe and some kid shoved me off of it and I fell all the way down. And I really thought I was going to break something. But I didn't. I was completely fine. I'm, I'm really uh, injury not prone. But uh, I just remember the thrill of the fall. I was like, that was amazing. I love heights now. Well, I mean, I already liked them, but I certainly loved them after that. 
Yeah, some quality trolling. Just shove this kid off or something. Maybe you'll break a bone. What banter that'll be. It was good, though. Heck, back in school we had this game just called Last One Off The Bench. Most of the school would just stand on the bench and we'd all shove each other off. The last one on wins. And I say most of the school, because the school I went to had 14 pupils in it. Now, I've never done parachuting, but I would like to do it. It's one of those things that, sure, I'd like to do it, but it sounds like such a hassle to set up. i got to find someone that'll do it. i got to pay the money to do it. i got to turn up. They probably have some kind of half an hour sit and watch this video about how you must follow our instructions or you're going to end up as pavement pizza. It's just, I like doing things I like. I just don't like a hassle. But I bet it would be a lot of fun. There's a, there's a trailer over there, but it's really not worth our time to check out. There's no way it's going to have any loot that's uh, so vital for us at this point. I wonder if I'm going to find the Distress Pistol, actually. I'll definitely stop in by Conset. I, also, I always like to go and stop in by there and pay my respects to the store that we did so much of our Outer Loper in. That sounds wrong, right? Outer loafer and we were indoors. We were given one allowance and that was that shop because we had to stock it up. You throw other kids down the turnpike? I didn't throw anyone off the turnpike. I don't like to do things that are that dangerous to other people. But I certainly took part in last one on the bench. Yeah, I think I was the tallest kid in my year, so that was that was an easy win. Not that there's much competition. There were four kids in my year. Two kids in the year above. And I think two or three in the year below. Right, I have a quick check in here. But there's really... It's such an unbelievably warm day. There's very little point in stopping around in places like this. I'm just having a quick look to see if they have anything of particular value. Like in this nasty looking cooler. Come on, maybe some socks. I am. I've gone this whole way without any socks. Poor Shepherd must have blisters up the wahoo. And hang on. I said I'd repair this Mackinac eventually, and I never did. Oh well. Problem for future Shepherd. Not as a habit, but saying it to that kid that shoved you, your turn now. Uh, I'm surprisingly non violent towards other people. There was one time that I beat up uh, another kid. And I felt really bad about that for the long time. I don't feel bad about it anymore. That little uh, that little urchin deserved it. But at the time, I was just like, oh my god, what if, what if what if he goes to his parents? What if it's a big deal? What if they track me down? What if the policeman he comes and takes me away for beating up this kid? Uh, yeah, don't feel that way anymore. But that time I did, and uh, yeah, not not a big fan of uh, being terribly violent to other people. Well, not then. Now I'm not sure I'd care too much. Also, I'm, I'm pretty strong. I'm fairly certain I could hurt someone pretty badly. Pretty sure I hurt that kid pretty badly. That little kid, Dark Young. <laughs> I don't remember him then, but he remembers me. You know, if, if you're going to hurt someone, at least make sure they can see the funny side in it. Me and my, me and my friends used to have this game. Well, used to. It still, it still gets whapped out every now and then. The game was called Pinchy Winchy. And I'm not going to describe how the game goes, because this is a family-friendly channel, but I'm pretty sure you can infer how the game goes from the name. And the amount of blood spilt over that, literal blood spilt, is just... It warms my cockles just thinking about it. I wonder if they think about the game too. Maybe next time I go and see them I'll give them a quick reminder. I remember this thing in the aftermath of a particular party. Why is there blood on the bathroom walls? And we knew where there was. Yeah, never broken a nose worm, never broken a bone in fact. I'd say I'm relatively accident prone, but I'm not injury prone. Oh. 
All right, I don't mind running at this point. Well, maybe I do. I'm wasting really good time, uh, really good time of day here. You know what? It's such a good time of day. Let's just coffee achieve. Oh wow, that coffee didn't have much of a kick to it. Yeah, I'm fairly robust. When I did uh, Tough Viking with the Paradox crew, I've done it three times. One time I did it with Paradox crew, another time I did it with uh, fa uh, Family, third time I did it alone. But when I did it with the Paradox crew, ten of us went in and only nine of us went out. One of us uh, fell during the electric uh, wires segment where you have to run through electric cables whilst you're being sprayed with water. And oh my days, that's exhilarating. But uh, one of us took a fumble during that, uh, land on a rock, and yeah, he he was he was off work for two weeks after that. Actually, <laughs> he became very meek after it. And I was I remember saying maybe a bit inappropriately afterwards. I was like, so are you going to do it again? You know, how about next year? He's like, I, I, I don't think I think I'm going to do it next time, Jack. Okay, suit yourself. Uh, it was grim for him, but me, yeah, I was me, yeah, I was having a good time. I'm not sure if Paradox ever did tough fighting as a group again. I didn't see them the next year. I think I'd left after uh, before the next one had happened. But there are some insanely sporty people at Paradox. That kind of put uh, well, that that actually backfired on me a lot because. Um, I, I started up Paradox Cavalry, which was the Paradox running group. And you're looking around, right, there's plenty of people in Paradox who are carrying a bit too much on the on the waist. Myself included, no doubt, right? That's part of why I wanted to be doing that. But the problem is, when you, when you go around trying to heckle people in the studio into joining your running club, you, you don't get the tons of fun joining in. Or if, if you do, they don't join for more than one or two sessions. You get the, the real fit nuts. Right, there's a certain flavour of autism that is all about being sporty. And those are the people that were joining in. And I am miserable at running. And I didn't feel any less miserable when I was being horrifically outpaced by these incredibly sporty people. Still fun though, still did it. Every Wednesday, five kilometers after work. A lovely path around Sutter Malm, it was great. But I, I did all the recruiting for that. And I would, there was a lot of heckling people. I'd take people's words and twist them around and be like, hey, I was like, oh, you want to join? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe later. I'll come back later. It's like, well, it's now. You promised me. Come on, you promised. Trying to, trying to dig into that Swedish national guilt they have. Oh, you promised me you'd join it. You gotta so join. And one guy in particular, I won't name him, but he wasn't Dev Clash. Top bloke. Um, he has destroyed me in EU4 before, so he gets his come up in one way or the other. Uh, he joins in. He he hates running, but he joined in for one time. And I just kept telling him, oh, we're just around the bend, right? We just just pass this bit and we're done. We're nowhere near the end. But I, I'd say, okay, yeah, we got that. But now pass this bit. And I swear the exit's just coming up. We'll be there. We'll be done in no time. And this just kept going on and on. The same way I kept telling Aristocrat there's just 10 more minutes of his crappy indie platformer game. Ah, good times. I don't know where the story came from, but sometimes it's just fun to reminisce. Because there's certainly not a lot to worry about in the game here. We're stacked with resources in very safe places. The only thing I'm really missing is a firearm. Jake, you missed something on the shelf. Uh, I will double back, but it's probably something I saw and figured I don't need this. If the weather's still amazing, I'm not stopping here. We're going to keep moving. Uh, do you mean the hacksaw? Because I already have a hacksaw. I already have spray paint. This is dusting sulfur. That's a book. Those are tools, which I don't need. There we go. Quality tools, so they're really good, but I don't need them. The flare gun is just about the only thing that I'm still really seeking out. Sometimes there's stuff behind here. No, it just stains on the ground. Sometimes there's a hacksaw under here, but if it's over there, it's probably not. Yeah, this is a shop that in Outer Loper I stocked up. It looks really different when all the shells are bare, doesn't it? More spray paint, more oats. I don't think oats are particularly worth the wait when I'm not bothering with cooking. Because Commander Shepard would rather starve than eat raw oats. I'll just put this all out here. And 
you know, we're going to rack our fingers through the register. Before I ever got a job that involved a cash register, I always wondered how people working there could resist the urge to just steal all the money. Well, I fought that urge for ages. But it can be done. I never once lifted money out the till. I lived with a guy who habitually did that. He didn't see a problem. He's like, oh, what the hell? I'm working there. Might as well just take the money in. He did. He'd just take the money out and then go out with that. In a way, I admire the... Uh, I admire the gumption of doing that. Right, jobs don't generally care about you. Why should you care about them? But even so, I uh, I could never lower myself to petty theft. Feels like uh, feels like a dangerous thing to lower myself to, because you you just need to do it once, and then suddenly it's justified, and then before you know it, you're doing it all the time, and then suddenly it's not just petty theft, right? Now, I know slippery slope is a logical fallacy, but I do feel that that's uh, not something I could tolerate doing myself. Very brazen, I like it, yeah. The guy's insufferable in a lot of ways, but let me tell you, he was an amazing cook. I just wish he wouldn't steal my booze. Not only that, but if you get caught, it might ruin your career. <laughs> <laughs> Could turn that into pull con very easily, but nah, it's fine. Fear of getting caught isn't too big of a deal. I can talk my way into and out of just about any situation. A great trick when I'm abroad is I pretend that I don't really speak English either. If you're going to swipe money from the till, at least you could buy the drinks. Oh, well, he did buy the drinks. Certainly more so than my friend from the Midlands did. We still lay into him for being the guy with the finger buns. We had a big old barbecue. Bring your own meat and bring your own booze, of course. But as the hosts, we had plenty of stuff to go around. Uh, but this guy, he didn't bring booze. He didn't bring meat. He never normally brings anything to these. He was uh, absolute tight-fisted niggard from... Uh, where's he from again? Mm, I better not say the exact place, but let's say Middlesbrough. But hey, he was feeling extra generous this time. He brought the finger buns. He brings, I think, a dozen pack of reduced price 10 pence finger buns from Asda. What a top blow. <laughs> and he, he would occasionally go, hey, hey, I brought the finger buns. You gotta, be, you gotta be careful with being indignant about these kinds of things. It ends up sticking. This isn't just a me thing. Other other friends will call on that as well. I would have been fired real quick had I taken in cash from the shop I worked at. Money was counted at the end of the day. If there were inconsistencies, they'd look at the fire. Uh, they'd look at the cameras and fire you. Oof. I mean, they certainly counted the money where I was at. I worked in a garden center for, I think, a year. Yeah, I was in school. I wanted the money. Why did I want the money? I don't think I used it. For no, no, I remember now. My, my dad forced me to get a job. He was like, alright, you're at that age. I got a job at your age, and you're getting a job at this age. So uh, I remember he just pointed me to the village and said, go get a job. So I was going door to door everywhere I could think of in the village. And this village is five miles away from where I live. Let me stress that point. It was not fun going there. First place I think I went on the door to was a florist. I didn't know anything about flowers, but hey, I could count. I could work a till if I needed to. Uh, they weren't hiring. But the garden centre, I just walked in and said, Hi, I'm Jake. I'm looking for a job. He just looks me up and down and says, Come with me. And then five minutes later, I had a job. I'm not sure if it would really work that way today, but it's kind of a comforting memory to have. So you got your job. You work on weekends. You start next Saturday. We'll, uh, we'll size you up for your, uh, your, uh, work uniform on the day. But yeah, I never lifted money there. Never lifted money anywhere. But they did count the money each time. And they were, you know, there was, there was a lassie in accounting there who was really hawk-eyed about anything, uh, anything suspicious that went through the till. For example, there was a deal there. It was like, buy two giant, overly expensive bags of dog food, get the third one free. But the till wouldn't ring it up if you got different flavours of them. 
And I got it, and I was like, oh, whatever. I just put the third one through as 100% off. And the speed that they came out. What's going on here? Why would you ring something through for free? I was like, well, it's, uh, it's meant to be buy three, get one. Buy two, get one free, and it wasn't going through. Oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> Funny the memories that stick with you, isn't it? That must have happened, I don't want to say 20 years ago, but um, a long time ago. But that memory is as fresh as a daisy. And I can't even remember what I did three days ago. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we have been traveling for quite some time. It's time for poor Shepherd to have a break. It's been a whole lot of nothing during the travels. The problem is we're, we're warm enough and the world isn't cold enough. So there's no need to worry about taking shelter and things. It's just, it's just keep moving, keep grooving. I still check any toolbox I find because there's a small chance for finding a cured gut, and that would interest me. Accelerant is always good. Flares are always good. You'd have people come through here with printed paper notes. Okay, I, a complete confession, I tried that when I was a teenager. Uh, holy crap, these never spawn on... Um, these never spawn on interloper. Nice, they're like... They're like thermal underwear, but better. Alright, tell you what, I'm going to harvest that. We're going to do some clothes repairing tonight. So when I got my own printer, I had I had this idea. It's like, I bet I could make convincing uh, forged money. Because I know that if you, um, if you soak paper in coffee, it ends up having a texture like an actual banknote. Something, uh, something taught us in school, primary school for some reason. Uh, so I printed it out, rummeled it up, soaked it up, and I was like, this is... I would be convinced that this is a five pound note. I need to find a place to rest. Uh, I never did it though. I never had the balls to try it because you know that's 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 a big boy crime, and I was probably big boy crime age at that time, so I didn't do it. But it was a nice little experience to try and make it. But right, before we do this, it's clothes repairing time. This is easy to fix, so let's get on it. It's still light, so we can do a lot of repairing right now. Preparing the Scots early for a life of crime, maybe. Oh, crikey, this, this head wrap is on its way out. I'm just going to harvest it. I once stole an egg sandwich from a corner shop in Brighton. Oh, man. Hitting small businesses. Now, that's not very nice, is it? I should repair this. It's really, really good. Poor Shepard's getting a bit hungry and a bit tired. Well, very tired, in fact. Look at that. Amazing. You'd never find loot that good on Interloper. Repairing you, uh, it's not so great. I'd rather make myself another head wrap. Forge, improvised head wrap. Well, I've only got three cloth yet. I'm going to have two after this, one after this. Oh, yeah, see all the confessions are coming out. I saw the trouble as though. No, we haven't done of that. Yeah, see the trouble, but steer clear of it. Just be sensible, I guess. Right, eating our granola bars, just eating food, carbo loading, and then it's time for Betty Bye Byes. As a young teen, I exclusively stole from gas stations because I wouldn't get the pang of guilt I'd get from thinking about the same as a local store. Right, I've suddenly realized the trick here. By getting me to read out what you're typing there, you're making it sound like I'm the one confessing. There's going to be some time when I'm an important man, and these things are going to come up completely out of context. I can feel it. Ah, dangerous. Alright, there we go. Ten hours of lovely sleep, and we're going to sleep for even longer than that. It's just ten hours because you get dehydrated after that on Interloper. Chuck down Stacy's grape soda. Oh, there's a thought. Stacy's soda doesn't actually spawn on interloper, so let's have a look at it. Apparently, this is taking the name from a long dark streamer by the name of Stacy. I just heard that in the grapevine. I don't know how true it is, but it sounds believable. I doubt they're going to add, I don't know, Jake's rolled oats or anything like that. But if they did then it would probably still be a fairly useless cooking ingredient that I would not recommend. Right, I've lost my bed. There it is. Sleep until I don't need sleep anymore, and then we're getting moving. 
I, DDR Jake, loves to steal things and do other crimes also. This is good for me and I endorse it. Please clip me saying this. Well, good job for you if you can clip out that last bit. It's okay, though. Forged evidence is a huge crime and it would be very easy to prove that that is uh, entrapment. Righto. Might only be dawn, but we're heading out. Dawn is usually a good time to start a fire, because as long as it's not foggy, it's usually counted as right enough to start a magnifying lens fire. It is not, though, which is a little dangerous, because this is the home of quite a few wolves at a choke point. But because I have a bazillion of them, we're just going to use a flare. The flare still gives you a small heat bonus. And there's also beach combing to be done here, but none of that is necessary. This is somewhere we didn't see in Single Region Survivor because it, it's an area, kind of. It's got its map, it's got a name, it's Crumbling Highway. But it's really small, it doesn't show up as a region that you can select. And there's just nothing to it, so it doesn't make sense to do as a single region. Kind of like Transfer Pass. I used the same day saver for a whole year when I was 16. Save hundreds of... Oh, on the on the buses. Yeah, I mean, bus drivers don't care. They're not even going to check. I, I, I don't mind doing things that take a bit of craftiness. It's just kind of blatant stealing that I uh, wouldn't, feel, wouldn't feel like lowering myself to. Or rather, I like things that you can easily talk your way out of. Plays to my strengths. It's hard to talk your way out of just picking up a fresh sandwich and walking out the store with it. But it's a lot easier to, I don't know, like, use the same expired uh, get a free drink coupon or whatever. That was a poor, a poor example, but the first one I could think up of. I mean, heck, I got myself into Japan without the right paperwork. But my bumbling elementary schooler level Japanese got me through. Just kind of pinging from person to person until they don't want to deal with me anymore. Right, replacement flare. Locked lockers are, in my opinion, worth searching on this because they're probably more likely to give you decent stuff here. Probably get away with a lot by just being a bit old and looking confused. Well, that's a bit of a problem for me. I look a lot younger than I am. Makes for a fun game when I when I meet strangers, usually in the pub, and I. It it almost always comes up. I get asked how old I am, and I I have them answer. I was like, why don't you tell me? And then I get sized up, and they think about the stories that I've been telling. And it's it's usually a very flattering answer. It's never older than I am. I'll say that much. In fact, it's, it's never even as old as I am. Uh, lucky me, the males in my family, we, we age like fine wine. I can look at least half as good as my granddaddy when I'm his age. And we never lose our hair either. Oh, that's, uh, that's the good kicker. I worry if I keep saying that enough, the gods of karma are going to strike down on me, but uh, even in our dotage, the males in our family have really thick heads of hair. I don't know, I think you look about 45 out of 50, right? Yeah, that's the stuff. Huh. My gamer senses were tingling. Is there anything down here? Well, I was right too, but I already have a better, fuller storm lantern. Wake up night, one night Heldon's all over you with a pair of clippers, he probably brings some salt as well, it's like he's dealing with Carthage. Hmm, this place doesn't count as indoor, I can start a fire. I will start a fire, because it's still a bit chilly. It's too windy to start a f what? Okay, well I guess we're not starting a fire here. Um, tell you what I will do though. 
is actually I'll take this. Quickly check this in case there's a cured gut. I'll take it. I mean coal is still good, but I got plenty of coal. Quickly now, quickly Shepherd. And I'm not gonna use my accelerant, I don't need that. Let's use a lit flare. Come on, little fire. Excellent. All right, thank you, Flare. Best to throw them away because they still weigh full weight if you hold on to them. A couple bits of coal and let's. Mm, do I want some coffee? I am actually going to take a coffee. We've got tons of coffee. In fact, not even that. I'm going to cook myself up some coffee. My actually alarmingly dwindling amount of water, but I'm fairly certain I can get more water here. Is there toilets to drain water out of in the cannery? Actually, where am I going here? Ah, it's not the cannery, the Riker is where I'm going. I will go to the Riker, but I will circle up past the cannery because I've seen a flare gun there before. And I would like it. Flare gun good. Oh well, weather not good. I'm still going to soak up this heat for a bit. Even if the fire is blown out by wind, it still lasts for nine minutes. Which is uh, still enough time to, well, heat up a tea for one. But you can also just enjoy the warmth of it. There we go. And drink my coffee. Glug, glug, glug. Becoming a real coffee dependent. You actually learn how to cook through doing this. You can make enough cups of tea and coffee in this game, and you'll become such a master chef that you can suddenly cook... Um, survivalist pies and the like. Uh, let's just drop down immediately. Jake, if you don't drink tea, uh, if you don't drink coffee, are you more of a tea person or one of the strange folks who drinks hot water? What kind of person drinks hot water? I'll tell you, triathletes, because swimming in cold water is, uh, well, it's hard stuff, so they chug down the hot water. I know that because my father was a triathlete and an open water swimmer. He's not dead, it's just that he doesn't do that anymore. Probably dead on the inside from that though, I know he misses that, but hey ho. Down we go, go, and along we go. Drinking warm water is better for your digestive system. Nah, drinking cold water feels good, and if it feels good you should do it. Not an adequate defense, but that's what I'll stick to. Uh, right, so I never drink coffee. I've told this story many times, but I'll still tell it because any any excuse to drag my mother through the hot coals. Uh, I didn't like coffee, but my mother gave me a drink and said, Oh, you like this? It's chocolate! It was not chocolate drink, it was cold coffee. I spat it across the entire table. Like a big chocolate fountain eruption. But it was coffee. Anyway, that was horrible. I constantly bring that up because it was a very nasty thing for her to do. She did a similar thing to me with tomatoes. She told me they were cherries. They were not cherries. They were cherry tomatoes. Yeah. Uh, as for tea, eh, about once a month I have a cup of tea. And it's usually just out of, ooh, I fancy, I fancy the nice taste of a cup of aniseed and fennel tea. That's about as far as the thought process goes. So no, the taste of coffee disgusts me, not just a drink of coffee, but uh, tiramisu, uh, coffee-flavoured chocolates, um, what else is a coffee-flavoured thing? Uh, eating Reese's Pieces is a dangerous proposition, because those have... is it Reese's Pieces? I'm thinking of something else, what in the world am I thinking of? Mm, they're... You know, some are nutty, some are toffee, some are pure chocolate, some are crunchy. What the heck are those? Maybe it is Reese's Pieces. Well, whatever they are, that's what I'm thinking. Rebels, thank you, Hen Chest. Yeah, Rebels, oh my days. Eating Rebels is real difficult for me because some of them are coffee. I didn't mind the nutty ones or any of the other ones, but the coffee ones were just nasty. Yeah, Harundi, this challenge is really easy. 
The weather isn't cold enough because it's it needs to be past day 50 for this. And uh, what else? The loot is everywhere. There's so much bleeding loot. Even regular interloper loot would have been too much, but on top of this you're getting non-interloper items. We found a hatchet and two knives, two proper knives. We immediately found all the goods that we could need. Pry bar, storm lantern, didn't take long to find a hacksaw, matches everywhere. I'm going to check around the back of here first actually. Sometimes there's a corpse here, and today there is not. Not that there's any incentive to check that though, because we just got everything we could need. No, the start wasn't rough at all. At, at no point has this been a question of survival. Still looking for a pair of socks though. If there's one thing we haven't had, it's socks. Well, I'll tell you one thing we've really been missing are stims. There's a firearm cleaning kit, which might be an it's indicator that there are guns somewhere, but it might also not. Given infinite time, you'll probably die. Eh, not if you take care of yourself. Uh, I definitely do not need herbal tea. Herbal tea is essentially just hot water for you in this game because it does not uh, it does not give you the improved rest function. It doesn't heal you, even if it says improved rest, it doesn't actually restore any health. Healing never seems to be a big concern in your playthroughs. That will change in Ultra Loper. When I do Ultra Loper, healing is going to be a big concern. Because in that, a really good night of sleep will get you maybe like 7 or 8% health back instead of about 40% health back. I see food, I eat it. Yum yum yum. It's like dead rising. Ah, now there was a game, Dead Rising 1 and 2. I was interested in seeing the Dead Rising 2 speedrun that they did on ESA, but unfortunately, uh, Dead Rising 2 speedrun is pretty much just Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. All you do is just skateboard around because it's the fastest way to move and it knocks down zombies and it keeps you relatively safe. And even the books you find are just books to make your, um, your skateboard last longer. I would drink a Dead Rising bottle of orange juice. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm, I like good orange juice. And I mean actual orange juice made from oranges. Not concentrate madness, no added sugar, just oranges. But forget the oranges, make it full of grapefruit juice. Mmm, ah, oh, that's my favourite. I love grapefruit so much. A lot of things I love. That's fine, I like talking about things I love. A wee bit sunny- no, 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 no. Oh god, sunny D, it's like drinking car battery acid. Grim bloody stuff. Right, 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 right. We're heading on out. I thought I had another tinny to drink. Mm, I got a lot of these. Just chow them down, Shepard. Chow them down, drink up, and we're getting moving. We're going to visit the grave, and we're going to visit the cannery. You said real orange juice. Doesn't get more real than that. I am quite certain that Sunny D is absolutely packed with additives. It certainly tastes like it. If it is somehow just pure orange juice, then I have grave questions about where they source their oranges. Sunny D is vile. One thing I've yet to source here, though, are uh, loads and loads of grapefruits. I tend not to find them, which is bothersome. I love pink grapefruit, probably my favourite fruit. There was a time in Sweden where, uh, down at the nearby marketplace, um, they were having pink grapefruits. I just bought a whole bag of them. Like a big old Tesco's bag just full of grapefruits. Spent a good hour in the kitchen just dissecting all of them. Divvied them out in Tupperware boxes, and I was like, okay, great. We'll, uh, I'll just keep these, and I'll be able to have grapefruit whenever I want for the next foreseeable future. All gone. I just shoveled them all down my gullet because they were too good. 
And this is very easy. The grave is right here. Why couldn't you hold out? Why couldn't I let go? It's, it's a bit cold here. Maybe we shouldn't be victim blaming for the people that freeze to death in... Wait, minus 19? Okay, yeah, we should be blaming them. Tried growing oranges and the tree never fruited it. I don't have a green thumb either. Uh, oh, crikey, I made this. I never wore it. Uh, there we go, though. I can wear a... Oh, crikey, you look ridiculous. Let's just swiftly harvest this, because it's warm inside the Riker. I did get one of those juicing machines, but uh, it's fun to use and god-awful to clean. Why, why it has to have so many exposed parts that just get all juicy is beyond me, but yeah, not very fun to clean. Alright, so this is the Riker. It's got the forge. Really nice forge to be using. It's not outdoors, so it's good for outer loafer, but it's got coal. It's got loads of things to carve apart for scrap metal. Yeah, you could be here for a good long time. Ah, I don't need more burnables. we have started a fire that's needed burnables for ages. But more than that, we've got beds. Uh, hello? Finally. First painkillers I've found all game, and we are... He checks almost six hours deep. Terrifying. Mm, you know what? I fancy a quick nap. An NAP. Give me that bed. The wind condition is to go to all five graves. We just went to the fourth one. Why that's the wind condition and what we're trying to achieve is probably just left up to the player's imagination. It says something about making things right. Life ebbs. Death is only a barrier. There's no time limit. All the graves are marked. Da 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 da. Hmm. I swear it said something about make things right. Anyway, our last place that we have to go is Timberwolf Mountain. We are here in Desolation Point. We've got to go down through Crumbling, up through Coastal, through Cinder Hill Coal Mine, through the massive Pleasant Valley, up a rope climb into Timberwolf, and this is Crystal Lake, where the final grave is. It will be uneventful and very easy. Like, this whole challenge has been kind of a shame. I really thought this would be much harder. I did not expect the loot to be so fat. Just just give me the options, game. Give me the options to make this ball bustingly hard. It's what I want. Don't baby me. Right, this is another thing that the Riker is good for. I'm pretty sure this always spawns here. A memento cache and a memento key for the memento cache. The wind is probably quite brutal, but the weather isn't that bad. I might just head out in this anyway. Uh, that's easier to justify if I have a lovely warm, warm load of tea in my belly. So let's do exactly that. Just out of curiosity, has playing this challenge made you reconsider no Goa? It's made me even more firm in my stance that I don't want to do no Goa. When there's no healing, you have to stop and heat up constantly, and that's just such a... Such an unpleasant, flow-breaking thing to do, in my opinion. We've been using matches willy-nilly, and we're finally through one of our loads of matches. We have plenty. Oranges growing Come on, in little Perth? Little. Come on. You, you must be, uh... You must be in the colonies there, King Skink. The Perth I know would never Perfect. foster an orange. The people of Perth probably don't know what an orange is. Right, right, right. Give me some racial tea. Actually, maybe I can cook up something. Oh man, I got plenty of this anyway. Racial tea, in you go. Heat yourself up. Get in my belly. And let's go. I read that as heating disabled. I had frostbunk flashbacks. Uh, heat and disabled was good times. Surprisingly warm inside this crashed ship. Perth, Australia is a... Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't need to add Australia there. This is dangerous because I can't see a bloody thing. However, if I know which way is north... Then I should be able to get to the cannery. Fortunately, we have highly magnetized sticks in this world, and they all point to north. 
Well, they point to stick north, which is not necessarily north, but in this case, I think it is. I used to have friends in Perth. They'd agree it, with it being a dump. It's nice, actually. Don't be jealous, says Skink. <laughs> it's kind of difficult liking where you live because it, it can feel like such an attack when people say where you live is a dump. And it can feel even worse to have to face the truth. I wonder if I can do this, by the way. There we go. Should we have a wee nap? Lovely. Oh god, it's cold. Let's not do that. Clearly playing too fast and loose because I think I've already won. Well, we've not won until we've seen that last grave. This is another diversion or a side tracking. I don't need to come here. I'm coming here because I suspect that there are goodies. This is a very loaded place in Desolation Point. In fact, it is the loaded place, aside from the Riker. But... What I'm really here for is you. Aha, you. But Adam, here we go. Lockbox. Flare shells or marine flares? Needs flare, 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 flare. Shell, shell, shell. Excellent. If only I had a gun, because I can't just throw flare shells at people. Given the primitive nature of the flare gun, I'm surprised I can't just makeshift one of them. How hard could it be? Probably just make a spring-loaded tube. Doesn't need to be accurate either. The speedrun for this challenge is two hours. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Between the stims and the coffee and the massive loot you have, you could just beeline this one. Obviously, I'm not in a hurry here. I do want to enjoy myself. And I am enjoying myself. It's just not the same kind of enjoyment. I find my best enjoyment comes from overcoming difficult challenge. This has been anything but. Cup of coffee with my name on it. Anything in the top? It, Best peanut butter? For anything. Pinnacle peaches. I'm just going to eat those here and now. The flashlight is not worth carrying, no. Yeah, I can only use it during an aurora, and I haven't had an aurora. Which is unusual. Very low on water. Oh, that candy bar almost passed me by. Yeah, lesser known place up here. But I like that. I like there being these nooks and crannies to check out. Another wee nook is over here. Behind this, there can be really good loot. seeing anything. I've seen a bedroll back there. There might be a little box behind you also that has something in it, but I struggle to imagine what it could possibly be that I could want. There is a backpack there. Huh. Can I reach you from here? No, I cannot. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna check that backpack. Come on. No guts, no glory. Completely empty, and now I'm stuck here. However, actually, you it's not soft-locked here, but you could be in a very bad situation if you're freezing. Fortunately for us, we can hack our way out. There we go, like Hacker Man Zergle. Get the light back on pretty please. Yeah, this needs 20 bears in every region to spice things up. I'm not going to open the safe. The safe's a bleh. Might have a stim in it. And I can't believe it, I've only found one stim, and that was inside a safe. All of the normal stim locations have nothing here. Surprisingly greatly. Mm, Commander Shepard doesn't need dog food. Commander Shepard doesn't need any more food. Oh, look at that! This is what I suspected would be here. Not the stim, that's nice. Handy. Just after I was complaining about lack of stim, but this. Thank you. Yes, thank me. There we go. We've got three flare shells. 
Uh, it did dawn on me that I didn't actually end up using my flare gun when I found it in single region survivor. This one I will use. So I got no good reason not to. You have to aim to fire it. You can't just left click and accidentally shoot. Who would do such a thing? I'm so loaded on goods here. Should also be matches, but I'm not seeing any matches. Additional flare shell. Oh, nobody needs this anymore. It's good. I was actually needing some more water. Not gonna bother searching these lockers. There's very little point. Yeah, we are armed and we are dangerous. I only turn on the uh, the flare gun thing at the top now if I also have at least one shell for it, because a gun on its own is just a fancy paperweight. It does have a bit of weight to it. Uh, let's sleep for one hour before I head out there. Good coffee achieved my way through much of this, but the weather was fierce when I came in. Maybe this will make it less bad. My entire experience with this game has been watching you play it, says Jetpack, and I've never even seen a backpack contain anything. Yeah, interloper backpacks are almost always empty, but sometimes, sometimes they got something good, so they're always worth checking. It's not really much of a time investment to go and look in them. Right, this weather's bad. In fact, I don't want to be in weather this bad. Let's just take a nap inside this truck. Hopefully it'll get, you know, a lot better. Some matches are guaranteed like that, so maybe you found the, the interloper corpse in Hush River Valley. He always has matches on him. And he sometimes has a crowbar in his hand, which is extra nice. Come on, wildlife, just give me a reason. This will come in handy. No, it won't. I'm leaving that behind. I don't need it. Uh, let's eat our moldy chocolate bar. Drink our potable water. I will need more water at some point. I'm quite heavy right now. I don't so heavy. What in the world am I carrying? It's probably all this amazing gear. I'm never fixing this Mac and all. Let's just accept it. I'm going to drop that and save myself some weight. Wish I could make myself some makeshift uh, socks, though, because that's one thing I'm missing. Uh, reclaimed wood's a waste of time, and I'm never going to need 16 coal. 8 coal will suffice. Come on, nature. The apex predator is on the prowl. Three shells is not a lot of shells. I would definitely have more if I'd done more exploring for them. On, uh, on whatever loot setting this is on, the flares just seem to spawn randomly, littering the place. On Interloper, it's uh, much more finite, much more, well, same amount of finite, much more limited, shall we say. Hey, you know what, I'm going to uh, check up by the stone church here. Since I didn't do this place in single region survivor, it feels very unloved, but it's so small, look at that, we've been to the far end and back already. We've been here for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. My original schedule had Single Region Survivor Desolation Point on it, but just thinking about doing that, I could just mentally already beat the level. I know where there are matches. Uh, I know where you can loot just about everything. There are plenty of safe areas. There's no real challenge to the region. So I was hard pressed to drum up the desire to do it. That said, I've done this run, which has been even less challenging, but it's been fun to go around to different regions. Challenge for me is fun, but that doesn't mean it's the only way I get my kicks. Where are all the wolves? There's not really a lot more wolves around here. I don't think that mooses are scared by flares, but you can kill a moose with a flare. I have never managed to, but I have almost never done any combat using flares. Another firearm cleaning kit. Yeah, I wouldn't actually be surprised if there were guns that spawned here, but I'm not going out of my way to find some. Final cardboard match, I hope. Yeah, Bleak Inlet 
Forlorn Muskeg, and I swear there was somewhere else that was a highlight to my single region survivor runs, but yeah. There have been some really good fun runs of that. I don't want to drag it through the dirt by doing uh, by doing the last three when Come my on. motivation is low. I think I'll wait until the DLC oh. is complete, and I'll use those to fire myself up for Ultra Looper. Or maybe I won't, wait until I get there. Right, coal, we have tons of it, and I'm going to have a lot more when I get through Cinder Hills, so I can just burn this willy-nilly. Do I want my coffee? There's probably a lot of running I want to do, so Commander Shepard will have a nice cup of coffee. Drink that tiny bit of racial tea. Yeah, the horrors of bleak inlet really were something, weren't they? Mm, actually, actually, actually. I am short on water, so I'm going to make myself some more water. It feels like night is coming. And just as well, because waiting here and making that coffee, the uh, the fire went away. Bag the hot tea, drink the hot coffee. Oh man, they had rose hip tea in Japan. Why didn't I get it? I'll tell you why, because I never normally get a drink. Uh, well, I never normally pay for a drink with a meal, I just take water. Tap water, I'll have you know. Although some places don't do tap water, that's a shame. Then you end up charged through the through the nose for their artisanal glass bottled water. What a waste, what a rip. By law in Scotland, any place serving uh, serving drinks is obliged to uh, to give free water when requested. I made good use of that when I was uh, playing a lot of DDR. Over in Elgin, in fact. Thank goodness for that. I'm so annoyed you almost never get tap water in Germany. I love that in Sweden. I don't know if the tap water is necessarily bad in Germany. They probably just want to nickel and dine you. But in Sweden, I never had any problems getting tap water. Also, the tap water in Sweden is really good. Even in Stockholm, normally you think it's pretty bad in the cities, but I guess Stockholm is coastal. And that's high praise because the, the water where I'm from is so good. Just the simple tap water, even through the crummy things we call pipes in Scotland, the tap water uh, up in Moray is phenomenally good. Better be, we use it for the whiskey. Hate to be using subpar water for my whiskey. A lot of people in Germany just refuse to. Oh, yeah, now that I think about it, there were a couple of German guys um, inside the friend group. And. They were always carrying around massive multi-packs of bottled water. Well, not always, but you know, when they went shopping, they'd bring back massive bottles of uh, of water from there, and it just seemed like such a waste. The salt content in those is usually surprisingly high. It's infinitely more expensive than just using tap water. We don't even have water meters in Scotland. Or if we do, we certainly not had any anywhere I've been in. I'm in the wrong cave, aren't I? Am I? I would have picked up all this coal on the way through. I hope I'm not in the wrong cave. Ah, surely I'm fine. German tap water is very good. I don't understand those people, says Doctor. Have you tried other places tap water for reference? Worst tap water I've ever had was in Florida. Best tap water is obviously home, but uh, Stockholm comes a close second. Japan's tap water was eh. Maybe they do the American thing and fluoride their water. That makes sense with the American influence. Old pipes tend to be covered in carbonate layers, they don't leak anything into the water. Yeah, the brand Celestial Seasoning. They have the flavor Lemon Zinger with rose hips. I'd like to just try pure rose hip if that's an option. 
Swedish tap water was better. Norwegian as well. Never been to Scotland. <laughs> mm, dare I recommend. All right, we're back out here. It's night time, but I think we'll keep moving. And again, since I'm drowning in them, I'm going to use the flare for this. It's warm enough, and I still have warming up bonus, so let's move. Speedrunning was mentioned earlier. I have absolutely no desire to speedrun this game. I don't really have any desire to speedrun any game. It just seems like a way to punish yourself, except without the payoff. And I quite enjoy watching speedruns, especially at the charity events like ESA that's happening right now. And uh, even, even these days, games done quick have some good runs, but it's few and far between, and overall the whole thing's got a bit... Ugh. But I still like the old runs when it's just a, a bunch of people on a couch. Good bloody times. But no, not something I'd want to do. Even with games I love, I wouldn't be interested in speedrunning Draken or Terranigma. You know, games, games that I could still love no matter how much I play them. I, why would I want to do that to them or to myself? I wouldn't get my kicks out of getting faster times. But I'm not a perfectionist. Not in the way I live, and not in the games I play, so I don't see the big deal of just getting that faster time. Now watching other people do it's great, even on games I don't like. Probably my my favourite speedrun thing I ever watched, aside from that time where uh, somebody was reading Snowboard Kids fanfic over somebody's run. I've never laughed so hard in my life, and I've laughed a lot in my life. Aside from that, my favourite speedrun was probably... I think 2013, maybe 2014, and it was a, um, I think it was a four-player Super Metroid race. Very tight, very down to the wire, very technical, and very good. Well narrated, just excellent. And that, I believe, was either Summer Games Done Quick or Awesome Games Done Quick. Did you see the EU4 World Conquest speedrun? Conquer the World by 1472. Oh, well, they finally beat my record, did they? Nah, uh, well, good on them, but like I said, I'm I'm, no, I'm not at all interested in uh, Europa speedruns. I set the speedrun record for it once and never looked back again, and I didn't even mean to. And by then, I don't think anyone was keeping track, so I doubt anybody cares. Is that true, actually? There was one known person who conquered the world before me in EU4, and he did it with the Holy Roman Empire. And I think he was the first to do the world conquest, and I did it a few days later with Ryukyu. I'm not sure if that was the fa- I'm not sure who was faster, though. I was dead fast in EU3, though. I forget how long that took. Coming up to the 10-year anniversary, actually, of the, uh, the Ryukyu world conquest I did 10 years ago. I might do a special stream where I reminisce about that. I might try and desperately remember how things go, but it's more than likely just going to be old man bumbling. It's like, hey, how did I do that? I, I don't know. What's this button? Why are the rebels? What happened here? Who's Shitatsu Sho? Okay, that's far more likely to happen. This is sounding like a terrible idea. EU4 has changed too much to compare old, uh, new speedruns to old, but yeah, for sure. We're getting tired. We're still slightly below weight limit. I want to get over to Consett and we will sleep the night away at Consett. That's why I don't mind running. The more tired I am, the easier it'll be to sleep the night away. Oh, of course Blobber's the one to say that in-game time is less popular because he's the one gobbling up all the RTA ones. Blobber is very good at playing the game fast and he's got a very nicely specced machine for it, no less. Don't know how he does it though. Jings, I like to I like to take the time with those games. The idea of going fast, my brain would my brain would short circuit and fry. When I was doing the EU4 Ryukyu World Conquest, the first one, uh, that was back when rebels were on the old random system, and every rebel tick, which I think was something like every 12 days, 14 days in game, the computer would hang. For I think 10 to 20 minutes. 
I just have to go away, have a drink and come back. There was, there was definitely some kind of exponential calculations happening there that did not work in my favor. I am biased, but I'm also correct. There we go. I think I actually know the Draken speedrun tech. I was watching the speedrun by, what was his name? Draken, Dragon Dark? And commentated by PJ. Where is PJ these days? PJ Dice there? PJ Dice something or other? Really enjoyable speedrun. I loved watching his stuff, but he seems to have disappeared off the scene. He doesn't do the events anymore. Maybe he just does his own private thing, or maybe he moved on. Maybe he's dead. Who knows? What a loss, though. I really enjoyed his runs. I liked his attitude to it. Oh, boy. Hey, Wolf. Are you trying to stop me getting to concept? Rules of nature. Get out of here. Yeah, you scatter, too. Always reload. Easy to forget to reload after taking a shot with this thing. Alright, back to concept. Back to where it all began for Commander Shepard. It looks so wrong with the empty shelves. So very wrong. It's dangerous for me to open that save though. It, it glitches something in other saves whenever I do, so I can't open that and then open another save. It sets the date like 200 odd and ruins my journal. Right, let's just gobble down some mouldy peanut butter to celebrate the day. Where you get die? sick from... Wow, no, I, I had no idea about that. Die. Right, well, uh, if you want to die so badly, maybe I'm going to give you some antibiotics. Wait, you don't treat food poison with antibiotics, do you? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Well, whatever. Let's drink up and sleep up. Food poisoning from... Is it even possible for... Uh... For peanut butter to get moldy? That just doesn't seem right. There we go. Food poisoning has been and gone. <laughs> we could probably never use this bed again. <laughs> Alright, we're still well fed. You'd think food poisoning would lower your hunger meter faster. And your dehydration for what it's worth. Big flush for Commander Shepard there, no doubt. Okay, I have enough water for one night passage, but let's get out and get moving. Peanut butter can indeed get moldy. That must be, take years, or you must have to store it in a very compromising situation. I still have over 100 health, though, so for all intents and purposes, I am uninjured. weather is a bit foul, though. I think I'm going to go in here, tear down all the curtains, and patch up my clothes. Cause look at that, I've lost uh, almost a quarter of my warmth just walking for 20 seconds, maybe. These houses are generic. Um, a bunch of them have the same layout. There are a few different layouts, but by and large, the houses will use one of a bunch of them, and then you just see loads of them. You could easily find this kind of house in Milton, I would dare to say, but... If you're going for recipes, great places to find uh, cookable goods, like oats, oil, salt. That said, I'm not racking my way through the cupboards, except I'll do the I'll do the bedroom because I need some socks. I don't need some socks, but I want Nobody some socks. I don't need that though. Already got double undies. Random stem. No random stem. Socks in the. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, actually, a good opportunity to grab some water while we're here. I don't know what Batulism here, but yeah, eating old military rations, probably not the greatest idea. Alright, let's use the knife. It's barely seen any combat. What kind of bedroom has socks in the drawers as opposed to scattered on the floor, hidden under the bed? Well, mine does. I hate leaving clutter just littered around the place. Also, even with a really nice knife, it still takes you six minutes to take down some curtains. I'll tell you, Shepard has the strangest priorities in survival situations. Just checking the microwave? Nothing. I 
seldom wear socks anyway. It's hot enough for sandals most times here, and uh, if I'm kilted up, I'm going to be wearing hose instead of socks. Right, oh, that is fine. That is also fine. That is not but too bad. This is rubbish, but it's not even worth fixing levels of rubbish. Oh yeah, Tortuga, the, this run has been so easy. I have been shocked at how easy it is. There is no resource scarcity on this setting. Look at that, even finding long johns. Okay, well, that was even easier than I thought. Plenty warm. One last check in the cabinet here. And... Hmm. 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 I've got three coffees here. I'm just going to drink one right now. I've got a lot of movement to do. I thought Dead Sleep was Interloper. How disappointing. It's half Interloper, half Voyager. Uh, not Voyager, Stalker. Half Interloper, half Stalker is how it feels. God, it's barely even cold. Let's, uh... Let's make use of the torches, even. Look at that. It's morning time, and it's very warm. Did I take a wrong turn here? Probably. So easy to lose your way in the fog. There's also a moose and a bear that can spawn around here. And as we've seen both do spawn, we had a moose chasing us across to the Hunter's Lodge over in Broken Railroad. And we had a bear give us a big old roar over in... where was that again? Ooh, I will confess, I can't quite remember if I want this... I want this direction, I think. I get up and over in that direction as much as I can. Got even single region survivor at this place, and I've spent more time here than any other region, but I still don't know my way around the up back that well. Here's the bear cave. No bear today. If there was a bear, I'd be teaching him the rules of nature. Geared up to the point of dropping clothes that during previous runs would have been top tier precisely. We can afford to be that level of wasteful. It is a little sad, isn't it? Hello, hello. Should I go up and around here? But to be honest, I really can't remember the correct way to Cinder Hills, but I'm going to go up and around here anyway. It's easy to go from up to down, but it's a son of a gun to go from down to up. I've watched most of these streams, never seen Jake be this geared yet. The, the gear in this one is certainly easier than on the other runs, but there's no way to make this one harder. If you want to complete this challenge, you've got to do it on its babying level of gear availability. Get the hell out of my face! contemplating using the flare, but I've only got two flares for it. Maybe I shouldn't be that cocky just yet. It just takes one nasty bear encounter for me to go, oh, I sure wish I had one extra flare in my distress pistol. It feels like there are fewer dogs here than you would find on regular interloper. Strangely enough, uh, Stalker has more hostile wildlife than interloper. It kind of makes sense because the more hostile wildlife there are, that also means it's it's more meals on demand. A wolf that chases you? Well, I'm just looking at six kilos of wolf meat that's walking its way towards me. And unlike deer, it's a lot easier to manipulate bears and wolves to die where you want them. Like, you can stack a lot of dead wolves in one place set up a central fire, or many central fires, and just have a massive cook-off session with them. Or even bring them close to, say, an outdoor barrel, which won't be blown out by the wind, and that's even better for uh, for cooking without interruption. Save you having to quarter as well. But with a deer, eh, it, can, it can be difficult. It's very difficult to guide them where you want them to be. 
I imagine all wolves replaced with moose. Now that'd be terrifying. You cannot cow a wolf with fire. Uh, you cannot cow a deer. Not a deer. A moose. You cannot cow a moose with fire. Even if you shoot it, it's going to be angry and charge you if it knows you're there. Best way to handle a moose is just don't let it know that you're there and then shoot it. That means you've got to be accurate with a bow. I'm alright with that, but I appreciate it's not easy. Or you can dance with a moose. They're not great at taking corners, so you can kind of dance it around a tree, but you are playing with fire there. I wouldn't do that, because if it catches you... Uh, the, the ribs it breaks are debilitating. Truly debilitating. <laughs> Aurora moose. How could you make a moose even worse than the Aurora? You'd have to make it invincible. And they're already pretty damn invincible. They don't bleed out. If you shoot one in the face with an arrow, and you don't instantly kill it with a critical hit, then that moose will not bleed out. It'll just be very angry. Make their horns electric, oh, so what, they stun you? Maybe they maybe they make you slow down because you're scared. Yeah, then we're getting a little too Arcadia for my taste. Right, actually, Cinderhill Coal Mine, I can't set up a fire in here, I believe. Yeah, because it's indoors. I'll take another flare and I'll get moving. I think there's a guaranteed stimulant in here, but I've said that before in about four different places and they haven't spawned, so shame on me. I have one stim. But I also have a go energy drink. No, I don't need more coal. I don't need any more burnables. We're on the home stretch here. I like lighting effects from the torch a lot more than I do from the uh, the lantern. But I'll probably use the lantern anyway. Now I'll take a two hour nap at the end of here and then we're going to just leg it across the vast unpleasant valley. Stim is normally here. Stim is not here. tools, or the sewing kit. Maybe I'll finally get the cured gut I want to make a bow, but I doubt it. No? No, oh, okay. My eyes are not deceiving me. Oh, I've only got one torch left. But it's a good one. 50%. Yeah, you can one-shot a moose. I'm not taking that risk, though. Especially not with a firing arc of a flare gun. Your flares, they, they drop like rocks coming out of that thing. Hello. Well, this stuff will come in handy. And it's got more juice in it than this. Can I just dump this on top of you? There we go. Here lies someone who just didn't have the beans to survive. Thanks to the lantern. Never in my life I've seen an empty... Ah, oh, I, I used to have a toolbox. But in in one of my moves it just disappeared. Oh, maybe it was that guy that kept stealing my booze. Anyway, I do miss it. But it was full of just cheap crap. It's not exactly stuff I'll try over. It just feels nice to have a toolbox. Especially since I had to do a lot of motorbike maintenance back then. And boy, did my bikes need maintenance. I should have called my bike Friday because it feels like it was made on Friday. Both of my bikes, actually. All three of my bikes. I think my motorbiking days are behind me, but uh, feels like I spent more time fixing and cleaning them than riding them. That Moto Guzzi California, though. Oh, what a bike. Best thing that ever had the name California on it. Finally! Right, we've been going a long time and we finally have a pair of socks. In fact, these socks deserve good treatment. I'm actually going to repair them.
There we go. Decent climbing socks, decent temp, decent temperature bonus. That was a big waste of my uh, my lighting thing here. Normally you'd never use a, a storm lantern just for uh, lighting, but we did it here. A little shortcut you can take up here. I learned that shortcut because I was trying desperately to figure out a way to jump from here to here. It looks like you should be able to like jump onto this part and jump across, but I've never managed it. And you can't get across there because of those rocks in the way. I did, however, spy that stem, so don't mind me, I'll be having that stem. There we go, that should be us up to two. We've found a total of three now. This will come in handy. Uh, I saw that. I haven't found a good hat. Give the game that. I've only found ragged toques and scarves. Yeah, we've been wearing shoes without socks, and yeah, that, for one, especially in these conditions, that's disgusting. I've probably got trench foot. And secondly, imagine the blisters. These aren't even our shoes, so they don't fit very well. Purposely bobbing so I can just swing my lantern for fun. Right, all's well and good, but we're going to sleep here. Maybe for three hours. Yeah, maybe for four? Be greedy and go for four? No, we will not. But I will drink my ghastly maple syrup. And you know what? I haven't been eating my salty crackers. Let's eat those for a change. A lot of calories in them. Brother went to the army. He said, "Once you get enough blisters, it's all the same." Oh God, no! I don't like blisters. I mean, who likes blisters, right? But it's very unpleasant. DDR doesn't tend to give me blisters. If it gets to the point where it's causing me that, it usually just ruptures and bleeds all over the place. But that's only if there's, say, a screw sticking out of my mat and I'm playing in socks or bare feet. Well, just socks. I never played barefoot. Right. Chug, chug, and off we go. It's actually one of the main reasons that I do play DDR wearing, uh, wearing shoes. Hang on, I've made a terrible error. I should have... Uh... Oh my, what a lovely day. What an incredibly lovely day. I'm not even cold. What kind of temperature is that? Pleasant Valley is meant to be one of the worst places in the game for this. Oh well, we've got places to be, so let's go to those places. I'm just going to chug my coffee and get moving. Believe it or not, this is the home stretch. We get through here and we're done with the challenge. I know exactly where Crystal Lake is, so it's not going to be difficult to find the final uh, grave. And we've already found all the others. And look at our health. Even though health loss is permanent, we are above 100% health. Madness. You may as well walk to civilization with this gear. Uh, I believe we're on an island, so... And as we can tell, the sea is not frozen. What temperature would it take to freeze the sea? That's a, um, that's a very wrong question to ask, isn't it? Because the sea holds such an absurd amount of thermal energy. Even the air temperature wouldn't make much odds on that, I'm sure. That's why Day After Tomorrow is such a difficult film to swallow. Yes, we live on Great Bear Island here, and they often talk about conflicts with the mainland, so I'm inclined to believe we are far out. Even if the sea is frozen, it could be pack ice. Not likely, but still, what temperature does uh, seawater freeze at? I suppose that's the real question I'm trying to ask. Right, let's say I was a complete dum-dum and I had no idea where I was right now. What I'd do is this. And that'll show exactly where I am on the map. So that tells me if I just follow this road up, I'm happily making my way over to uh, Timberwolf. Minus 5C if it's not moving rapidly. 
It'll freeze the top easily. Okay. I'm not sure someone from Estonia is well placed to say when the sea freezes. Right, that, that right turn is a trap. That's an end of the road right there. But it does show on my map, I believe. Yep. I'll take a slight left fork. There we go. I'm a cat. I wasn't saying you're from Estonia. Uh... There we go. Maybe if I ever get my... Maybe if I ever get Hungarian citizenship. I can donate my Swedish citizenship to an Estonian, let them live out their dream of being Scandinavian. And now with health, we're also an Estonian chemist, then... Well, that'd be impressive. More impressive than the challenge here, Jings. I actually, I actually thought this would take one longer and two be considerably harder. But the loot on offer here... I wouldn't be surprised if there are guns hiding somewhere in the world. But it's not even interloper level of cold, it's minus 10! I know it's the warmest time of the day, but it's still interloper. Or meant to be interloper. Have a quick fumble through the Tupperware. Now, 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 another bleeding knife. That marks the third hunting knife we've found. Got my mother one of these for Christmas. She oh no, I didn't mean to pick that up. There we go, leave it for whoever needs it. She was big on outdoor survivalism stuff. Maybe still is, that's what I'm asked if she'd be doing that. Or into painting these days. Well I say that. She liked to go out into the wilderness and start fires, right? That's that's outdoorism. The apocalypse being of long dark being minus 10 is hilarious. Yeah, at least with uh, Frostpunk, the idea of you know the world going freezing cold and you in particular facing regular bouts of minus 100, you know, that, that feels a bit more apocalyptic. Minus 20 across the world. Yeah, minus 20. Oh, who have I've seen that many a time, but... You know, if suddenly all the bread baskets of the world are showing off their minus 20 weather, then yeah, maybe that's cause for concern. Hello, Lord Barrington. One of us is going to have to step aside, and it's not going to be me. If this backfires and ends the run, that's going to be very funny, but it will not. Barrington is going down. Move! Nah, you move. Get down. Get the hell out of here. You know what? We're having bear for dinner tonight. Damn, he's fast. Uh, this is exactly why I have my energy drink. Oh, no, 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 no. Come get some, you piece of work. <laughs> I will find and I will have my bear dinner. Oh my god, I thought I'd get more stamina back from that energy drink. Not really living up to its name, is it? What the energy drink does do, however, is give you a headache. Now that's no fun. Right, I can track its paw print, so I can track more than its paw- Oh, he's still alive! And he's, st he's fuming mad! <laughs> Alright, Lord Barrington. You want a front? You a front with Shepard? Yeah, crikey, that is one bare gaming rig right there. Who's fronting, bear? Come on, have a go. 
he just looks like he's really, really pissed off. He's certainly turning to see me. Sounds like a zombie. Sounds like it's William Birkin. Get down. To the victor, the spoils. If ever there was a good time for this to be accelerated, now would be that. There we go, that's my last flare. No, it wasn't, I got one more. Cool, very cool. Right, well, slam on the cedar and a bunch of coal. And let's have our celebratory two kilos of bear meat. You feel so good. Yeah, I got a headache from taking my energy drink. But that's nothing but a painkillers won't solve. Come on, come on. Oh, the headache already went away. Hmm. You know, the appropriate thing to do with you is to completely slice you up. This hunting... No, this hatchet. I'll do it. Hackety. Hackety, hackety. Oh, it's getting dark out here. I'm look for shelter. And uh, let's just eat Barrington. Om nom 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 nom. And we're going to carry some Barrington with us. Uh, it's getting late. Let's have another coffee. Actually, do I have any more tinned coffee? I do. I've got three more... Uh, three more helpings of coffee. Eighteen minutes till you're burnt. That's fine. There we go. Gonna drink some coffee in celebration. Take this other one. I think I can use this. You know what? This is going to be our trophy. There's no, there's no way I'm taking all these quarters with me. There's like thirty kilos of bare ass. But there we go. Revenge on Barrington. I don't know exactly what for, but uh, we put him in his place. Right. I'm a little low on torches. So let's get this and get moving. Has anyone tasted bear? I have. I actually got it in Estonia, of all places. I've been wanting to eat bear for a long time, and when I was at a restaurant in Estonia, they had bear. Unfortunately, it was really heavily seasoned, so you couldn't really taste much bear in it. You could have easily convinced me that it was lamb meat instead. It had that similar heavy-duty kind of feel to it. But it was still delicious. I would just like to eat... I'd like to eat a bear dish that maybe more accentuates the bear part of it. I thought it was the moose you needed revenge on. Look, I have had just about every every affliction this game has to offer. I've had my ribs stomped into jelly. I've had little parasite friends from bear meat. I've been mauled by wolves, mauled by bear. I had a bear steal my trousers. I've had infection risk, infection, uh, headache, that thing you get from drinking nasty water. Um, what's it called again? Well, let's just call it nasty water disease. Food poisoning. Yeah. J just about every bad thing that can happen to you in this game. I've had happen. Oh, I can also take the opportunity to figure out where in the world I am. Dysentery, thank you. Yeah, the one you get in that uh, that game. Oh, okay, I don't get to know where I am because of low visibility. It doesn't actually show up here. Well, that's okay. I know I need to cross a bridge before I get out of here. Uh, no, wait, no, I don't. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Cross a bridge. See, I heard that bear had a very pronounced flavour, which is why I wanted to try it. But when I ate it, I, I certainly didn't get anything that made me go, Oh, wow, yeah, that is that is something else. I just go, oh, okay, there's some nice meat in here.
Yeah, maybe it makes it better with heavy seasoning, but I, I want to taste it. It's like when you find a really bad whiskey and you're like, yeah, just just use that for a blend. Don't drink it. Well, now, now I have to know. Bear is a very varied diet, so I'm sure it would be lovely to eat some bear meat. I wouldn't mind having it raw. Well, I mean, I might, my stomach might not like that a few days down the line, but I'd want to give it a go. I can't think of many meats in the world that I wouldn't want to try. The only thing that's a bit of a turn-off is brain. I'm not particularly big on eating brain. I read about prions once, and that was a big mistake. Otherwise, yeah, sign me up. One thing I really want to eat someday is snake. Snake looks really tasty. Oh yeah, one time out of morbid curiosity I looked up what muscle parasites look like and that was a mistake. Don't do that. Do not be curious as to what muscles and parasites look like. There's no winning in that, solution, uh, that situation. I'll be honest, I don't know where I am. I think I went up here too much, but at the same time it feels like I went up here not enough. Try come to the southwest for Rattlesnake. And Gator is pretty good. I had Gator, it was okay. Rattlesnake, I could go for that. Ostrich is... yeah, I've had Ostrich, it is not great. Quite different from other poultry, but not in a good way. This is where I needed to be. Fantastic. Some wood, got a stove, got a nothing. No cooking pot there either. But the real find that you can get here is thus. Are you sure, Hurundi? We're like five minutes away from the end here. Five whole minutes. This is a unique looking abandoned cache, because even though it's abandoned, it does have stuff to check out. Of course, at this at this point, it could have literally nothing inside it, and it would still be fine for us. I mean, a hacksaw is a, an amazing thing to find in here, but mostly I'm just here for this bed and the general warmth. So away we go, go. We're going to sleep this night away after chewing down on a few more cattails. I can wait if it's five minutes. Yeah, there we go. We're going to get the bombastic ending where I am quite certain nothing is going to happen. But hey, we can find that out together. Horse and moose taste the same. I'd love to eat some horse. Mm-mm-mm. But uh, yeah, I can't, again, I can't think of any meat that I wouldn't want to eat. It's all good. My brother would always say, it's all good. We're in the world at 1800. Uh, oh man, it's going to be hard to resist. Amazing. The first time we can actually do a mag lens fire. We haven't just been carrying around a glassy paperweight the whole time. Come on, little fire. Oh yeah, I've been to Iceland. I probably already have eaten horse. I mean, Iceland, the frozen goods shop, not Iceland, the uh, country. Oh, didn't work. oh my god, Shepard, please stop letting me down at every turn. No horse in the Hungarian cold cut section. Uh, I mean, I, the thing is, the cold meats, I have no idea what they are. I can't read the signs. And it's hard to really recognize what meat is when it's uh, cured and dried and whatnot. But in the in the raw meat section, it's really basic. I think it's just cow, chicken, oh, yeah. and... I know, there's an old TV show. Nothing fancy. But they got livers, which is great. Now, trust me, I love liver. Mm. But there's no rabbit. There's no lamb. Why in the world is there no lamb in Hungary? Even Tesco's didn't have any lamb. Sp 
Star didn't have any lamb. Uh, Penny didn't have any lamb. I asked someone for lamb. Even did it in Hungarian. They just shook their head. Although maybe they were just shaking their head at me in general. It's hard to find good cheese here as well, which is another pain. They have cheese, sure, but I'm talking about good cheese. I wonder... Maybe I should have a look and see if there's just a proper fromagerie. Uh, ah, Budapest is bound to have it. Next time I go to Budapest, I'll load up on these nice things. Maybe you need to find a proper butcher. I do have a proper butcher. But maybe it's not proper enough. There's a butcher in the market down the road. But yeah, maybe it's not proper enough. Right, here we are, the final area, Timberwolf. We're about here-ish. Crystal Lake is there. This should be no problem. I mean, we're just going to walk over there and it's done. It's going to be very anticlimactic. It's not even five. Yeah, that the Paprika Market. There's, there's a tiny little corner of the Paprika Market, and I think it sells cheese, but I'm kind of scared to go in and ask. Because it's got a relatively small, chilled... I don't know what you call it, a chilled counter containing items that are chilled, but it looks like it's full of, like, tiny plastic cups and plastic bags. And I, I keep looking at it from the inside thinking, is that cheese? Maybe it's cheese? But I couldn't understand. Someday I'll pluck up the courage to go in and ask them if that is cheese. Then I find out that, I don't know, they're just hosting some famous dead Hungarian remains there or something. I've committed a terrible faux pas and I have to move. There we go. Now, Timberwolf is another place I didn't do single region survivor. It's a very interesting region. Very varied in height. It's got the big summit, which is the... Uh, the main point of where you want to go here. Is that the summit? Or is it over there? I don't know. I'll be able to tell when I'm at Crystal Lake. I think that might be the summit, though. If that is it, then yeah, you, you can go up there. Impressive, really. Hard to imagine. I mean, this is a game without a jump button, and the fastest you can run is pretty much this. And yes, that is the summit. I can see the I can see the plane wing right there. Right. Okay, well, the fire obscures it. Anyway, I know it's up there. Do as anyone today. Try emailing them if it's cheese. <laughs> I don't even know what I would email for that. The finest Hungarian cake maker's day ruined by a random Scotsman mistaking their sweets for cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I won't dress up in tartan for it. That's one of the nice things is uh, it makes it makes me feel nice and invisible. I feel like guy incognito if I'm uh, not in my tartans, like a disappearing act. Right. If I were doing single region survivor Timberwolf, then this would be the main shelter point. This is a really good place to take shelter. It's not amazing because the temperature can plummet here. Uh, I think... I forget who died in here. It was either Kitty or Baron. But they were taking shelter in here. And uh, they were mystified why they were getting hypothermic or dying inside. There was a bit of a problem with the roof. And we don't want it to get too hot, so we keep the windows open. Oh, the guaranteed matches are here. This anymore. There's a tin of coffee melding in with the first aid, which is nice. Get a Swedish flag t-shirt to redirect the faux pas now, that's excellent thinking. There we go, can finally do away with the garbage that I've had on my head with a proper toque. Not the best toque, but still an actual toque. Ski well, jacket as well. Handy. I've already got one though. Yeah, this place is loaded. It's a small, relatively warm place with a bed. Even so, unless I had amazing gear on, I wouldn't sleep in this bed without a fire. 
There's plenty of firewood for your fire. Good place. Highly recommend. Now, where is that? Uh, where is that? Is it around here? I'm looking for a grave marker. Hey, eyes peeled. This is a group effort. Actually, it, this could take longer than I want it to take. Let's warm up a lovely cup of tea, Shepard. In a ready-made fireplace with an existing fire. Surely you can't fail this. I'm like shoes on, ready to bail the second you win, says Harunti. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I will very quickly have my drink. I might even stim to quickly run around and find your precious, uh, precious end point here. Alright, just smack on the coal. I've plenty of it. Smack on the coffee. Drink the coffee, Shepherd. Now, where is it? Is it over here? The map kind of made it look like it would be on the southern point, though. I don't think this lake smashes through. You can't fall through and freeze, so I should be alright here. Right, you know what? We've got stims. Let's stim to win. Where is it? Oh, it's going to be hard to see if my vision is like this. I'm looking for a grave. Blazes, is it? I think it might be up on some high point. Come on, doing this for Harundi. That cat needs its new food or whatever. Ah, uh, my energy boost is going away. Where could it be? Oh, there it is. Come on, the bombastic ending. The world falling away. Did you know already somehow? Where you left us? Challenge complete. Hooray. I'm pretty sure I haven't beaten this in less than one minute game. And you can try again or quit to main menu, okay. <laughs> Thanks, game. Ah, what, what an achievement. Oh, man. Well, there we go. That was far more lackluster than I'd imagined. Not just the ending, the whole run. The loot available is definitely not interloper. But by the game's own standards, it considered that challenge to be... Maximum difficulty, on par with the Dark Walker. Dark Walker's probably harder, all things considered. Although you do get GPS there, but yeah, things is harder than <laughs> How easy do you think Whiteout or Hopeless Rescue is? Ah, jeez. Okay, uh, that might not have been a great note to end on. I still enjoyed that. Man, was it easy. That's the end of the Long Dark on this channel, probably until the DLC is finished, and that, at the rate they're going, is probably going to take a wee while. I'd still want to do a proper ultra looper run of this game, but that will come then. But Long Dark is no longer going to be occupying this day of the week. But I've got plenty of Dominions, plenty of RimWorld, plenty of streaming I want to get done. Maybe not for the rest of the day. I think I'll chill out. Tomorrow's going to be a hefty day of Dominions after all, getting back into it after a long absence. So until I am back with Lemuria's Soul Gates tomorrow, so cheers and cheerio.